of that for you coming up throughout the show today. One, uh, Mark Richt, head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs, coming off a tough loss last week uh, to Mizzou, and uh, Georgia will be in Nashville on Saturday to take on the Vanderbilt Commodores. We'll hear what Mark Richt has to say, uh, especially about Todd Gurley. And uh, we'll also uh, have a couple minutes from Justin Fuente, the head coach of the Memphis Tigers, as they get set to take on SMU Saturday at the Liberty Bowl. So uh, we'll hear from both of them. Just those two games, Georgia Vandy, Memphis SMU, of the four teams, who has to have it the most? Maybe Vandy. Well, maybe Memphis. It, it, it'd go a long way for Memphis. I say Vandy just because you know they got to get six. Right. This would go a long way for them getting to six. But if they don't get this one, I think they still have opportunities if, to get to six. And for the Georgia fans that are sick of the Capital One Bowl, if they lose Saturday to Vandy, you won't have to worry about the Capital One Bowl this year. Right. <laughs> right. And, well, and, you know, Georgia still has SEC East title Do they? to play for. I know mathematically. but Yeah, I mean, who else is going to take it? Mizzou's got a freshman quarterback plan. Do they have a couple of losses in front of them? And if so, probably so. You know, then it's down to Georgia, South Carolina. You beat South Carolina head to head. So, yeah, they they still that's still in their so sights. is it Georgia among the four? It could be Georgia. And for Memphis, uh, you mentioned, you know, a lot of close calls, week in and week out, talking about getting better, getting better, getting better, almost there, almost turning that corner, and, and that's coming all up true. short. Uh, you got to get one. Mm -hmm. uh, Want to get one. And Tigers are favored this week for the third time in their last 48 games. The Tigers are the That's progress, favorite. isn't it? Seriously. Yeah, and the three have been in the last, I believe, what, it was two of the last three last year and now six games this year. So three of the last nine they've been favored. They weren't favored in one game against FBS opponents in 2000. 11. It's a good sign when Vegas respects you. Or in 2010. So, And you're the favorite this week. So, yeah, big one for Memphis Tigers as well. And, and getting this win with the progress, much better than going to 1-5 and, and and thinking maybe you took a little bit of a step back. So, uh, yeah, big one for all, all five. SMU, I don't know. They're, they're, they're not very good. Not very good this year at all. So I, I'd put them last on the must win. Our biggest need for a win this week. And I expected more by now from June Jones and young Gilbert. And we saw it a little bit early, but but really now, step back more. Yeah, they've gone in the wrong direction. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll get into that with Justin Puente. We'll hear uh, from him. Also a uh, big one going on at College Station this week, Texas A&M and Auburn. Voice of the Auburn Tigers, Rod Bramlett, will join us to talk about that matchup. Auburn. When they've scored 30 points, have won their last 81 games. How about that nugget today? 81 games when they score over 30 points. Good chance to score over 30 points against Texas A&M, but as we talked about last week when Ole Miss was getting set, you're going to have to score more than 30. You're going to probably have to get mid-40s to have a shot against Texas A&M, and I think Auburn will have to do that. Baseline 35. Isn't it? Oh, minimum. It's absolutely. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll talk to Rod coming up here in a little bit. We'll also talk some basketball today. Hank McDowell will join us. We'll go inside Hoop City uh, with Hank McDowell. And uh, we'll also hear from the Memphis Grizzlies head coach, Dave Yeager. Had a chance to visit with Coach uh, at practice earlier this morning. Uh, Grizzlies practicing today and leaving this afternoon. They're getting on that bird, taking off right now. Heading to Orlando, and then they'll play... Uh, they'll play Orlando tomorrow night, and then Sunday afternoon they will play in Atlanta. Uh, and then uh, one other road game next week, Wednesday, next Wednesday in Toronto. And one more home game, and then it's uh, the regular season, October 30th in San Antonio, November 1st at home against the Detroit Pistons. Will they stay on the road or come back and then go back to Atlanta? They are coming, they're going to Orlando, going to Atlanta, and then coming home. And then they'll... Uh, Come home. They'll be home Sunday early, dinner time Sunday, and practice. I imagine Monday and Tuesday at FedEx Forum before departing for Toronto's game on Wednesday, and then uh, they'll be done with the road portion of the preseason. So uh, we'll check in with Coach Yeager coming up uh, here in a little bit. A lot of talk about you know the plan for the remaining four games halfway through the preseason schedule. So the plan remaining for the final four games and uh, a lot of defensive talk uh, as well from. 
Coach Yeager. So uh, we'll hear from him a little bit later on. And also today we have our Gould Style segment, uh, Who's Got Style, Who's in Need of It uh, this week in the world of sports. And, of course, our Sleep Cheap Big number of the day. And the Fish and Stats Top 10's got a little shake-up this week. We'll give you the uh, the final tally on the Fish and Stats Top 10 for the week. So a lot of things uh, to get into today, a lot of things that we will talk about today. And you can text into the program at any point at 67129, and we get to those throughout the show. 67129 is how you can text in. And uh, if you've never texted in before, your first text in the body of the text just put 56 join, 56 join, hit send, you'll get a confirmation text in return, and then you'll be able to join uh, text in to this show and all shows all day, every day here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. A lot of things going on in the world of sports. Uh, Major League Baseball playoffs continue tonight. The ALCS continues. That series now even up at two games apiece as Detroit beat Boston 7-3 to three, yes, our last night to even it up at two apiece. Uh, Detroit had six runs in the first three games. They go for seven last night, including five runs in the second inning. We talked about yesterday on the show stats, Jim Leland shaking up the lineup, and it's kind of scary when you shake up the lineup in the middle of an ALCS game four, and he shakes it up, and it works. So genius move by Jim Leland. Mr. Heater made it work. <laughs> so Worked out for him, and uh, Detroit evens things up. We had more offense yesterday than Almost all of October combined. That's right, because the Cardinals and Dodgers, they score 10 total runs. Dodgers uh, on the winning side of that one, 6-4, to four, two home runs from Adrian Gonzalez. Zach Granke goes seven innings, gives up a couple of earned runs. The Cardinals did threaten in the ninth inning uh, to cut it to 6-4, to four, but uh, they left a couple of base runners on base. Stranded 13th in the game. Whew. That's almost as many base runners as they've had in the series. And Yadier Molina had a rough game yesterday. First inning, bases loaded, he nobody out. Adam awesome. strikes out. Yadi hits into a double play. And later in the game, first and third, one out. Yadi hits into a double play. Ninth inning, strikeout with guys on base. Uh, he, uh, he, he, he had a rough one yesterday. But, you know, he's the perfect guy, and every team has the – the go-to guy. I mean, it's Yachty's team. It's Yachty's town now in St. Louis for active players. It's Mike Shannon's town. Everybody knows that. But for active players, it's Yachty A. Molina's. And he's probably the perfect guy tomorrow to give that two-week speech. Guys, we got to dig We got to dig in for two more weeks. And then over the next two weeks, what we do, we will go down in history. You, you I mean, Pete Cosma, um, Segrist, the most innocuous guy in the clubhouse, uh, Adrian Chambers, you'll be remembered forever yeah. over the next two, for what we do the next two weeks. Cardinals back at it tomorrow night against the Dodgers, and Clayton Kershaw takes the hill for Los Angeles, and the Cardinals will go with Michael Waka in game six. I'm still fine. I, I'm fine. I'm right where I was when it was 3 1. Got two chances at home with Waka and Wainwright. Yeah, and, and good for the, the reluctance of Waka going out there, well, they have Raul in Game 7 against Wainwright. That's about as, should be about as big a mismatch. Should be. Should be, but <laughs> at this point, it's, it's all coin toss. Yep, it's about who makes the plays and who takes advantage of opportunities. And uh, we've seen that throughout. And getting the ball is plays so big. Getting the bat on the ball, because even in, uh, at this time of year, I heard Tim Doolin say this this morning, even the big leaguers may have one just fall right between them. We've seen right, it. Right. You might have one go right through the wickets. You may, uh, like in the 2006 World Series when it looked like the Tigers had never taken infield. <laughs> exactly, That and which was unbelievable how bad they were. The ball was flying all over the yeah. place. Uh, college football news today, Ole Miss uh, defensive end C.J. Johnson done for the season. Uh, surgery on that injured leg. Uh, he qualifies for a medical redshirt, however, and will have two years left of eligibility. But That's a big break because that he got hurt in the Alabama game. Got hurt early and went back in, gutted it out, and then was out for the Auburn game and now out, out last week for A&M, now out for the year. So that was in the early stages of game five that he was injured in. Yeah. Yeah. So C.J. Johnson will be done for the season. Ole Miss getting set to host LSU this weekend. And uh, LSU defense really stepping up. Haven't allowed a touchdown in the last six quarters of play. Uh, Ole Miss has lost three straight games. Three of the last four between these two teams decided by a touchdown or less. So uh, expecting another good one in Oxford this weekend. NFL news. Uh, 
couple quarterback notes. Case Keenum will start for the Houston Texans, not the Houston Cougars. Case Keenum will start for the Houston Texans this week. Matt Schaub is out with an injury and no TJ8. So Case Keenum getting the start for Houston. Interesting. A lot of people had the Texans around toward the end. Ne- neither of us did, right? No. A lot of people Super Bowl talk for the Houston Texans. Case Keenum, their starting quarterback. Now it could be start over A to Z at Houston. Coach, quarterback. Yep. Mike Vick out. That's A and B from A to Z. <laughs> Mike Vick out this week for Philadelphia. Nick Foles will get the start again there. And E.J. Manuel, according to uh, head coach Marone, uh, he's going to be out another four to six weeks with his injury. So he'll uh, still be out for some time. They did sign Matt Flynn this week. Matt Flynn. Uh, Matt Flynn's seeing the country, isn't he? He's doing all right, coast to coast. For Matt Flynn. Flynn. Green Bay, Seattle, <laughs> doing Oakland, all, yeah, doing doing Buffalo. All right. NBA News, uh, Michael Jordan uh, talking about the big matchup with Robert Para. No, Robert He's Parra, losing sleep, I don't think. No, Robert Parra wanted to put a million bucks uh, for charity on the line and uh, play one-on-one with uh, the Bobcats owner. And uh, Michael Jordan was talking with the Charlotte Observer and basically said he called it comical. And when you read Michael Jordan's quotes in this story, it really sounds like a, you know, the big college football team in the state. And the reason why they won't play the little college football team in the state is exactly uh, what it came across as. Michael Jordan saying, I think that's comical. It didn't make any sense. Why would I play one-on-one? It's a no-win situation for me, no matter what. The old no-win situation. Michael Jordan, net worth, what do you think? Uh, 300 plus, you would hope. 200 plus, easy. Yeah. Robert Perra. Four billion? Well, a, a million out of Michael George's pocket hurts a little more than it does out of Robert Paris. Robert Perra responded on Twitter saying, Ha ha, it's okay. People have been calling me comical not too long and around four billion dollars ago when my only friends were Visa and MasterCard. Just played the scoreboard <laughs> and played the bank account, didn't he? He didn't go scoreboard, he went bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Good for Robert Barra. That was uh, that was kind of fun. Bank account. Yeah. So those two going back and forth. Uh, he, he could flip <laughs> Michael Jordan for his net worth. Yeah. Yeah. Greg Oden uh, has a sore knee, missing practice with the Miami Heat. So uh, we'll see how that holds up for him going forward. Big news out of uh, Louisville with their basketball team, Shane Bohannon, is suspended indefinitely for a violation of university policy. Uh, Rick Pitino saying. Uh, that uh, Bohannon is having a difficult time understanding life's values. We're more concerned about him as a person right now than we are of him as a player. Uh, According to some reports, it sounds like uh, he won't, then he's not going to be with the team. He's going to be away from the team as well during the suspension. Uh, It sounds like, uh, at least according to some reports, that he will be gone for November and December, and that's at least at this point. Patino saying that there were a lot of things that they've put in front of him that he needed to do to get back in good standing and come back to the team. I guess they didn't know any of this yesterday, did they? No. And apparently he has already failed to adhere to one of those things. So uh, putting it in order, keeping him away from the team, and a big loss for Louisville. Their depth up front is not great. For a different reason, they had to go early last year without Georgie. Jang. Jang, thank you. (laughs) You could tell I was groping, hoping. Uh, Now this year they got to go without Bahan, and that – that, that'll be big, but they'll, they'll be fine by March. Yeah, they'll be fine by March. Uh, Tigers do not play them uh, until, I believe it is January. March. I think it's that. Or is it January? Yeah. Let's see. January 9th at Louisville. And then uh, they come to Memphis on March 1st. By March 1st, they'll be fine. Georgia Tech's Trey Golden, former UT volunteer, has gotten a waiver from the NCAA, and he will be allowed to play immediately. So uh, he will be... Uh, Good to go for Georgia Tech this year. Free agency in college sports. <laughs> Man, they're just handing out. You can't swing a dead cat without seeing a waiver you in college can't. football these days. They're everywhere for right. any reason. Or in college basketball, my goodness. Uh, the coaches poll, first coaches poll is out today. And no surprise, you have the Kentucky Wildcats as the number one team in the country. 16 number one votes. Number two is Michigan State. They had three number one votes. Louisville had ten number one votes, but they come in at number three. Duke at number four. They also got some number one votes. They had three of them. Uh, rest of the top ten is Arizona, Kansas, Syracuse, Florida, Michigan, and Ohio State. 
Memphis comes in at number 13 in the coaches' poll. And as far as uh, the SEC is concerned, well, that's it. Kentucky and Florida in the top 10. Nobody else. Tennessee did get some votes. Uh, they, If you stretch it out, they would be 30th uh, with the votes that they received. Mizzou got four votes. LSU got a couple of votes. And Georgia got a vote as well. Georgia Bulldogs. Mark Fox can't vote, can he? <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Spurrier voting Georgia <laughs> with a vote this week. Uh, so the Tigers coming in at number thirteen. All right. How about a top story today? Top story of the day. You you want a top story with a period at the end, and I just have a question mark. So Rob, who controls these LCS now? I know Cardinals are up three two, but it feels fragile. It feels like oh no, it's happening again. It's two two on the other side. So there's, there's no control there. Boston will get game six, game six and seven at Fenway if, if needed. Yeah, I don't, I don't. One more in Detroit. I don't look at any. So who controls it? If you had had to say one team, next you, day's you, hot pitcher. Are you gonna give me that? Well, no. <laughs> if I had to pick one team, you'd have to say the Cardinals. They're up three two heading home for two games, with Adam Wainwright being yeah. the starter in one of them, and and the kid who's been dominant, Phenom, another. The last three starts have been ridiculous. So you'd have to say that they they are in control more so than anybody else. And I guess number two, you'd say Detroit. Their pitching has been mm-hmm. so good, and you know, got the bats going last night. You know, I know baseball's not a momentum sport, but I guess I would go with Detroit second because uh, their pitching has been good, and they did get the hitting going a little bit. So I'll, I'll go ahead and say those two are in control. But by a slim margin and control, you know, forcing me to say who's in control, I would say those two teams. But I think both series are a long way from being over, for sure. All right, how about not top story today? Not top story of the day. A couple of basketball notes out of the ordinary this week. Uh, back in July, the San Antonio Spurs sent an intern to deliver a new contract to Manu Ginobili in Argentina. That's kind of interesting itself. Not a bad game. No. However, the intern ran into some problems. The contract was stolen by a bird. A bird stole the contract. Hours before the intern was to fly home, a team official said he was, well, he was basically accosted by a bird in a park, tidied up next to a fountain. His backpack disappeared. Inside was a Ginobili signed contract along with the intern's passport, cell phone, and laptop. That is a strong bird. Luckily, an international sports crisis was averted. An assistant traveling soon after uh, brought a fresh contract and returned it to Texas without incident, and uh, no birds got him. Not sure. Well, he failed the first big summer job we gave not, you. Not, not sure if the intern was able to get back and lose his pass. A bird? That's a big bird. Stealing a laptop? That happens all the time. Backpack? Right? they got big birds over there in Argentina. Also, the uh, Lakers, another injury problem. This one, uh, Chris Kamen apparently got injured at the Great Wall of China while he was tobogganing. Yeah, one of his fingers was squashed while he was sledding down a slippery concrete track after trekking along the wall for two hours with Lakers teammates and staffers. What do you think occurs more, the bird stealing things or being injured tobogganing at the Great Wall of China? Well, when you're sledding down a slippery concrete track, I'll say the tobogganing probably is a common occurrence for those injuries. And there's so many people over there, it's probably the law of average because there's so many more. Basically, the sled is a wheeled cart with a brake. Uh, rammed, what got rammed from behind by former Memphis Tiger Sean Williams uh, came and then instinctively put out his hand as he saw Williams coming after him and, uh, and smashed his finger. So, uh, Which hand, right or left? Uh, it was his right. That's, that's his go-to hand. Oh, no, no. Let's see. Uh, it was... Uh, I'm not sure. Not sure which finger it was actually. It's one or the other. Yeah, it's one or the other. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so injured the finger a little bit. Uh, said it's throbbing, but he says he'll be okay and he'll be able to play. So, be careful when tobogganing along the Great Wall of China for all those travelers. Who who knew weighing in on the Para Jordan thing, you could be accused of being a homer. <laughs> Got text. 
Stop being a Grizzlies homer, Stats. Jordan got Nike and fans backing him. Fans going to pass the hat? <laughs> you didn't even pick Parrot to win, did you? Uh-uh, I sure didn't. You want to? No. <laughs> well, then you're not. He wouldn't one. score. Yeah, well, you might get the first one. If he gets the ball first. He would get a shot off. You know, the the great Michael Jordan one-on-one matchup came with J.R. Reed. Remember J.R. Reed? Mm-hmm. And he got in his face one summer well after Jordan's eligibility was up and wanted to play him, and Jordan finally said, okay, we'll play, but it's make it, take it, one to ten, and I get the ball first. And they said before he put up the first shot, he goes, you're never touching the ball. <laughs> it was 10-0. <laughs> well, Robert Perry better hope he gets the ball first if that thing ever happens. We will take a uh, break here in a second, and when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, Auburn and Texas A&M as they get – uh, they battled down at College Station this week. The voice of the Auburn Tigers, Rod Bramlett, uh, will join us to talk about that big matchup. As I mentioned, Auburn, 287 yards per game on the ground, and they play the freshman last week at quarterback. They say he's still going to be involved. We'll ask Rod how that's going to happen. Auburn 0-3 all-time against Texas A&M. A&M's won 11 of their last 12 games. But Auburn's putting up some points. We'll see how many they can put up against Texas A&M this week, and will they be able to slow down Johnny Manziel, of course, is the big question. Dan Gray's going to join us from the Gold Sheet a little later as we'll go inside the lines with him. Check out all the college and pro action this weekend. We're just underway, live from Tunica National this afternoon. Fish and Stats with you. We'll be here until 6 o'clock today. Thanks for joining us, and stick with us. We'll be back right after this timeout. Keep it right here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. We are the voice of Tigers fans. Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Brian Elder's Roof. I'm Brian Elder. Don't let him tell you that your roof has to be replaced. I may be able to repair it and save you thousands. 867-0303. Let me climb up on your roof. We're the guys people call after they've already been rejected by their insurance company. If only they'd called me first. Because if I think it's a claim, it's a claim. And I'll fight for it. 867-0303. We built the roof on the St. Jude Dream Home. And all six roofs on this year's Vesta Home Show. Call me to find out why. Are you getting estimates? I'll measure your roof from outer space and give you an estimate right over the phone. Financing available. A lifetime warranty. Shingles, metal, or commercial. 867-0303. 867-0303 or brianelderroofing.com. Call 867-0303. Brian Elder's Roofing Solutions. When was the last time you were in James Davis? Because if you haven't been there in the last couple of months, you haven't been to the best men's store in all of Memphis and Laurelwood. Oh, my goodness, James Davis is amazing. If you want a custom suit or you maybe need a new sports shirt, you can relax in the newly remodeled custom clothing room, complete with a fully stocked refreshment bar, coffee bar, flat screen TV, and unlimited Wi-Fi. It's like sitting in your den, and then they bring you wonderful things. And for a limited time, you can purchase any suit or any sport coat with a pair of pants, and you get a free Martin Dingman crocodile belt. That's a $295 value. And for a limited time, you can purchase any dress shirt, tie, sports shirt, or sweater, and you get the second one 50% off. Or a pair of shoes. The second one's 25% off. Oh, and did I mention you always get same-day alterations or as close as they can get? James Davis is amazing with a complete remodel job. They've got stores within stores like the Peter Millar shop or the Robert Graham shop, the huge denim selection. It's the best. James Davis Men's Store in the Laurelwood Shopping Center. Okay, Peter, I pose this question to you. Is Central Barbecue really central anymore? I mean, they've got three locations now. Hmm, philosophical, Zeke. Let me think. Yes, they are still Central Barbecue because the original will always be on Central. But you've got the location on Summer and the new one downtown right behind the National Civil Rights Museum. And here's the best part. Central Barbecue is not about location. Central Barbecue is about barbecue. The best in the city and therefore the best in the world. Have you tried the wings? I have not tried the wings yet. Barbecue is great, but they've got wings 
homemade chips, great side items like mac and cheese and greens. On top of that award-winning barbecue that you know and love, Zeke, it is fabulous. So you can get all the great things you can get at Central Barbecue at all three locations. All three locations and online at cbqmemphis.com. So really, they've got infinite locations. You can send it anywhere in this beautiful nation of ours, Zeke. Send a little piece of Memphis to friends and family outside the area at cbqmemphis.com. Jim's Place is a family-owned and operated restaurant serving Memphis since 1921. Famous for its steaks, Jim's has something for everyone, including seafood and Greek specialties reflecting the owner's heritage. Father and son owners, Costa and Bill Terrace, are committed to providing the best in food and service to you. And our new love is catering. Now in a beautiful new location, Poplar and Perkins, and online at jimsplacememphis.com, 901-766-2030. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 3.30 on Bash. Well, the ASCS is tied up at two games apiece, and the Boston Red Sox will visit the Detroit Tigers for Game 5 tonight. That'll start around 7 o'clock Central Time with coverage on Fox. John Lester will be the starter for the Red Sox, with Annabelle Sanchez going for the Tigers. And with Jim Leland changing up his lineup last night, it looks like John Farrell will be doing the same tonight. Rookie Xander Bogarts will start at third base in place of the struggling Will Middlebrooks. Cardinals Dodgers series takes the day off today. and We'll get game six tomorrow evening. That'll start at 7.30 Central Time in St. Louis. A couple of notes out of the NFL. Houston Texans coach Gary Kubiak announced today that Case Keenum will be the starting QB after ruling Matt Schaub out with an ankle injury. Keenum has been inactive for the first six games, and TJ Yates had filled in last week for Schaub, but obviously Kubiak's looking for a spark of sorts. Eagles coach or quarterback Michael Vick put an end to the suspense as he ruled himself out for this Sunday's game against the Dallas Cowboys. Nick Foles will make his second start of the season and his eighth of his career. Your Thursday night NFL matchup has the Arizona Cardinals hosting the Seattle Seahawks. That will start at 725 Central Time this evening, of course, with coverage on the NFL Network. And your Thursday night college matchup has an ACC battle with number 10 Miami visiting North Carolina. That one will be on ESPN starting at 630 Central Time. A couple of notes out of the college ranks as well. Georgia coach Mark Rick said today that his team is preparing to play without running back Todd Gurley once again. Gurley suffered an ankle sprain back on September 28th against LSU. Two notes out of the college basketball ranks. Louisville forward Shane Behannon has been suspended indefinitely for, from the team due to an unspecified violation of university policy. And former Tennessee guard Trey Golden has received an NCAA waiver to play this season at Georgia Tech, according to CBSSports.com. The sports reports brought to you by the Shotners. Get your game back with testosterone replacement therapy from the Shotners. It's the convenient, affordable way to revitalize your life. Check it out at Shotners.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Welcome back, everyone. Fish and Stats with you on this Thursday afternoon. We are live from Tunica National today. We'll be here until 6 o'clock. We're going to talk some hoops coming up next hour. Hank McDowell will join us. We'll go inside Hoop City with Hank, get his thoughts on the Grizz and the Tigers as we get set for both of those seasons to get started. Plus, We'll also check in with the head coach of the Memphis Grizzlies, Dave Yeager. Had a chance to visit with him at practice this morning as the Grizzlies uh, are currently flying to Orlando where they'll take on the Magic tomorrow night and then they'll be at Atlanta on Sunday. And then they will be at Toronto next Wednesday and then they'll come home one more preseason home game before the regular season gets underway for the Grizz. So we'll talk to Dave Yeager about these final four games at the halfway point of the preseason schedule and get his thoughts on uh, what to look forward to in the next four games. Also, Russ Mitchell will join us, talk all things SEC, coming up in the 5 o'clock hour today. A lot to get to today and a lot of football to talk about, including a big, big weekend in the Southeastern Conference, a lot of conference games, including a big one in College Station as the Auburn Tigers travel to take on the Texas A&M Aggies. And joining us right now, it's a pleasure to have on the program with us. He is the voice of the Auburn Tigers. Rod Bramlett is with us. Hello, Rob. How are you doing? We are doing very well. How are you doing, sir? Oh, just uh, getting ready for a, a big weekend over in College Station. It should be a lot of fun. All right, Rod, break it down for us. We know you've got the secret recipe on how to stop <laughs> Johnny football, right? <laughs> Well, I, I think if you could slip a sedative in his uh, morning orange juice, maybe he'd sleep <laughs> through the game. But I'm not sure he'd even do that. I don't think he would. He, run, he runs pretty hot. <laughs> he doesn't show know, up Saturday. May... We got this on tape, Rod. <laughs> <laughs> it may take two. It may, it may take a double shot. But, uh, no, it's, uh, I don't think he can't stop it. But uh, I think, you know, Auburn's coming into this thing with some confidence and uh, 
Uh, you know, they've been getting better every single week. And, and I know everybody around here is really excited to get over there and, and see how Auburn matches up. And I, I think I think Auburn feels like they can they can put some points on the board. The whole question is, how do you slow them down? And, and so far, no one's been able to come up with that answer. And what a unique seat perspective for you, because in in, in your position, you got to call the 14 and 0 Cam Newton phenomenon one year. And it was one great year, and now last year you got to see Johnny Manziel, and this year you get to see him again. And th- those comparisons are out there. I-, I said after seeing him last weekend in Oxford for the second year in a row, uh, he- he's not better than Herschel on offense. I don't think he's better than Bo on offense, but he's in the Archie, Peyton, Cam Newton, Darren McFadden, I'm Tebow. Tim Tebow. He's in that league. What, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I think the, the common thread there, because you're talking about the, the, the guys you've mentioned are all kind of different, you know, in terms of the way they went about playing the game. But I think the common thread is just their ultra, ultra competitiveness, their desire not to lose and to do whatever it takes to win, and their just football instinct. He is, to me, he has the, 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 the best instincts of any quarterback I've seen, and to go along with his. Uh, athletic ability, and he's one of those guys you look at, and, and unless you, and when you're watching him on TV, you really can't appreciate it unless you're there in person. You watch him on TV, and you're going, "How is this?" Because he looks, he just looks like an average size kind of guy. I mean, you know, it's not like he's Cam Newton, he towers above everybody else, or Bo Jackson, guys that that we've seen around here. But his instincts are just phenomenal, and I think that's what makes it so hard to defend him because nobody's been able to get inside his head. And I think, you know, he's just hes just a different character, a great quarterback, great athlete, and just, you know, he's just one of those guys that's real easy to rally around and, and follow because he just, he'll do whatever it takes not to lose, lose a football game. Rod, on, on Auburn's side, uh, obviously the start of the season's been terrific and uh, the competitiveness has has been great. Uh, a much different change from a year ago, but a lot of the same players from from a year ago. What's been the biggest change with this football team? You know, Coach Malzahn and his staff they've done a real good job, and I think it really started in the spring of getting everybody just back on the same page. Um, you know, I really don't don't, don't care to, to rehash what what went wrong last year with this Auburn team because I think it was a laundry list of things that just snowballed. <laughs> But everybody was kind of fractured and going in different directions. And I think Coach Malzahn, has, that was his first goal. And uh, the, the whole team, they'll, they'll, they wear bracelets, little armbands that say together. And I think that's been a key. I think that was step one. And at the end of the day, Gene Chizik and his staff recruited pretty well. I mean, it's not like the cover was totally bare. And a lot of these guys, Gus Malzahn helped recruit when he was here before. So there was some familiarity there. And then you factor in Ellis Johnson in the mix, who is just a, a he is just he's seen more defensive schemes than than almost anybody combined. I tell you, it's been a pleasure getting to know him. He's injected some energy. Rodney Garner has injected some energy in that defensive front, and every single week they just seem to get a little better, and uh, that's what's been most impressive to me. It seems like uh, coming into the season, I guess the concern with Nick Marshall was. Last year in at JUCO, the number of turnovers that he's had that he had uh, a year ago, and and really those numbers haven't haven't been bad uh, this year. Uh, I know he had a couple, I guess, in his last game, but what four turnovers I think now on the season, and and his ability to run, what we saw against Ole Miss, certainly was impressive. Uh, what what have been your thoughts on on Nick Marshall leading this Auburn offense? You know, I think he's another guy that's getting better every week, and and uh, you know a little bit like Cam Newton. I'm not comparing him to Cam Newton, but the way the coaches have handled him has been a little bit like Cam Newton because when, when Cam was here, they were not quite 100% sure everything that he could do, what he would do those first couple times he took a lick. And, you know, over the course of about, it took about three games to finally just turn it loose. And that's kind of been the case with, with Nick Marshall. Uh, he's won two ball games for Auburn. He, he won the Mississippi State game with his arm. Yeah. And he won the old Miss game with his feet. So, I he mean, did. he's getting more comfortable. He's not a real big kid, but he's elusive. He's a little bit like Manziel in that respect. He can run around a little bit, make you miss. Um, 
So now he's just got to do it on the road. He struggled a little bit out of gates at LSU. The weather was bad, uh, but he settled down. So now he's just got to, you know, he's just got to go out there to College Station and, and, and take that next step and play that big game on the road where he leads his team to, to what hopefully will be a win. Rod, at the Ole Miss game, I was very impressed with how Rhett Lashley and Gus Malzahn both handled him. They, they're coaching him really, really tough. He, he had an errant throw or two, and when he got to the sideline, um, that wasn't a steam building. That was coaching. That was, that was getting in his grill, and, and they, they got him pretty good, and he got better as that game went along. Well, yes, and that's what they do with a lot of these guys. I mean, they are constantly coaching them up because they know that this team is not that far removed from last year. And they don't, I don't think, the, the, the philosophy is I don't believe they want them to feel like they're, they're not getting better. So they're going to coach them constantly. They don't want them to take that step back. And, and with Nick Marshall, I think he's the kind of kid that you can do that. You know, some kids nowadays, you can't get right up in their face and, I mean, and get after them. They just don't respond. I mean, that's just a fact of life, the way things are now. Nick Marshall responds to that sort of thing, and he wants to be challenged. And it's been fun to watch him develop. I'm really, really anxious to see how he handles the atmosphere in College Station because, to be honest, guys, the atmosphere in LSU was not that hostile. It had been raining. The stadium was about maybe half full, and Auburn turned it over a couple times, and the crowd was kind of out of it. I don't think that will be the case this Saturday. Rod Bramlett, the voice of the Auburn Tigers, our guest, and you make a you make a really good point about, and, and it may be the biggest thing to coaching at this level because you know everybody coaching in SEC knows football and they've worked hard to get there, but you got to really know that youngster that you can crawl him pretty good and he responds to it are the ones that if you crawl him too much and you may be embarrassed him in front of his friends and and his other teammates they they, they withdraw on you. Well, and, and another coach, I'm going to use another coach on the staff that, that I think has as good a grasp on reading kids as anybody, and that's the wide receivers coach and co-offensive coordinator Damian Craig. I watch him working with his group of about nine or ten guys, and there are a couple guys that he just will, I mean, he's relentless. I mean, he's just constantly coaching them hard, getting on them, but then you turn around and you see he's kind of saying the same thing to maybe a couple other guys, that don't take that approach well. In other words, he's kind of putting his arm around them and loving on them a little bit, but he's still coaching them and trying to tell them the same thing and communicate the same thing to them. And that is that is just a huge key, and it's 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 not easy to do. It's a talent, and and if you have that ability to understand kids and, and what they respond to, uh, you can be <laughs> you can be real successful in this business because those are the kinds of kids that will respect you and get better for it. Don't you feel at this point with Gus Malzahn, I mean, he could put one of us three in there and get the most out of us. <laughs> I'm not going to say we'd be good, but could get the most out of us at quarterback. I mean, the number of, what is it, eight years in a row he's had a different quarterback as a coach, and, and he's had success with, with all of them. It's incredible. Well, no disrespect to last week's opponent, but that certainly is a true statement last week. I don't think any of us could have called any of us in Carolina and had a really nice day. But, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the other thing that I think everybody's anxious to see because since he's been a college coach, he's not had the same starter for more than one year. And right now he is set up to, to have that in Nick Marshall. And, and Jeremy Johnson is, is, is the backup now and played last week. I mean, he's going to have some consistency here. And we've already seen when he was here before, and particularly 2010, how his offense, in particular, they just seem to get better every week. They just seem to get more comfortable. So I think everybody's excited to see what happens now when he gets a chance to coach up a quarterback for more than just 12 or 13 games and, and have him much longer than that. How do you think uh, Jeremy Johnson is used going forward? He will have a role, and I wish I knew what it was. And, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to get in Gus's mind because it's constantly thinking of just the craziest stuff and how we're going to use them. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we looked out there at one point in time Saturday and Marshall and uh, Johnson were both on the field at the same time. I mean, he just, he can come up with stuff. Jeremy Johnson is the backup. There's no controversy, uh, at whatsoever. Um, but, you know, this kid is, 
you know, you, you walk, if you watch him walk out there, and I'm going to tell you something, he looks, he looks a little bit like number two out there, Cam Newton, uh, his, I, his, I, as a freshman, uh, in just the way he's built. I'm not sure if his game is the same, but he's going to be a great quarterback. He will have a role in this offense. And, uh, you know what? I think it's, uh, I think Auburn fans are comfortable with Gus Malzahn and Rhett Lashley figuring out what that role is going to be. Well, he's already had a role because in the nightmares he's given the A&M defensive coaches game plan wise. <laughs> so he he's well, had a role this week if the, if he if he really never plays it down. He's a great passer, and he's I think he's still you know it's the offense is what he ran in high school, and I think he's a little better passer than the Nick Marshall. But you know what I don't, I'm not sure what we learned when he in that Western Carolina game. I, you know you still got to go out there against a tough opponent and do it. But you're right. I mean, now Texas A&M's had to worry just, even if it was just a little bit. You know, you've you've taken you've taken their attention away and put it on somebody they didn't expect to have to focus on, and they got to think about it at least. And um, you know, I, I I wouldn't be surprised to see Jeremy Johnson out there some this this week. Uh, he's Gus has yet to find that wildcat kind of quarterback, and I'm guessing that um, maybe we'll see him in that role a little bit. Has this start satisfied the faithful? I mean, you win it all in 2010, and a good year in 2011. A lot of people back up after national championship year, and then that last year. I know you don't want to go into all that from last year, but has this satisfied the faithful? Can they can they can they breathe again? Can they live again? Can they you can know, they shout War Eagle in, in, the, in the Crimson <laughs> Tiders face again? Well, I, you know, I think I think it's headed in the right direction. I think people are excited about it. There are a few who are getting a little ahead of themselves. They're already, you know, say, well, you know, Auburn wins Saturday and Alabama beats LSU, and Auburn's got control of their own destiny all the way to Atlanta. And that's great to be able to look at that that way. I mean, it's as a fan, that's what you want to be able to do. I think it's getting a little ahead of themselves, but they see progress. They see a team that's getting better every week. And, you know, I think as long as, as this team doesn't take, you know, two, three steps backwards over the last half of the season, which is a really tough schedule, um, you know, I think, I think people have, have been thrilled with the way things have played out so far. They're excited about the future. And, and um, you know, if it, you know I'm, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't sure how quickly uh, Gus Malzahn and his staff could kind of restore that faith again, but I think they've done it. I really do. Mm, sure feels like it, definitely. Well, Rod, have a good time. Uh, College Station should be a fantastic ball game. Looking forward to a lot of points uh, being scored on Saturday in that <laughs> one. Thank you much for your time. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Take care, guys. All right, thanks, Rod. Rod Bramlett uh, joining us, the voice of the Auburn Tigers. Uh, Auburn has had success on the ground, 287 yards a game. Texas A&M is allowing 32 points per game. They are scoring 47.8 per game. Auburn, eight offensive touchdowns against the Southeastern Conference in three games this year. They had eight total all of last year. However, when they score points, they win. They've won 81 straight games when they score 30 or more points. Also, Auburn, uh, their last eight road games, they have lost. They've lost eight straight away from home. They're 1-7 and seven against the spread on the road in those last eight. Meanwhile, Texas A&M, they've won 11 of their last 12 games overall, 400 or more yards in 18 straight games, 40 or more points in nine straight games. You're going to have to beat them in a... You hate to have to beat them in a shootout, but you got to beat them in a shootout. And I, I don't know how wildly talented in the passing game, either throwing it or catching it, Auburn is, but I know they can spread you out, and Marshall can really gas you, and Trey Mason can as well, and they've, they've got a, others. If they can keep it their kind of tempo game and keep away a little bit from Johnny Manziel, they can carry that game into the fourth quarter and steal it at the horn, get on the bus, and get out of town. Hey, controlling your own destiny after eight weeks, even though it might – and not be uh, attainable. It's it's certainly amazing that after eight weeks you you're talking that way. I'm by no means calling an upset, but I know a lot of crazy things happen in rivalry games, particularly the Iron Bowl, and especially when it's going so well for one. That's when the other one really gets you, and it's at, on the plains. But you're not calling anything. Nope. Okay. Uh, Alabama this week uh, they take on Arkansas. They're a 28 and a half point favorite over the Hogs. Alabama, the first three games of the year, had 396 total rushing yards. Their last three games, 724. That would be 300 and, what, 28 more uh, in these last three games than they had in the first three games. Schedule and cohesion. 
but mostly schedule. Also, in the last four games, Alabama's outscored their opponents 149-16. to They've allowed just one touchdown that last week against Kentucky. Alabama's won 10 straight games. Meanwhile, Arkansas, they've lost six straight against Alabama. They've lost seven straight against the SEC. They've lost four straight right now uh, and scored 17 total points in the last two games. They've covered just one time their last 11 on the road. They are averaging 216 yards on the ground, but we'll see if uh, they can get that going against the Tide this week. 28.5 point favorite for Alabama. We'll take a break. We'll come back and wrap up this first hour of Fish and Stats live from Tunica National this afternoon here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Hard Bashing with John Harden and David Basham. Saturday mornings at 10 right here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Luxury with amazing technology. It's the new 2014 RLX. This is General Manager Greg Hapke. Drive the all-new 2014 Acura RLX for just $4.79 a month. Luxury at a whole new level. AcuraofMemphis.com. At Farm Credit Mid-America, we know there's more to living out here than farming, which is why we offer more than credit for farmers. We use our financial and agricultural knowledge to tailor solutions that help rural residents achieve their goals. At Farm Credit, we know you're not just looking for a loan. You're working to maintain a way of life. Call 901-465-2794. Farm Credit Mid-America is an equal housing lender. There's no better time to come by Germantown Hardware and Paint. Get yourself ready for the fall season. Germantown Hardware and Paint stocks the largest supply of Weber grills and accessories in the Mid-South and now has added Holland grills to their extensive inventory. If you're looking for paint or stain, then look no further. Germantown Hardware and Paint has a complete line of Benjamin Moore paints. Why battle long lines and inexperienced staff at large commercial stores when you can get what you want right around the corner? With a promise of service and convenience, Justin and his staff are knowledgeable, friendly, and committed to make sure you are taken care of. Want to get your yard looking better than ever? With brand names such as Toro, Echo, Steel, and Honda, whether it's chainsaws, lawnmowers, blowers, Germantown Hardware and Paint has everything you need to get the job done right. If you need it, Germantown Hardware and Paint has it. Conveniently located at the corner of Poplar and Germantown Parkway, it's Germantown Hardware and Paint, the only real hardware store in the Mid-South. No grit, no grind, no glory. The season is here and the Grizz are back. Be there for every greater Memphis moment and guarantee your seats to Miami, the Clippers, Lakers, and more with Grizzlies 11 and 20 game packs starting as low as $12 a game. Call 888-HOOP or click grizzlies.com today. Hi, welcome to FedEx. How can I help you? Tell me something. Do you ship China? China? Sure. FedEx offers time-definite delivery, typically in one, two, or three business days, to or from more than 220 countries and territories worldwide, including China. We even offer help with customs paperwork. No, I mean, do you ship China? You know, like fancy plates and stuff. Oh, of course we ship China. Where do you want it shipped? Beijing. You do ship to China, don't you? International Shipping Solutions. FedEx. Solutions that matter. Go to FedEx.com slash solutions that matter. In the fall, mills close out their excess inventory. And now we've got the deals at Lumber Liquidator's second annual fall flooring yard sale. All floors are on sale. Like clearance flooring from 19 cents a square foot and laminate from 39 cents. Beautiful bamboo from 139. Pre-finished hardwood from just 159. Plus special extended financing. If you liked our famous April sale, you'll love our fall flooring yard sale. Sales going on now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com or get to your local store today. Many people with Medicare drug plans don't know they're at the corner of the best plan for me and, at least it was last year, at Walgreens, our expert pharmacists can help you find the right plan with our free comparison report. Check to see if you could save up to 75% on prescription copays. Walgreens, at the corner of happy and healthy. Based on tier one copay for select plans featuring Walgreens as a preferred pharmacy. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. The Fish and Stats top ten this week. Seven pollsters. That'd be Fish, Stats, Bash, Peter Edmiston, Eli Savoy, Grant Milner, and the Fish Scales. Combine them all together. Here's how it shakes out this week. Into the top 10 this week, the Missouri Tigers at number 10. They were at uh, 7 
for Eli Savoy, six in the fish scales this week. The only two that they were actually uh, ranked. And that got them all the way up to number 10 this week. Also at number nine, Louisville moved up a spot, up to number nine. UCLA into the top 10 for the first time. They are at number eight this week. You had them at eight. I had them nine. Uh, Peter and Eli both had them at nine. Grant Milner had them at 10. The fish scale's number two, number two in the country. And they'll take on Stanford this week. UCLA at number eight. Texas A&M is seven. LSU is six. Clemson, five. Florida State, four. Number three is Ohio State. Two is Oregon. And the number one team, all seven first place votes, Alabama at number one for the, uh, well, for the eighth consecutive week, Alabama remains at number one. So a couple of new entries into the Fish and Stats Top Ten this week with it, UCLA and Mizzou. It's not my big number today, and we'll, have a, I'll, we'll get to that later. It'll be something different. But I tweeted out earlier today, 32 years ago today, Arkansas beat number one Texas Badly, 42 to 11. It wasn't that close in Fayetteville. Arkansas was pretty good that year. Had lost the week before against TCU, and then lost the next week in Little Rock to Houston. But had good had good players. Went on to the Gator Bowl that year. Texas was good, but they're not the behemoth that Alabama uh, what what they are right now. If Arkansas, I mean, I don't, I don't think they are, I, but I don't know that Alabama gets over the number against them. I think against the 28, it might be I might pick Arkansas, but not as I'm not calling an upset. But would it be the biggest upset in Razorback history? I mean, because people would say Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl with the suspended players, but everybody else was in the Orange Bowl, right? <laughs> and and that win 32 years ago against number one was in Fayetteville. This is in the belly of the beast, in the middle of this Saban red elephant tsunami, with a point spread of 28 and a half. Absolutely. It would have to be. Would it? But, but, but the biggest upset maybe ever had to be Stanford it, with Harbaugh beating a USC team thought of like this Bama team's thought of. Weren't they like a 40-point underdog? Uh, yeah. I don't know if it was that high. But it was, it, was, it was bigger than this one. And went to the Coliseum and won straight up. And started the Pete Carroll Harbaugh bad blood. Yeah. That, I think, at the time was certainly known as the biggest upset ever. We'll ask Russ Mitchell that at 5 o'clock. Probably, probably Stanford-USC. Yeah, I mean, there have been a lot of the, the FCS-FBS upsets, but, but when you're talking about two FBS programs, yeah, that Stanford-USC game, that line was huge. And, well, this one's pretty huge as well, especially with the game being... In Tuscaloosa. We'll take a break. We're going to talk some hoop when we come back. Hank McDowell will join us. Also, we'll hear from Grizzlies head coach Dave Yeager here on Fish and Stats. It's time. Time to get yourself a new Honda ATV at the 2013 Honda ATV Clearance Event. We're moving out all our 2013 Honda ATVs with incredible deals to make room for the new 2014 models. Check them out now at Big Delta Honda. Get $1,000 in bonus bucks on America's best-selling ATV, the Honda Rancher, featuring program fuel injection and optional power steering. It's our best deal ever on a Rancher, so come on down for great deals and as low as 2.99% financing on all Honda ATVs. Get down to Big Delta Honda, 155 Cracker Barrel Drive in Batesville, Mississippi, and get yourself on a Honda ATV during the Honda ATV clearance event with great deals and $1,000 bonus bucks on a fully loaded rancher today. Honda recommends utility ATVs for riders 16 years and older. Special 2.99% fixed APR financing available for well-qualified buyers. Not all buyers may qualify. Bonus bucks go with select new and unregistered models. Dynafell Active Video Solutions is the only place you should look for home security. You can monitor your home from anywhere 24-7 using your computer, laptop, tablet, or smartphone. Dynafell Systems uses high-quality Wi-Fi cameras that you can put anywhere in your home. Look at multiple cameras remotely on your PC on one screen. Professional installation, customer education, and one-year warranty. You can even record and store event-based clips for later review so that you have video evidence when you need it. It's also highly secure so you don't have to worry about unauthorized access. 
and it's affordable using your current broadband connection. You can start out with a couple of cameras and add to the system when you want. Add a camera to watch your driveway, front door, or anywhere you choose. There are no contracts or mandatory monthly fees, but you can have access to stored video for just about 70 cents a day. It's the best bargain in home security, so call Dynapel Systems today at 531-7343. The easiest way to monitor your home is just a phone call away. Protect your home with Dynapel Systems. Call 531-7343. Fall is here. Make sure your heating unit is ready for the cold weather ahead. Go to HappyHiller.com and call Hiller today. Hiller is an independent trade dealer. It's hard to stop a train, and that's not just a tagline for train and Hiller. Budget-friendly payment options are available on new train heating and cooling systems. And Congress has reinstated homeowner tax credits. Save up to $500 for upgrading to a high-efficiency qualifying train system. Not only will we take great care of your home, but Hiller and Train will help you take advantage of the homeowner tax credits. Plus, you can join the Happy Hiller Club now and you can get a heating system tune-up for just $99. Each year, Hiller comes to your house three times, once for an AC tune-up and once for a heating system tune-up. And you also get a plumbing tune-up complete with hot water heater drain and flush. All this for just $99. Happy you'll be or the service is free. When it's cold this winter, it'll be warm at your house. Look for the happy face trucks all over town. Call Hiller Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, your independent train dealer. 399-7020. That's 399-7020. Or go to happyhiller.com. Your home for the Ole Miss Rebels. Sports 56 WHBQ Memphis and 87.7 FM WPGF LP Memphis. A Flynn Broadcasting Station. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 4 o'clock on Bash with the ALCS tied up to two games apiece. The Boston Red Sox will visit the Detroit Tigers for Game 5 tonight. We'll start around 7 o'clock Central Time on Fox. John Lester will get the start for the Red Sox with Annabelle Sanchez set to go for Detroit. Jim Leland made a couple of changes to his lineup last night. It looks like John Farrell is doing the same tonight. Rookie Xander Bogarts will start at third base in place of the struggling Will Middlebrooks. The Cardinals Dodgers series takes the day off today, but they'll get game six going tomorrow evening. It'll start around 730 Central Time in St. Louis. A couple of notes out of the NFL. Houston Texans coach Gary Kubiak announced today that Case Keenum will be the starting QB after ruling Matt Schaub out with an ankle injury. Keenum has been inactive for the first six games, and T.J. Yates had filled in last week for shop, but obviously Kubiak's looking for some sort of a spark. Eagles quarterback Michael Vick put an end to any suspense as he ruled himself out for this Sunday's game against the Dallas Cowboys. Nick Foles will make his second start of the season and his eighth of his career. Your Thursday night NFL matchup has the Arizona Cardinals hosting the Seattle Seahawks. That'll start at 725 Central Time on the NFL Network, of course. And your Thursday night college matchup is a pretty good ACC battle. Number 10 Miami visiting North Carolina. That will start on ESPN starting at 6.30 Central Time. A couple of notes out of the college ranks as well. Georgia coach Mark Rick said today that his team is preparing to play without running back Todd Gurley once again. Gurley suffered suffered an ankle sprain on September 28th against LSU. One quick college basketball note as well. Louisville forward Shane Bahannon has been suspended indefinitely from the team due to an unspecified violation of university policy. Coach Rick Pitino announced that today. Sports reports brought to you by Charlie's Golf Shop. Visit Charlie's Golf Shop at Vantage Point Golf Center, 9580 Macon Road in Cordova. Charlie's Golf Shop, your complete club repair and fitting service for over 20 years. Call Charlie at 340-1305. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Welcome back, everyone. Fish and Stats with you on this Thursday afternoon, live from Tunica National today. Gorgeous day here at Tunica National. Come on up. Set up a tee time. 662-357-0777. 662-357-0777. That is the phone number here at Tunica National. Also, a fantastic indoor tennis facility. You can come on out and play some tennis and uh, spend the day out here in Tunica and Make sure you come to Tunica National and play yourself a round of golf while the weather is spectacular, as is the golf course here at Tunica National. Uh, coming up uh, this hour, we are going to visit with uh, Dan Gray. He'll join us. Talk. Uh, we'll go inside the lines with Dan. He's from the Gold Sheet. We'll talk college football, also NFL action with him. We'll have our pick for the Thursday night game. I don't think I've picked a Thursday night game correct this season, college or pro. So, And I know who I really like tonight. You had South Carolina. I did have South Carolina, yeah. That's right. Okay. It's a long time ago. And I had Ole Miss. So it was an opening. Go. Yeah, we both so, got So that, opening yeah. week, I was 2-0. Oh. Haven't hit one since. That was, that was picking Blackberry weekend. Yeah, though. no kidding. That was about our lone victory. Yeah, it was. Uh, Russ Mitchell is also going to join us coming up next hour from collegefootballnews.com, also campusinsiders.com, and you can hear Russ and TJ Reeves each week at sec14.com with their 
uh, radio broadcast of uh, SEC football. So we'll talk some SEC with Russ. We'll have our Gould Style segment plus our Sleep Cheap Big Number of the Day. But we're going to start things off this hour talking a little basketball. And it's a pleasure to welcome to the program former Memphis State Tiger, also former NBA star and uh, analyst for the Memphis Grizzlies. <laughs> And Tigers, Hank McDowell is with us. Why, Hello, do, Hank. why do you chuckle, Hank? I think his son's listening. I wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> it, was the, it was the star part. I always like that. It's such a big buildup, and then, then I start talking. Hank, you played in the NBA Finals. That That's star worthy. <laughs> That, that's true, and, and Polian can't take that away from me either. <laughs> I heard him say this week that you just didn't get there enough. So, yeah, I mean, if I if I had provided more help, maybe we would have won it that year over Boston. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hank, we're halfway through uh, the NBA preseason. We are getting started. The madness tomorrow night with the Memphis Tigers. It's a it's a good time for excitement and anticipation for basketball. I tell you, what, it, it really is. When you when you start thinking about it, when college basketball really starts gearing up, you know the excitement, uh, all the tweets that go out. You know, it's a, the NBA. You start your preseason and you slowly build up, especially if you're coming off a great season like last year with the Grizzlies. And you, you know, you got to go through all these games to get there. And in college, it's uh, hey, it's midnight madness, or in our case, Memphis madness, and it'll be a show. You know, there'll be 18,000 people there just wondering who the singer is going to be and uh, to in- introduce and, and ca- catch a first glimpse of these guys. It's, it's a fun group, I can tell you that. And, and it's not just little old bitty ham-handed seasons that people are looking forward to. This no. could be history in March and April and May and June. Let's put it this way. Both teams need to come out of the gate fast because everybody's going to start scratching their heads. I mean, there's been such a buildup on both sides of it. You know, with the Grizzlies coming off off of everything that we did last year in the Western Conference Finals, uh, the changes that have been made, everybody is sort of holding your breath and anticipation and hoping things go well. You know, I feel like they will. You, know, you just don't know. you got to get on the floor. We still haven't seen Tayshon. We've seen a little bit of Mark. Uh, Coach Kufos is injured again. He's going to miss a couple of teams. So, I mean, it, it's one of those things you, you got to get the pieces together uh, to, to play 82 ball games. And on the Tiger side, they're all young, it seems like. They're all youthful. you got a whole bunch of senior guards and then a whole bunch of young guys running around down below them. And it, uh, it, it could prove to be very exciting on both sides. Let's start with the Grizzlies, Hank. Uh, halfway through now with four preseason games in the books and uh, four more to go before – Things tip off for real in a little less than two weeks uh, in San Antonio. It's 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 noticeable. They're wanting to get over the half court line quicker this year. I think yeah. it's very noticeable, and I I think that's good. And a lot of players that really like that idea. Is it? It's good, I think, for the offense, Hank. What what say maybe drawback of it, if anything, at least at this point. Well, I mean, you know, we've been around for, for years now, Fish. Was this your eighth season, seventh season? This will be like seven, I think. Use your fingers. It's okay. I think, um, I think, he's I got think, his shoes off I now. Hey, come I'm on. Caught I caught him off guard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm caught him off guard. But we, we, we've seen <clears throat> at times uh, the Grizzlies struggle to get into their offense. And, you know, the next thing you know, the clock's down and, you know, 12 seconds, maybe 13 seconds. Maybe that's your first pass in your offense. And, and when that happens, it hurts. There's no doubt it hurts. In this case, when you can cross the half court line at 20 and maybe get into your first pass at 17, if you're lucky 18, uh, things are go. You've got time. You can run play. You can cross the court two, three times before finally maybe someone has to make a decision to really put up a shot that you don't want. Um, that's the plus side. It's not like you're trying to get a quicker shot in 24 seconds. You're trying to get into your offense quicker and, and you get your movement, get more movement, get players cutting, uh, more passes. That's, that's the drill here. Now, in a lot of cases, we see teams, Golden State, throw that out there. I mean, they'll fire it up from anywhere. Doesn't really matter. And it doesn't matter what's on the shot clock. That's their philosophy and that's how they play the game. And they've got a handful of shooters that really can do that. And Steph Curry's one of them. But, you look at us, we're still inside, oriented with some outside shooting now, more. Mike Miller should help Coupon being more veteran, more mature. Conley, of course, just always getting better, it seems like, Bayless. We've got, we've got good, adequate, not great, 
three point shooting. Combined on one night, watch out. My, my guess and my wonder is, is, is does the inside suffer? Do you become an outside team? Do you, do you take what you call good shots early in a shot clock because it's there? I guess that's the question. And, and hey, you know what? If you're making them, it doesn't matter. And, and the big guys are going to go great for making them, you know, and they're going to get some offensive rebounds if they work hard enough. So it's one of those things we're going to, are we changing from an inside out to an outside in? And that, that's the question. I, I'm not sure yet. Can, can you still be inside out? Uh, do you start the game trying to pound it down low, and then if they get doubled, then maybe you try and get some outside shots? And if you start hitting those, can you get it back inside? No, I, yes. If you start making outside shots, yes, you can get it back inside. That's the deal. You you know, if you're going to work but, it this way, you, you have to make outside shots. But the you have to start is, going inside, right? Well, you do. I mean, if you look at Mark and you look at Depot and you look at the guys we've got, especially the two starters, they're bruisers. They can take it. They can go to the free throw line. You know, they've they both got ample weapons, whether it's on the block or off the block. That's the beauty of our two big guys, mainly, is that they can step out to 14, 16 feet. Now, you got to get it to them. You've got to give them a chance to get doubled. That's where the smart player that Mark is, that Debo is, will look. They'll find that open player, and the guards and, and, and the small forwards now have learned you're just a pass away from getting an open three-pointer at that point. Uh, you know, the other night against McCovey, uh, you know, there were several times when the ball swung, literally came out of the post, one, two, three, on the fourth pass, it was a shot. It swung all the way across the other side while a defender was chasing down the baseline to get there too late. That's good stuff, and if you make them, it's even better. But it shows that you're, you know, the discipline. It shows that you're unselfish. It shows that you know what's going on, and and in this case, it, it could work easily. Easily, we we have enough shooters to make this work, and obviously, we've got two big guys who have been all stars. Yeah, uh, Nick Calathus, your thoughts on him? You know, he's struggling. You know, he, he came in as not being a, an outside shooter, and right now he's proving it. Um, <laughs> he's a good player. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, he's throwing some passes that some guys aren't ready for and they need to get prepared for him. Um, he's throwing some that people just weren't thinking that were going to come. So, you know, you got one where you just weren't ready and you got others where you just weren't even thinking it was going to happen. But he's got good eyes. He's got good hands. He can pass the ball. He can squeeze it through uh, a keyhole. Um, you got to watch that. Shooting-wise, he, he just, right, I don't know if it'll come about or not. You know, so far, four games, he's shooting under 45%, which isn't horrible. Three points over three, and, and from the free throw line, which is surprising, shooting 50% so far. Uh, nine of 18 from the free throw line. So that that is a little shocking to me for someone that handles the ball that much. But, hey, it might just be getting comfortable. It might just be, you know, who knows. I, I expect most of those to go up. But he's not a three-point shooter. He wasn't brought in here to be a three-point shooter. Hank, hey, uh Going into the season for the Grizzlies, the the worries really aren't worries. They're just going into the season concerns. I, I can't think of many for the Tigers either. I mean, what a what a combo for both of them. I mean, yeah, you, there's always a little something more you want. You'd like a, a a little more firepower, but a lot of people would trade with both of them. Oh, I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. I mean, you're sitting on two well above average basketball teams. You know, are, are they the top? Are they elite? No. Are, are they a player or two away? <laughs> yeah, probably. They're and in the so conversation. You're right in, the, you're, you're right in those regards. Um, you know, go, going to the Tigers, you know, everybody knows that you've got all these, these senior uh, point guards and, and playmakers up top uh, who should provide most of the scoring. And, and then you, you look at it, David Pelham, obviously a fifth-year senior, comes in with a lot of maturity, new to the program, though. Jack, a sophomore, Austin freshman, Dominic freshman. It just, it just goes on. Iverson freshman. It goes on and on and on about your main players and, and where they fall into uh, the classifications and how much college experience they've got. So you, you've got a great mix. It's just a big difference between seniors and, and freshmen slash sophomores. You know, Damian Wilson's one of them. He's a sophomore this year. Saw very little time last year, but um, he and Shaq both. Are, are much better players, no doubt about that one. From what Eli, I, Eli Savoy and I yesterday were talking, and we we were both kind of 
chuckling about it. It seems a lot of people are talking about Damian Wilson. You know, wasn't really talked about a lot last year. Didn't get a lot of playing time, but everybody seems to be impressed with him. What is it about Damian Wilson that's impressing? Well, I, I tell you what, I, I've seen him play now in uh, three scrimmage types, and um, and that was before the summer. Um, you know, the summer's one thing when there are workouts and things, but uh, without getting too technical, the guy just looks great. I mean, he uh, it's practice time now, so now, you know, everybody's on guard. Um, usually, early in the season, you, you, know, you don't have your offenses in. You know, your, your your upperclassmen might remember it and might run through some sort of a shell while they're scrimmaging kind of stuff. But uh, for the most part, defense rules because the offensive execution is not there yet. It's just the way it works. And <laughs> with that defensive execution – Damian Wilson has just been unbelievable offensively. Um, I, I've seen him make moves that literally, with the quickness, with the ball handling, with the decision making, with stopping on a dime, whether it's using glass, taking it all the way, pulling up for short jump shots. I, I don't recall him taking a lot of long jump shots. Everything that he's done has been going toward that rim, which is an outstanding thing to have. And I'm going to be real honest, but he, he, to me, and what I've seen is, is the closest to an NBA player that I've seen. And, 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 and I'm not by no means a scout. I'm just talking about a guy in the midst of a defensive-laden drills excel offensively. And, and, you know, he just, he's got that quickness. He's got this ball in him. He's left-handed, and he, he just, he's just been hard to guard. Hank, it's for, fun to college, for college basketball, to be around at the end for the Elite Eight, the final four for sure. It's still predicated on defense, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, you got to score more points, but you you have to, you know. But your defense it, can get your offense. It, it it depends on how big a fight. You, we all remember Loyola Marymount. I mean, they just you know 110 points a night. You couldn't keep up with them, and and it's it's that's one of those deals where okay, you know, we'll take your best shot. We'll beat you by 20. You know, these days in, in this echelon, in this upper class, so to speak, of college basketball, yes, you have to have size, you have to have strength, you have to have quickness, you have to have discipline, especially defensively, to cover each other, to cover the middle, you know, whether it's a block shot or changing a shot. But defensive rebounding and defensive skills are still going to win you basketball games. There's no doubt about that. The big question, Hank, is for the madness uh, tomorrow night at FedEx Forum. Does Little McDowell have a dance ready? You know, he um, he, he has a song, and <laughs> I'm sure he has a dance. But, but he's being tight-lipped about this whole thing. I mean, he's, he's oh, being yeah. pretty. Yeah, they must have just scared him to death. Something sand pit or something. You know, if if they spill anything. But um, I don't believe he even knows who the entertainment is. And at the same time, his his song, his dance, he's keeping pretty tight lips. So I'm I'm kind of anxious to see it myself. I'm, I have no clue, really and truly, what to expect, other than uh, somebody close to the program sent out a tweet last night saying that he's seen the playlist and J Mac 42 is the leader in the clubhouse so far. That's all I know. <laughs> Well, fantastic. Somebody has to be the 18-hole leader. Somebody's got to take it. <laughs> so, who knows? I'm, I'm, it ought to be a blast. And, I'm, you know, the 18-plus thousand people that are going to be there. Uh, I, Tough ticket. It, 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 it's one of the more uh, fun things to go to. It, it really is because it, it's relaxed, and, and at the same time, you want to get a good look. The players will play hard, but I can tell you right now, they will be instructed not to get close to anybody. As far as you know, creating an injury. So. Right. <laughs> Have fun. Work hard. Not too hard. Don't go yeah, DJ yeah, Stephens and go all out. <laughs> yeah, we're not worried about blocking dunks tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hank, uh, enjoy it tomorrow night. Uh, thank you as always for your time, sir. And uh, boy, this thing's getting close. Uh, we're pack your bags. We're getting ready to travel. Yeah, 29th, 28th. What is it? 29th. Please go to San Antonio. That's right. One of our favorite places, too. That's amazing. <laughs> well, we we'll, we got a good place to eat in San Antonio. We'll be fine. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later.
All right. Hank McDowell uh, joining us here on the program talking some hoops. So we talked some Grizzlies, and the Grizzlies now 2-2 two and two through their preseason. Uh, a couple of injuries, though, of no Costa Kufus uh, with a lower leg injury. Looks like uh, they're going to rest him for about a week. Tayshawn Prince uh, continues to battle with this stomach issue. Uh, not really an injury, just a stomach issue. Get well done. Prince, uh, yeah, no timetable set on uh, the return, at least at this point, for Tayshaun. Rob, I haven't. I bet you have. Darrell Arthur's box scores. Have you noticed any? I haven't. I, ha- I haven't won. I-, I-, I will as the season starts, but right now means nothing. No. And I, and I hope he has a you know good long too. year. I hope he stays it, healthy. It's just not against Memphis. Right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, earlier today, Grizzlies did practice before they left for Orlando. They'll play the Magic tomorrow night in a preseason tilt uh, in Disney. Uh, but today, they practiced on the floor at FedEx Forum. Ron Tillery and I had a chance to chat with the head coach of the Grizzlies, Dave Yeager, about uh, well what's coming up in these final four games. Halfway through the games, uh, with half of them left, start trying to find guys that you want to see the regular season play together or still kind of mix and match, see what works? Still going to mix and match. Uh, got some guys dinged up and so, um, you know, we got we to gotta get better. We got to get better at some things. Uh, transition defense, we got to get better at. We get too loose with the basketball. So uh, we need to clean some of those things up. However, the games come out and whoever's in doing it, uh, we got to get better. We got to get uh, we got to get moving towards and pointing towards opening night. How long do you continue to make it all about you? And how long do you, when do you start looking ahead? We, and, well, yeah, we start uh, working. We start working now in the these last four games uh, as far as more specific in our game preparation uh, for our opponents so that they get used to that. Uh, with our assistant coaches and walkthroughs and all stuff like that. So that that level of seriousness goes up as well. Defensively, um, is it hard to gauge where you are without your key guys? Or it, it is a little bit. Uh, it, it can be difficult at times. Um, but at the same time, I think that we've established a tradition of toughness here. And, and I, I don't care which guys are out there. Uh, defensively is what we hang our hats on. So that's... That's our identity, and it, it needs to be that way and needs to, to go forward that way. So as much as you want these guys to understand how you want to play offensively, cutting, moving the basketball, the guys who just got in here need to know that when they're out there. This is, yeah, yeah, this is what – and even the guys that are that are returning, that, you know, there, there can be a sense, and, and I talked about this before we even threw it up on the first day in practice, that, you know, that there's a little bit of uh, uh, excitement about some offensive things, you know, and so basketball, it's just human basketball nature. Like, it's an offensive game. It's fun to play offense. Yeah. And so but you, you, we can't allow the, we can't allow slippage at the other end, especially for how important it is for us. You, you have said, though, that there could be some slippage because you want to be top ten offense and defense. And you're using the shorter clocks to promote faster play. So what are you doing to, to make sure that we're going to remain a tough team? Yeah, it, it, they have to learn to play defense faster. Uh, you know, for us, it, the, the, the good defensive teams, they tend to need to play a little slower offensively, uh, play structured, really structured offensively, so you know exactly where a shot is coming from, which helps you offensive rebounds-wise, and it helps you in transition defense. So that we need to learn how to play faster defensively, which is kind of a weird thing to say, but it's true. Dave Yeager had practice uh, earlier today and uh, still some things to work on. But starting now to, you know, it's been all about the Grizzlies. Now it starts to get into that preparing for your opponent and going through those things, getting in that sort of groove. It's that time of year, and it may be the most eagerly anticipated <laughs> since we've had both in town yet because, you know, the 08 National Championship run, the, the Grizzlies were struggling. So then it might be at the – bottom at that point and now both if they're not at the top they're right around it and there's gonna be a lot of basketball between now and june 10th at fedex forum and it's gonna be a lot of winning yes there is hopefully a whole lot and uh hopefully all the way into I've june got, huh? i've got two crazy numbers you know, again we're gonna we're gonna do our good audience a favor and not go game by game on on the nba i don't that would be a 
a, a silly exercise, but again, I, I'm around 59. Oh, goodness. That, that's a magic number in this town. That's the Al Guy Burger number. Yes, it is. And I'm around 27 regular season for the Tigers. Which would be a good number. That's 27 and 4. Uh, other NBA news, uh, this this Miami Heat story is kind of odd. LeBron and D. Wade uh, calling out the Boston Celtics for them, basically giving Ray Allen trouble for signing with the Miami Heat to win championships. LeBron says, I think the first thing I thought was, wow, Ray got killed for leaving Boston. Now these guys are leaving Boston. I think it's okay. okay I didn't mind, but there were a couple guys who basically, uh, you know, kind of, well, he threw an expletive in there mm -hmm. on Ray uh, for leaving, and now that they're leaving, that's the nature of our business. I don't know what Boston was going through at the end of the day. I know Ray had to make the best decision for him and his family and his career. Doc KG and Paul did that as well. Can't criticize someone who does something that's best for their family. Those guys got traded. The Boston guys who now are in Brooklyn got traded. I mean, Doc Rivers was pretty much told that we're rebuilding or, or you can leave. He left. Uh, Paul Pierce and KG were going to be traded, but they had to agree on the trade in their contracts, and they agreed to go to Brooklyn. They were traded. Ray Allen was a free agent, went to Miami. I think this is all silly, it, it, regardless. Silly. Life in the big but city. It, but it's completely different. It, it is different, but it in the end, it's the same. Look, we, especially at the end of a career, they all get a little bit selfish, and Ray Allen made it work. Ray Allen's just has gone through from UConn for all his life with very little criticism. I mean, just one of the gentlemen's gentlemen of the game. Uh, I'd find somebody else to pick at if I were people and leave the heat alone. <laughs> I mean, the whole conversation, the two-day story of his LeBron clutch, that was a two-years-ago story. It was silly then. It's just pretty asinine now. Two parades, end of, end of conversation. Pretty clutch. Also, the Brooklyn Nets had a big fight at practice this week. Jason Kidd, sounding like a football coach, said it's great. That's competition. That's it what they're all about. The out. This team's put together to compete at a high level. You saw it. nothing wrong with competition and tempers flaring. It's all about respect, playing hard. That's what you need in practice. Well, you sedate me, the first college coach that gets the mats and the helmets out and shoulder pads. <laughs> I will. You know it's my least favorite practice. Yeah, I will. We will take a break. Has a college football coach ever gotten the basketballs out? I don't think so. Probably not. We'll take a break. Uh, Dan Gray joins us from Gold Sheet next. Here on Fish and Stats, live from Tunica National. We are the voice of Grizzlies fans. Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. I'm with John Vergas of the world-famous Rendezvous Restaurant, talking about just a few of their famous firsts. Brett, the Rendezvous has always been a restaurant of firsts. We're the first restaurant to serve barbecued ribs. As a matter of fact, the ribs that we use and most everyone else uses used to be a scrap product. My dad's the one that figured out what to do with them. We're the first restaurant to serve a cheese and sausage plate. We actually served that before we served ribs, and I still believe that our cheese and sausage plate is the best in the city. We're the first restaurant to serve lamb ribs. But most recently, the first restaurant to serve nachos, barbecued beef brisket, chopped chicken, sandwich, the first barbecue restaurant to serve wine, and we're the largest seller of locally brewed Ghost River beer than anyone. We are aware and respectful of our past at the Rendezvous, but look forward to the future, as depicted by our vegetarian red beans and rice, by our Project Green Fork certification for recycling, and we continue to pay health care coverage to all of our employees. We take our legacy seriously, but we want to continue to be a relevant, active business in the Memphis community that has always been so kind to us. There's only one Rendezvous, and it's in the alley in downtown Memphis. Rusty Wallace here, inviting you to Memphis International Raceway on October the 26th for the return of oval track racing to the Mid-South. That's right, race fans, come feel the adrenaline as the CRA Super Series and the JEGS Late Model Series battle it out in twin 125 lap races in the Racing is Back Memphis 250. For more information and to purchase tickets, log on to MIR.com or call 901-WOW-RACE. Empire Express is a safety and time-sensitive truckload carrier serving 49 states and Canada. Their focus matches their slogan of delivering safely on time. They understand that their success depends on their employees and especially their drivers. Empire offers one of the best over-the-road driving positions available. If you're a shipper looking for a carrier that specializes in safety and time-sensitive transportation or a truck driver looking for an outstanding career, call Empire Express at 1-800-851-0151. That's 1-800-851-0151. 
Don't miss your chance to participate in the CBHS Battle of the Bands, November 9th at Minglewood Hall. Top prize is 10 hours of studio time at Arden Studio. There will also be prizes for best original music and for the band that sells the most tickets to the event. Tickets are $10 in advance, $15 at the door. Entry fee is $35 per band and limited to ages 7th grade through college. Proceeds help Christian Brothers High School band members travel to Washington, D.C. to play at the Kennedy Center next spring. Register online at cbhsbattleofthebands.com. This fall, be sure to swing by Ken Rashes Incorporated, 3686 Summer Avenue, the Big Green Egg headquarters for the Mid-South. Ken Rashes is the original dealer in Memphis for the Big Green Egg and all egg accessories with the most experienced salespeople with all things egg-related. You just need to go by the store to see live demonstrations every Saturday from 9 to 5 or during the week to talk to them about all the menu ideas you can cook on the Big Green Egg. Remember, all Big Green Eggs from Ken Rashes are a assembled and delivered free anywhere in Shelby County. And if that's not enough, Ken Rashes should be your one-stop shop for all other grills and outdoor furniture and accessories as they have all the latest style furniture from top-of-the-line casual furniture manufacturers. They've been at the same location for 42 years. Stop by Ken Rashes today, 3686 Summer Avenue between Highland and Graham, open 9 to 5 Monday through Saturday, or call them at 901-458-7541. In the fall, mills close out their excess inventory, and now we've got the deals at Lumber Liquidator's second annual fall flooring yard sale. All floors are on sale, like clearance flooring from 19 cents a square foot and laminate from 39 cents. Beautiful bamboo from 139, pre-finished hardwood from just 159, plus special extended financing. If you liked our famous April sale, you'll love our fall flooring yard sale. Sales going on now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com or get to your local store today. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 4.30 on Bash with the ALCS tied up in two games apiece. The Boston Red Sox will visit the Detroit Tigers for Game 5 tonight. I'll start around 7 o'clock Central Time on Fox. John Lester will get the start for the Red Sox. With Annabelle Sanchez set to go for Detroit. Jim Leland made a couple of changes to his lineup last night that worked, and it looks like John Farrell will try the same thing tonight. Rookie Xander Bogarts will start at third base in place of the struggling Will Middlebrooks. That Cardinals Dodger series takes the day off today, but Game 6 will start tomorrow evening. 7.30 Central Time will be the first pitch in St. Louis. A couple of notes out of the NFL. Houston Texans coach Gary Kubiak announced today that Case Keenum will be the starting QB after ruling Matt Schaub out with an ankle injury. Keenum has been at, in, at, inactive I'm Sorry for the first six games. TJ Yates had been the backup last week for Shaw, but obviously Kubiak's looking for a spark of some sort. Eagles quarterback Michael Vick put an end to any suspense as he ruled himself out for this Sunday's game against the Cowboys. Nick Foles will make his second start of the season with his making his eighth of his career. The Thursday night NFL matchup has the Arizona Cardinals hosting the Seattle Seahawks. That will be it. starting at 7.25 Central Time, of course, on the NFL Network. Your Thursday night college matchup. It's a good ACC battle with number 10 Miami visiting North Carolina. That will be on ESPN starting at 6.30 Central Time. A couple of notes out of the college ranks as well. Georgia coach Mark Rick said today that his team is preparing to play without running back Todd Gurley once again. Gurley suffered an ankle sprain on September 28th against LSU. A couple of college basketball notes. Louisville forward Shane Bohannon has been suspended indefinitely from the team due to an unspecified violation of university policy. And former Tennessee guard Trey Golden has received an NCAA waiver to play this season at Georgia Tech, according to CBSSports.com. Sports reports brought to you by Cowboy Corner. Fall is here, and it's time to get you that new pair of boots. The place to go is Cowboy Corner, where you'll find over 6,000 work pair of work boots and Western boots for the entire family. Cowboy Corner, your family-owned store for 57 years on Goodman Road in South Haven. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Welcome back, everyone. Fish and Stats are with you this afternoon, live from Tunica National. We are here until 6 o'clock. Russ Mitchell will join us coming up next hour. Talk a little SEC with Russ. We'll have our Gould Style segments. Also, we'll have our Sleep Cheap Big Number of the Day. And uh, we'll also hear a portion of Mark Richt and Justin Fuente, both on the uh, Middays program today with Greg and Eli, and uh, both had some interesting things to say. Mark Richt talking about Todd Gurley and also talking about that tough loss last week against the Missouri Tigers in Athens, Georgia. Will be Stand-up a- guy. Yeah, absolutely. You know, no one's ever said a bad thing about Mark Richt. You know that, but tough loss. <laughs> oh, yeah, they have. It just wasn't really warranted. <laughs> no. Joining us right now, he joins us each and every Thursday afternoon from the Gold Sheet. Dan Gray is with us. Good afternoon, Dan. Good afternoon, Rob and Brett. 
Hey, Dan, how are you? Let's start with ACC. You're kind of in ACC country as the Gold Sheet East Coast correspondent there in Washington, D.C., and tonight your hometown Hurricanes against the North Carolina Tar Heels. How good is the ACC? How um, the U has improved under Golden, and uh, apparently he's griping uh, about his minimal paycheck compared to who he's coaching against. I'd have to go with the Canes. Uh, North Carolina has shown some offensive explosiveness, but Miami's shown the ability with that defense and some big play capability of really stepping it up. They're not anywhere back to where they used to be, but they're a very difficult out these days. Interesting you say that he's grousing about his pay, and Bruce Marshall at the goal sheet this week writes about how there was once a time in college football where we would never, ever, ever fire a coach until at the end of the year, and and it happened at Ole Miss in 1973, 40 years ago, when it was the Sunday night massacre with uh, Bruiser, and as they called it at the time, Bruiser and Loser, Bruiser Kennard and his son Billy Kennard both out, and, and now we seem to have that more. Al Golden on a lot of these coaching lists that uh, Bruce and many others have out there that might be looking to move around, uh, in, including USC for Al Golden. And what impresses people who might want to hire him is how he's taken a limited scholarship situation, a very negative atmosphere, and turned it around significantly. And, of course, everybody noticed that early win against Florida in, uh, in the um, Land Shark Stadium there. Dan, the other one out of that conference, Florida State and Clemson uh, this week. In what a great matchup. Surprising the Clemson, a home dog against Florida State. And um, I, think the, I, think the, I think the odds makers are going too much off that uh, Florida State thrashing of Maryland. I would say that Taj Boyd's the kind of quarterback, very crafty, very talented with the arm and the feet, who can negate a lot of that uh, swarm of their defense. And uh, I'd have to go with the... Uh, the Tigers on this one, although I'm, I'm impressed with Florida State's rough physicality. I don't think they're going to get away with playing as rough as they get against a ranked team like Clemson. I mean, they got away with some very, very rough, almost nasty play against Maryland when I was watching that game uh, in my uh, Nashville hotel room before I had never to see Vanderbilt get the same treatment from Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, I, I'm with you. The the older quarterback, the home quarterback, and in, in getting the points, I like Clemson against FSU as well. You're 19 and 12 this year with picks with us on Thursday. That's a pretty good record. And last week you nailed it on A&M to win the game, but Ole Miss to stay close and to go over the total. Kind of the kind of the same wild game being predicted this Saturday in College Station. Uh, Auburn goes to A&M. Your thoughts? Um, Auburn's definitely improved. Their offense is going to – well, this is going to be, like many, a shootout game we're going to see. Reminiscent, we talked about earlier, the – say the old Miss Alabama game where Scott Hunter and Archie Manning were going at it a long time ago and maybe the Florida game and against uh, Auburn where there was a really high score and they were both in the top 10. This, this is going to be really special and I still am mystified with three minutes to go or just under three minutes when Ole Miss got the ball and they've been running the ball so effectively with Manziel on the other side. Why wasn't Ole Miss trying to run the ball, choose some clock, and let Wallace make a play, maybe rolling out. What were they doing? Making three straight throws in hand, and that guy, you know, the sword to do the execution. It just didn't make sense to me. Yeah, it felt like Johnny Manziel would do just what he did. Now, the Ole Miss defense of that uh, quickly after the game Saturday night was the defensive alignment, and there are some still shot pictures that are out there on Twitter and, and at various places that really shows uh, – you know, they, they, they were just begging for you to throw, and Ole Miss did, and had one drop. I do remember the drop, and that's it, just a But really I was with you loss. at the time. At the time, I'm thinking, boy, that was, and it, it was quick three and out. I mean, blink I mean, you have a better shot with a tie game in overtime where each side gets the shot than when you're given the last shot in a tie game to Manziel. I mean, that's like giving up your first overtime possession and saying to Manziel, okay, here, take the ball, see if you can win the game. <laughs> so do you do you like Johnny Manziel at home against Auburn? Boy, yes, I do. I, I hate to think Laying what he's going to do to the Vanderbilt defense. I hate to. Uh, I think Auburn might cover that fourteen, but it's going to be a very high score, and we could see Manziel break our quota we discussed of at least five touchdowns. He might go for seven or eight in this 73 game. Seventy-three and a half. Be, wow, seventy-three and a half the total. That's a big. Number. I think that's. A, I think they can make that number though. It, with as much passing as both teams are going to do, 
it'll let the clock run long enough. We're getting 73 is not going to be that hard. Also uh, this week, a uh, game that uh, I'm going to be at, and I believe you're going to be there as, as well, Dan. I, I, I am in... I'm not going to be able to make it. Oh, you're not going to the weather, but I will, I will be camped out in front of CBS. You know, it'll be <laughs> such a shock to my system to see Vanderbilt on a CBS telecast. I think it hasn't happened <laughs> for 30 years back in the Ronald Reagan first term, but see that <laughs> in May. <laughs> well, Georgia certainly is banged up coming off a tough loss. And, and really, Vanderbilt, you know, you start looking now, they, they, to get to six, each, each one's pretty important. I think Vanderbilt is going to surprise people in this game. And my latest information is, is that Todd Gurley may not be completely healthy. And if he's not, I don't think Mark Rick is going to risk a talent like that. He figures he's got enough horses to win. But what benefits Vanderbilt is Murray cannot run. Running quarterbacks have killed Vanderbilt the last two years. He cannot run. Uh, they don't have to worry about the option read. They, they don't have the normal Georgia whiteouts that they have to battle. I think Vanderbilt's going to score some points. I don't know if they can win the game, but I think they can cover that nine, nine and a half point line. Dan, I asked Rob earlier, you know, interesting games in our area this weekend, not, not the least of which Ole Miss and LSU. We'll get to that in a bit. But between SMU and Memphis, Vanderbilt and Georgia, which one of the four do you think needs, needs the win the most of those four teams, Vandy, Georgia, SMU, or the Memphis Tigers? I think Memphis really needs the win. They've, they've played so well, come so close. They really could use a win right now for their confidence. Uh, it gives them hope that maybe they could break even on the season. It certainly would give them momentum toward next year. They've played some fine teams pretty well. They've just seemed to be falling a play or two short when you most need it, which often happens with young teams, particularly with a freshman quarterback. And, and I know it's dangerous to compare scores, but you see what Memphis did for 58 minutes against Central Florida. Yeah, what Central Florida did at Happy Valley and at home in a close loss to South Carolina than what South Carolina did to Arkansas. Memphis, through all that, holds up pretty well, don't they? Um, the way Memphis has played, if they had played a schedule, say, in the ACC this year, I think they're a team that could have gotten a 500 record in the ACC with a little bit more experience, Whoa. a little more depth. And I think that bodes well for what people think of um, Justin Fuente. This team is definitely improving. Wow, wow. It's See, I was thinking, what a year to for one more in CUSA, but you're thinking if the Tigers were in the ACC, what a year. That's bold. So well, uh, needless looking, to say, you like Memphis over SMU Saturday. Well, Jones has that offense. It just depends on whether they can eliminate the mistakes because you know SMU is going to put some points up with that offense. As far as the ACC this year, they've got some very, very weak teams. Wade is down. UVA got blown out by Ball State and then made a decent effort against Maryland. I just can't place Maryland. I, I know they're not as bad as the 63 nothing, and I have to think they're better than the one-point win against UVA, but maybe they took such a physical beating against FSU. It might affect them the rest of the year. I certainly saw many of a Vanderbilt-UVA wake team over the years uh, take that kind of a beating in midseason and never really recover from it completely. NFL Broncos Colts uh, game that everybody's anticipating on Sunday night. Uh, Denver keep the winning streak alive. I'm gonna I'm gonna gamble a little bit here and go with the Colts. I, mean, I can't justify Jim Irsay's commentary. I <laughs> certainly can't justify 90 percent of the uh, alleged serious commentary from the Irsay family over the last 40 years. But no I think Denver's about to be taken. That was a lackluster performance against Jacksonville. I think the crowd will be revved up, and certainly Luck is quite a talent, and the Colts are, are a team that I think can step up a little bit in the playoffs this year after a decent first-round performance against the title-winning Ravens. Dan, you know what you know what the old, the old man uh, Irsay did to a crew from Memphis? Uh, they, a crew from Memphis had the deal negotiated. It was done. The Colts were going to move to Memphis. They were at O'Hare in a lounge in the bar area, they had it all worked out, and they, it was just before pen to paper and the Colts moving to Memphis and being the Memphis Colts. And he got up and said, well, I'm going to go to the restroom. I'll be back in a minute. They never saw him again. <laughs> I just remember it seemed like helicopters had flown to Jacksonville, to Memphis, to just about every metro area of 1.2 million or more that didn't have an NFL team. And it seemed like he was appearing there, and everybody thought, well, it was crying wolf time, which is why – 
the secret spirit away on the snowstorm in uh, Baltimore surprised everybody. But I think what caused him ultimately to move was the Maryland legislature was about to declare eminent domain on the team, and he realized if he didn't make a move, then he wasn't going to be able to get the, the full value of uh, zapping a new market for a team, which things worked out well for Baltimore in the end, but people really suffered there for and about it, uh, 13 years. And it's, and it's worked out in Indy, most of it uh, because of Peyton Manning. Not not all of it, but a lot of it because yes. of Peyton well, Manning. Yes. Well, he was, I think they got their money's worth out of him, which means Jim's comments were just very graceless. No other Jim, word are, to use. Yeah. Dan Gray, always a pleasure. Thank you one much for your time. Scoop, one final scoop. Yes. This from Bruce. Pat Fitzgerald may be on the market for either the USC or the Texas job. He's only my favorite coach in the country. I know. I, that's why I wanted to slip it in. I thought about slipping it in earlier, but just wanted to get it in there to give us a little, get a little noise so we can say to people, hey, we break some things here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Okay, take care, gentlemen. You all have a you great weekend. Uh, you bye too. Bye. All right, Dan Gray joining us from the Gold Heard it here first. Heard it right here first. We will take a break. We'll come back. Uh, hear from Mark Richt when we return here on Fish and Stats, live from Tunica National on Sports 56, 87.7 FM. The Press Box with Keith Parker and Elliot Wender. 1 to 2, Monday through Friday on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Luxury, technology, affordability. You'll find all this and more at Acura of Memphis. This is General Manager Greg Hapke. Right now, drive a new 2014 MDX for as low as $4.59 per month. Luxury at a whole new level. AcuraofMemphis.com. Wouldn't it be cool to win a big green egg grill and you did it just by watching Monday Night Football? Join Sports 56 at Southland Park Gaming and Racing every Monday night for Football Frenzy. Beginning every Monday night at 7.30. Now upstairs in the Kennel Club, watch the football game on multiple high-def big screen TVs, enjoy food and drink game time specials, and win prizes throughout the night. Plus, if you bingo, you qualify to win the new big green egg grill on December 23rd. See Southland Park's player rewards for details. Hosted by your friends from Sports 56 choice. It's always yours, especially when it comes to the look and performance of your vehicle. When you need prompt collision repair you can trust, turn to the experts at Millennium Paint and Body Works. From scratch and dent repair to paint matching and full frame replacements, great precision goes into the care of your car, truck, or SUV. Family owned, the highly trained technicians at Millennium Paint and Body Works are equipped with the newest collision systems to ensure each repair is completed to factory specifications. Plus, personal attention will be paid to ensure the proper repair of all your damage, both seen and hidden. They'll Work with your insurance companies and deliver peace of mind with written limited lifetime warranties. See, choosing a repair facility is your choice. Never allow any company to steer you to a specific shop. Your satisfaction is their number one goal at Millennium Paint and Body Works, one mile west from the I-55 and 302 intersection. Call 662-280-2022. That's 662-280-2022. Or visit MillenniumPaint.com. Millennium Paint and Body Works, where each customer drives home their reputation. Okay, Peter, I pose this question to you. Is Central Barbecue really central anymore? I mean, they've got three locations now. Hmm, philosophical, Z. Let me think. Yes, they are still Central Barbecue because the original will always be on Central. But you've got the location on Summer and the new one downtown right behind the National Civil Rights Museum. And here's the best part. Central Barbecue is not about location. Central Barbecue is about barbecue. The best in the city and therefore the best in the world. Have you tried the wings? I have not tried the wings yet. The barbecue is great, but they've got wings homemade chips, great side items like mac and cheese and greens. On top of that award-winning barbecue that you know and love, Zeke, it is fabulous. So you can get all the great things you can get at Central Barbecue at all three locations. All three locations and online at cbqmemphis.com. So really, they've got infinite locations. You can send it anywhere in this beautiful nation of ours, Zeke. Send a little piece of Memphis to friends and family outside the area at cbqmemphis.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Live from Tunica National, Fish and Stats with you this afternoon. Uh, talked to a lot of Auburn A&M in our first hour. Just went over some of the big games of this weekend with Dan Gray from the Gold Sheet. Another big one this weekend. I'm going to be there in Nashville on Saturday. Right early. Vanderbilt Commodores hosting the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia head coach Mark Rick to join the fellows on middays earlier today. Greg Gaston and Eli Savoy. And uh, Coach Rick starting things off talking about that tough loss against Mizzou last week. Well, Missouri's playing great. Uh, 
obviously they're they were five and zero coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, did a great job against Vanderbilt. Really just uh, took over that game immediately and never looked back. Um, and uh, you know we, I mean, I, th I think the biggest story of the game was turnovers. I mean, obviously when you go four turnovers to zero, mm -hmm. you, there's, it's gonna be tough to win the game. Right. Uh, but uh, even even if the turnovers were closer to even, I think it still would have come down to a fourth quarter ball game for sure. We, and obviously you don't use the injuries as an excuse, but how much did, did you have to change game plan, especially with those running backs out? How how different did you have to be with all the guys out? Well, we didn't change our game plan. We we did the same thing we would have done if we had Gurley. We might have we might have run the ball a little bit more, uh, but as far as the plays themselves and the schemes and all that kind of thing, that really didn't change for us. But uh, you know, we might we might have hammered the ball a little bit more uh, if Gurley was around and uh, if Keith Marshall was around. You know, because those guys are spectacular backs, and you you got to get them the ball. On the defensive side, you lost an awful lot to the National Football League from the squad last year. And, you know, the squad last year certainly had its its moments and certainly had its struggles at times. This year, uh, what do you think so far of the defense? There's been some, some points scored on you, but then again, in, in other games, you've done a, done a darn good job. So overall, your yeah. opinion of your defense? Well, I think they're getting better. I think that we're doing a very good job of getting people into third and medium, third and long. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of third and longs, and that's what you shoot for. you got to get them in that position to uh, get off the field on third down, but we've just done a poor job on third down and long especially. Um, if we just could have won half of the ones we lost, uh, it had been a lot different story defensively for us this year. But, you know, you got to, you know, we, we – it's up to us to get to get off the field, and we just have not done a good job of that. And then the other thing too is we really haven't created many turnovers at all, mm -hmm. and uh, we've got to get better at that as well. Aaron Murray um, is setting just about every record it seems like in the SEC. He's got a couple more that he's approaching here very quickly as well. What's it been like for you coaching Aaron for the four years and the type of player that he's been? Well, it's fun to coach a guy that really cares and a guy that really understands football and a guy that's willing to pay the price to be be prepared as he is. It's uh, He's a great leader. Uh, he's earned the respect of his teammates through his work ethic early on in his career and then, you know, obviously, obviously through his production as, the, as his career has gone on. So, you know, you know that everything in our system can be called and, and he has free reign to, you know, make a change at the line of scrimmage, whether it's protection, a run game. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you, you have a combo of two plays, and you let a quarterback choose one or the other. But uh, in the beginning, you want him to go from a bad play to a good one. But now, you know, we'll let him go from good to great. Uh, and, uh, you know, you usually don't let many quarterbacks do that. Compare and, and contrast him with Stafford. Um, gosh, I mean, they're, they're different and, uh, you know, Stafford's a bigger guy. He, he, you know, I don't know if anybody's got an arm like Stafford, so, right. but Murray's got plenty of arm strength to do anything we're asking him to do. He's, uh, a guy that, um, absolutely gets it, uh, as far as, uh, everything we're trying to do schematically. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he's, he's just, uh, he's a good kid. They're both, they're both great players in their own right. And, uh, yeah, it's hard to compare them really. Did you when when Murray first got there? Did you picture him as this guy that could could set all these records? Well, I we thought he could play. We thought he was a very good player, and um, we thought he could make all the throws. That's the first thing we start with at Georgia. Can he make all the throws? And then is he a good decision maker? And then can he handle the pressure of the job? Is the kind of the third thing we look for. And we saw those things in Aaron. And then even when he. Uh, made his public commitment to Georgia. They had a press conference and everything, and I got a chance to see some video of that. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I learned uh, that he's also a really compassionate guy as well. He was making comments about a, uh, his grandfather who had passed away that he wished could have been there for that moment. And right. Could have seen him play and all that kind of thing. You could tell he just cared about people. And, and uh, you know, I think one of the greatest attributes of a leader is a guy who does care about people and, mm -hmm. and Aaron's certainly one of those. Georgia football coach Mark Rick joining us here on Sports 56 Middays. We always talk about the wild wild west in the SEC but this could be a wild finish in the east. There's a lot of teams that are going to be in the mix. you got two big games coming up in the division going to Vanderbilt and then of course playing Florida 
in Jacksonville. Last year you handled Vanderbilt pretty pretty easily, but uh, this is a team that's very capable. you got a terrific receiver in Matthews. Tell me about this team you're going to go up against Saturday. Well, they are a very good team, and uh, Coach Franklin has done a great job with them. Um, you know, I guess – you know, just playing them uh, over the last couple of years, we, we know that uh, they're very capable of winning any game they play. They won nine last year, and, and uh, of course, last time we were in that state, and we barely got out of there alive, I mean, right. just barely. And uh, 2007, we barely got out of there alive. I mean, we just, we, we struggle when we go to Vanderbilt, and uh, a lot of it has to do with just the job that they're doing over there. Mm-hmm. How tough is it, this schedule? You've already played three top ten teams this year, it, and does that have anything to do maybe with the rash of injuries that you're just you get worn down with the type of schedule you've played so far? Well, I, I would hope that's not the case. I mean, when you look at each injury one by one, I wouldn't attribute it to fatigue or anything like that. It was just, you know, I mean, Malcolm Mitchell's happened when he was chest bumping Gurley on a long touchdown run early in the first quarter of the first game. You know, he, Marlon Brown, who's from the Memphis area, right. he, he, excuse me, not Marlon Brown, I'm sorry. I don't know why I thought about Marlon, but <laughs> Justin Scott Wesley, yeah. uh, you know, he hurts his uh, just by changing direction, trying to get out of the way when he was covering a punt. And I guess I was thinking of Marlon because Marlon had an ACL last year, but uh, yeah. so proud of what he's doing now with the with the Ravens. But, um, you know, so, and even Keith Marshall, when he got hurt, he, he got hit in an awkward position. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it had to do with, you know, who we were playing and all that type of thing. It just, those things happen. What, what is, uh, what is Todd's status right now? Uh, I mean, he, I'd say doubtful right this minute. Uh, he'll, he'll be on the trip. We'll bring his pads and, and, uh, you know, but I'm just not sure if he'll be able to go or not. Todd Gurley, uh, doubtful for Georgia on Saturday against Vanderbilt. Georgia averaging 206 yards a game on the ground, 517 yards total. Defense has really been the problem. They're allowing 33.5 points per game this season. The only Spears game they didn't realized. give up 30 was North Texas, yeah. and they were tied in the second half against North it Texas. It was uncomfortable. It's been uncomfortable all year. I mean, you knew, we knew it early opening Saturday night, didn't we? Yes. Be- and that was before the injuries. Yeah. That was before the chest bump injury. That's right. And Vanderbilt certainly has given Georgia troubles in the past, in Nashville at least. Georgia's seven-and-a-half-point favorite on the road. James Franklin, uh, Vanderbilt team, 0-7 against ranked opponents. Vandy as a team has lost 14 straight against top 25 opponents, but could see some history on Saturday. Aaron Murray, 112 career touchdowns. He is two behind Danny Werfel for all-time in the SEC. He's 29 yards to match Tim Tebow's all-time record for career yards in the SEC, and also Jordan Matthews on the other side, averaging 118 yards per game, 97 receiving yards for Jordan Matthews would tie the SEC all-time mark with Terrence Edwards, who had 3,093 yards receiving at Georgia. Terrence Edwards, only three people ever to go over 3,000 yards receiving in SEC. I think that's right. Who's the other one? I know Josh Reed did it. Who would be the other one? Jordan Matthews, Will Saturday. That's right. And I will be there. Looking forward to it. We will take a break. When we come back, Russ Mitchell joins us to talk all things SEC. We'll also hear from Memphis head coach Justin Fuente. We'll have our Sleep Cheap Big Number of the Day and our Gould Style segment all ahead in our final hour. Very busy hour. Live from Tunica National this afternoon. Fish and Stats here on Sports 56, 87.7 FM. Hi, this is Troy Five Ash with Five Ash Roofing. If you own a house or a business, you need to keep the rain out, and that's exactly what we do. We have decades of experience in all forms of roofing and construction, so whatever your exterior repair needs are, we have you covered. Five Ash Roofing is locally owned and operated and performs all of our work in-house or with partners we work with every day. This allows us to give you guarantees unmatched in the industry. For example, we offer a lifetime labor guarantee on all our new roof systems. A representative of 5-Ash Roofing will gladly meet with you, inspect your roof or siding, and offer an estimate to correct whatever issues you might have. We are a Better Business Bureau accredited business with an A-plus rating and are listed on Angie's List. Please check us out and give us a call, 901-488-4991, or check us out on the web at 5-AshRoofing.com. 
That's the number 5, A-S-H, roofing.com. Starting Saturday, October 19th, be sure to tune in to the launch of Three Shades of Blue Radio with your host, Josh Coleman and Jonathan May, along with executive producer, Philip Dean. 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Sports 56 WHBQ. This is the show you want to listen to for premier Memphis Grizzlies coverage. So tune in Saturday, October 19th at 9 a.m. right here on The Voice of the Fan. Sports 56 WHBQ. Memphis people love to eat local, and we're excited to tell you about one of Memphis's newest local, authentic delis that everyone is buzzing about, Elwood Shack. Elwood's is located at the corner of Summer and Perkins, right next to the Lowe's contractor entrance. Brand new hours are 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and 7 to 4 on Saturday. Elwood Shack is packing authentic ingredients, flavor, and quality into every plate. For breakfast, try the barbecue breakfast burrito and biscuits made from scratch. For lunch and dinner, Elwood's offers a variety of items that include a great meat Meatball sub, delicious New York style roast beef, terrific Chicago and New York style hot dogs, and the best beef brisket in the city. Slow smoked in pecan and hickory and cooked with Guinness stout. And for all you wing lovers, you have to try the authentic Jamaican jerk full wings marinated for 24 hours and seasoned with Elwood's magic dust, served with ranch and jerk sauce. Finish off any fantastic dish with the mouthwatering world famous pecan pie made in house daily. Do yourself a favor and check out Memphis's best kept secret, Elwood Shack. Join Sports 56 Middays this Friday at Frontier Western Store in Olive Ranch and check out the Carhartt Crazy Sale going on now. All adult shirts are buy one and get a second at half price. And all adult jeans and dungarees are $5 off. The newest line of Carhartt gear is here with plenty to choose from in short sleeve plaids, solids, t-shirts, shorts, and more. And don't forget about Frontier's famous boot showroom packed with thousands of work and dress boots. That's this Friday from 11 to 1 at Frontier Western Store, 5880 Goodman Road in Olive Ranch. Pizza will be provided by Italia East. The voice of the fan. Sports 56 WHBQ Memphis. Fan 87.7 FM WPGFLP Memphis. A Flynn Broadcasting Station. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 5 o'clock on Bash. Well, the ALCS is all tied up at two games apiece. And the Boston Red Sox will visit the Detroit Tigers tonight for game five. It'll start around 7 o'clock Central Time on Fox. John Lester will be your starter for the Red Sox. And Annabelle Sanchez will get the first go for the Tigers. Jim Leland made a few changes to his lineup last night that were effective, and it looks like John Farrell will try the same tonight. Rookie Xander Bogarts will start at third base in place of the struggling Will Middlebrooks. That Cardinals-Dodgers series will take the day off today, and they'll get Game 6 back underway tomorrow evening. That'll start at 7.30 Central Time in St. Louis. Clayton Kershaw will be on the hill for the Dodgers. Michael Waka said to go for St. Louis. A couple of notes out of the NFL. Houston Texans coach Gary Kubiak announced today that Case Keenum will be the starting quarterback after ruling Matt Schaub out with an ankle injury. Keenum has been inactive for the first six games, and TJ Yates has filled in last week for Schaub, but obviously Kubiak's looking for a spark of some sort. Eagles quarterback Michael Vick put an end to any suspense as he ruled himself out for this Sunday's game against the Cowboys. Nick Foles will make his second start of the season and his eighth of his career. Your Thursday night NFL matchup tonight has the Arizona Cardinals hosting the Seattle Seahawks. That one will start at 725 Central Time with all the coverage, of course, on NFL Network. The Thursday night college matchup has a good ACC battle with number 10 Miami visiting North Carolina. That one will start at 630 Central Time on ESPN. A couple of notes out of the college ranks as well. Georgia coach Mark Rick said today that his team is preparing to play without running back Todd Gurley once again. Gurley suffered an ankle sprain back on September 28th against LSU. One college basketball note as well. Louisville forward Shane Behannon has been suspended indefinitely from the team due to an unspecified violation of university policy. Coach Rick Pitino made that announcement today. The sports reports brought to you by Country Ford. Whatever it takes, Country Ford gets it done for you. Visit Country Ford in South Haven at 95 East Goodman Road or shop online at countryford.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Live from Tunica National this afternoon, Fish and Stats with you. Final hour of the program. In a moment, we will go around the SEC, and it is brought to you by the great folks at Ken Rashes Incorporated. It's fall time. Swing by Ken Rashes Incorporated. 3686 Summer Avenue. It is the Big Green Egg headquarters for the Mid-South. The original dealer in Memphis for the Big Green Egg and all egg accessories, the 8th Annual Eggtober Fest Sale. Getting underway, let's see, Monday. The 21st is Monday. Monday starts, the 21st through the 26th. The 8th Annual Eggtober Fest Sale. 
They are taking pre-orders, and they got a lot of things going on. It's the 8th Annual Sale and Event. We'll tell you all about that coming up uh, here in a little bit. It is Ken Rashes Incorporated, 3686 Summer Avenue, your Big Green Egg Headquarters. It's time to go around the SEC. Joining us now, collegefootballnews.com, campusinsiders.com, and, of course, you can hear Russ and TJ Reeves each week at sec14.com, talking SEC football, and you hear them each week with us, Russ Mitchell. Good afternoon, Russ. Oh, I've been waiting all week for this. <laughs> First thing we want to know, how are you and TJ getting along? Very good, actually. Why? Okay. I just wonder if y'all killed each other yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's interesting you should say that. <laughs> I know. I listen. <laughs> Two type A personalities locked together in a room. That'll, that'll Times no, 50. Right, well. <laughs> uh, so you've been waiting for this, Russ. Uh, just uh, excited to talk some football uh, here this afternoon. Oh yeah. Where do you so, want to start? Well, um, let's see. Let's start Ready with Mizzou. Look? Let's start with Mizzou. You know, the thing that I really thought about that performance last week. Well, a couple of things. One, I really thought they controlled the game from opening kick to the end of the game, which was very impressive to me. Even when it looked like Georgia. They might make this run, and all of a sudden, Mizzou might just be left in their dust, and it didn't happen. And I think Mizzou's defense has played better this season, you know, being untested. But last week they were, and I, I think they've been better than what I expected from their defense. Missouri's going to beat Florida. I'm with you. Well, I think and Rob I'll is too, you, Russ. And I'll tell you why. And it goes against one of my cardinal maxims. <laughs> a hard earned all you young whippersnappers out there pay attention <laughs> one of my cardinal maxims learn the hard way is always always pick against freshman quarterbacks especially freshman quarterbacks that get thrown into the fire and that's what you have down in Columbia this week I should say up in Columbia this week against Missouri um but this is a Florida offense that makes LSU's defense look good. This is a Florida offense that, if not for Kentucky, would be dead last in the conference. This is a Florida offense that is only using about 30% of the playbook. And they have a quarterback that can't throw the ball more than 15 yards downfield. It's a Florida offense that just lost the only real pass-blocking running back that they have on the entire roster. The Florida offense that can't block to protect its quarterback and that is a backup quarterback that doesn't know what he's doing. Now Florida has to get on the road and travel further north than they have since September 1991. Wow. So, you know, when you factor all those things together, I think you're looking for... Thank you very much. I think you're looking for a very, very uncomfortable situation for the Florida Gators this week. What do you think of the Mizzou team? I like, you know, so here's what here's what you need to know. You touched upon it briefly. I've watched that Georgia game three times now, and again, I do this so you all don't have to, because once really is enough. <laughs> 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 once really is enough. Two is a little yes. crazy. Three, and you're a freak. And, you know, that we can get to the whole Condoleezza Rice on the on the college football <laughs> committee, but there you go. Right? Condoleezza Rice is not watching Georgia versus Missouri three times for you, all right? I'm watching it for you. She's smarter you know, than that. that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's very, that's very true. Look, I want Condoleezza Rice doing things far more important than watching Missouri <laughs> versus Georgia. Um, it, that was in Missouri. You remember, it, Georgia was beat up, but Georgia's offensive line was beat up. Right. Georgia's offensive line was pretty healthy. And that Missouri defensive front seven played better than LSU and South Carolina. That Missouri defensive front seven harassed Aaron Murray all day long, caused fumbles, scored points. Now, conversely, Georgia's defensive line wasn't that banged up either. Mm -mm. And at the point of contact, that Missouri offensive line controlled that game. That Missouri offense, now granted they had Franklin for most of it, but that Missouri offensive line controlled that game for three and a half quarters when Franklin was in it, and truthfully, even for the rest of the fourth quarter. They won at the point of contact, Missouri, in Sanford Stadium against Georgia, where there really weren't Georgia injuries for the entire game. And that's, that's something LSU can't say, and that's something South Carolina can't say. 
is is Missouri capable of being, you know, what A and M was last year, or even better? Well, no, they don't have. I mean, they don't have. Johnny Manziel is a very unique athlete. You know, I mean, I know the kid's not big and he doesn't look fast and he doesn't look athletic, but he's everything. They don't have a guy like that. Not even close. Yeah. So I don't think that they can be that dynamic. I mean, they're not. Missouri's not destroying a decent Oklahoma team in the Cotton Bowl. Are they contending right? for the East? Even with they're, Franklin they're, out? They're winning the East. They're winning the East right now. Are they going to contend for it without their quarterback? If he gets back after three weeks, yes. Here's the key. Here's the key. They can't lose to South Carolina. If you're Missouri, you can lose to Florida, and it doesn't matter because Florida's not going to go uh, loss-free for the rest of the season. They're going to lose to somebody. Either Georgia you know, away from home or South Carolina away from home, they're losing to somebody. You have to beat South Carolina. If you don't beat South Carolina, then you have a loss to South Carolina. They have a loss, and Georgia has a loss. And in that situation, unless South Carolina absolutely tanks to Clemson, at the end of the year, they're going to be ranked way above Missouri. Yeah. You can't be in a three-way tie with South Carolina because we all remember it comes down to the BCS rankings. It's the three-way tie. It comes down to the BCS rankings. Georgia, by the way, could squeeze in in that scenario too. Sure could. It's not, every Georgia fan is rooting for South Carolina because if South Carolina beats Missouri, stick with me here, y'all. If South Carolina beats <laughs> Missouri and they all have one loss, and Georgia can just stay within five points in the polls with South Carolina, then remember, what the, the way it works is if there's a three-way tie, you take the top two teams in the BCS ranking at the end, and if they're within five points, it's head-to-head. Georgia won that game. Russ, you mentioned uh, the Florida LSU and, and how they made LSU's defense look last week. Uh, LSU's defense, they haven't allowed a touchdown in the last six quarters, but that's against... Florida, and that was the second half against Mississippi State. Uh, but are they are are they coming around to being better than they had shown er, shown earlier in the season? What what what? How good you is know, their defense? It's, what should we expect? I, I I don't think it's good. I don't. By the way, I, I want to get back to South Carolina at the end of this, but I don't think you know. There's a lot of folks now who don't know what they're talking about that are saying LSU's defense is back. It's not even close to back. It's not you know. It's, it, it, it's not 2012 defense, let alone 2011 defense. Florida's offense and that kid Murphy can make anybody look good. <laughs> All right? Oh, now. He, State, he's up a little bit on and, uh, Murphy. And, 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 no, no, I'm piling on top of you, brother. And and let me tell you something <laughs> else. State's not that far better. State's not that far better. So, you know, and now here comes LSU and the Ole Miss. Ask yourself a question. Where would I be this weekend if Ole Miss had beaten A&M? Mm, Oxford. Thank you. You're would people on. be thinking? Would people be? You know, people are discounting this game, right? LSU versus Ole Miss outside the outside of Mississippi and Louisiana. No one's talking yeah, because, about this game because the injury. Ask away. yourself. Well, I, no, yes, that's true. But ask yourself if Ole Miss wins that game. If Ole because if Ole Miss wins, beats A and M, are we talking about Ole Miss versus LSU? Yes. And, and it was right down to the wire. It was right down to the wire. I mean, Ole Miss lost that by a hair's width, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, why aren't we talking about LSU Ole Miss? This is an LSU defense that did well against Florida at home, a bad Florida offense and a bad Mississippi State offense in the second half. I don't think this LSU defense is that good at all. I think they're going to face, and I know there's injuries, but they're going to face a, an Ole Miss offense that's going to put points on them and, and make it close. Well, it should be uh, interesting. LSU, a big favorite uh in this game at eight and a half points, uh, you mentioned South Carolina. South Carolina's taking on Tennessee this week. I, I, I thought last week, you know, we hadn't seen really a complete game from South Carolina. Kind of felt oh. like uh, they were they were set up for uh, uh, maybe a maybe a slip up. Thought Arkansas could have been that week. That certainly wasn't the case. Uh, you know, can it can it hey, be don't, Tennessee? Don't anybody cry for Brett Bielema ever, because that guy's the the crown prince of seventy seven point butt kicking. And in, and in the great scheme of things, he he's got a few seventy-seven to zero games coming his way. That's a South Carolina team that scored basically fifty-two straight. Not basically, they did. They scored they fifty-two yeah. straight points on on Arkansas. Right? Arkansas yep. has not been the same since Brandon Allen's shoulder injury. And I know they were playing easier teams at the start of the season, but when Brandon Allen was throwing the ball well, 
The offense could run the ball well, and they were a different team. Boom, Brandon Allen goes down with the, with the injury, and he's not playing the same. They can't run the ball, and that's been their speed. And he turns Conversely, it over. Yes, exactly, interception, throws it to the wrong team. Conversely, South Carolina, so, you know, again, how much do we read into that game? First of all, it was on the road. That makes it impressive. Second of all, they didn't take their foot off the neck, which also makes it impressive. It, everything in the conference goes through South Carolina now. Do you realize that? The whole, everything goes through South Carolina. It's the South Carolina-Missouri game that matters. LSU desperately needs South Carolina to win out and beat Clemson, right? So that if LSU can make it to the championship game, they need Clemson with a loss, and they need to beat the team that beat Clemson, which would be South Carolina, not Georgia. So, I mean, everything right now, and now you got to ask yourself, is South Carolina looking ahead to Missouri? with a very tough Tennessee team that knocked all those Georgia kids out of the game. I hope South Carolina is paying attention to this game, but you got to remember, Tennessee hasn't beaten South Carolina, Florida, or Georgia in 11 straight times. Tennessee is 0-11 playing against South Carolina, Florida, and Georgia. Which upset do you like the most, Tennessee over South Old Carolina Miss. or Ole Miss over LSU? Ole Miss. I, I, I think this, I, I, I think this old Miss team can win. I tell you, I don't think they're going to. <laughs> but uh, you know, if you ask me which of the two upsets I like, I like that. I, I, again, the, the, the difference is that as bad as LSU's offense is, I shouldn't say as bad, but as average as LSU's offense is, it's better than a and I mean, you could take half of LSU's roster and it's as good as a and M's. So you know. Uh, they don't. They don't have a Johnny Manziel, but that defense should be enough to slow down. You know, I still have uh, great respect for what Mettenberger is doing this year. Clearly, LSU wanted to run the ball down Florida's throat to send a message from last year. Uh, so, you know, I think I think LSU's offense is on par with A and M, uh, and their defense is a little better. So, A and M should uh, LSU should win that game. But if if LSU doesn't come in paying attention, and as you all know, the Ole Miss people hate LSU, so they're they're ready for this game. The That's players, the fans, the, the whole school, you know, they're ready for this game. They've got the Ole Miss game circled on their calendar from day one. I just can't take another punt ready. return. I just can't take another punt return. Tommy Casanova in the early 70s, Billy Cannon in the late 50s, and Odell Beckham last and year. And Odell Beckham last year. I just I'll can't tell do you another that, punt return. That Odell Beckham, he's – did you see there was an NFL scout? I was just talking with Rich and Matt down in uh, Mississippi before I came up to talk with you all. And they were saying that there was an NFL scout who came out and said that the most impressive wide receiver right now in college football, in his opinion, is Treadwell. Hmm. He's good, but Jordan but he, Matthews is way up there too, isn't he? Well, I, I don't know. I'd put, I'd put, you know, what about Evans? I'd put Evans and both of the yeah. LSU kids and and Marquise Lee if he's healthy. I mean, year. I, I, well, I think, Tre don't get me wrong, the fact that we're even talking about a freshman wide receiver, remember how hard it is to play wide receiver from high school to college. That's yeah, look at DGB last year. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so, so you know, what are you talking about? What about Shaq Rowland, you know, the star now for South Carolina? He struggled his freshman year. Fred, Fred Rapp struggled at Florida State. Yeah. It's very, very rare you get a kid like uh, A.J. Green or Julio Jones. You know, I mean, you need to be a superstar to, to come in as a freshman. And this Treadwell kid is a superstar. But I, I wouldn't put him yet up at that. I, th I think I Ricky Seals-Jones was on his way to a big year before he was injured. I'd agree with that. Russ, uh, we were talking earlier. Um, is is Stanford USC, is that the biggest upset ever? College back, football. Back in 07. I'm sorry. Is what uh, you Stan broke up? I when, 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 Stamp when Stanford won at USC, was that the biggest upset ever in '07? No. No, Appalachian State beating Michigan was <laughs> the biggest upset ever. I mean, there wasn't even a spread in that game. Vegas didn't even have a number <laughs> in that game. That's and, that. And, that, and that and that's now, a Michigan will, team that went on and beat Tebow in Florida in the bowl. That's game. right. Yeah. That that was a floor. If I remember correctly, brace yourself here. And I'm not a I'm not a gambler. I think the Stanford spread was 42, right? Weren't they getting 42 yeah. points on the road against? It was around State? that. Yeah, but I mean, there wasn't even a spread for Appalachian State. 
what our, we, were, we were talking about it, uh, because our, how many years ago was it, Stance? Arkansas knocked off a number one team in the country. Arkansas beat Texas 32 years ago. On, There's on, not a on this game. No, no, no. Oh I, we're, we're, not we're not saying that. We're not saying that. We're not saying it. We're not saying it. Hold on. We categorically aren't saying that. Uh, we, but we're saying <laughs> if, little kid word, if, if it occurred, <laughs> would it be the, the biggest funny. upset ever? Would it be the biggest upset? <laughs> Arkansas now, you know, my wife, my, my wife's been riding me. Uh, ever since I had to cut off all my hair. Uh, but actually, no, no, I'm not going to do it. 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 Because just with my luck, with my luck, uh, Long, Jeff Long would go out there and rally the troops and he'd have to make me have to cut my hair twice. So I'm not going to bet my hair again. But there's no way Alabama's losing to Arkansas. That's not going to happen. No, I don't, I don't think so either. Uh, In fact, I will say this though, you know, Saban doesn't run up the score. He never does. He he's not afraid to score a touchdown late, a meaningless touchdown, just so he wins by 17. You know, and it looks better. He does that all the time. But go look through Alabama and go look through when LSU. You know, when he was at LSU, very, 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 very rarely does Saban ever score very 50 rarely. points. He always keeps it in the 40s. Les Miles does the same thing too. Very rarely runs it up. Uh, Russ, we got a text uh, from a listener who says they saw that you tweeted that the Bristol SEC game is going to be an SEC East conference game. Uh, he wants to know, so who's the SEC adding in the West? They're not. They're going to add North Carolina State to the East, and then they'll reshuffle. <laughs> Who do you reshuffle? I guess this is, this, this is going to. They're going to add North Carolina State to the East. That way they'll have the geographical map laid out. North Carolina State is a good football team. They've got good money, good sports. They fit into the climate well. They have the same little brother issue that with UNC that A&M had with Texas. Uh, there's good money in that that gets you into Virginia, that gets you new TV markets. I've done all the math on this. This isn't very difficult, y'all. Just follow the money. Follow the pattern and follow the money. We're going to go to 16 teams. That's inevitable. And I think that I think that, you know, you can't stay the way it can't stay the way it is right now. Missouri is not going to keep playing all of its volleyball games and all of its all of its you know table In tennis Columbia, games. The and, other one and all, yeah. and, and all these other sports they have. They're not going to keep flying over to Florida to play these games. You know, right. they want to play on the West. And you know, we can we can handle sixteen teams. I know it's a lot, but we can handle sixteen teams. I think what more than likely is going to happen is you'll see 16 teams broken into four pods of four. And when you actually sit down, and I, I've written on this a thousand times. Tell your listener to Google it and read it. I've written it. Retweet it tonight. You know, it, Retweet that column. Right? All right, all right. You know, you're going you're gonna to end up with four pods of four teams each. That way you can actually keep the, you know, the Georgia, Auburn, Alabama, Tennessee rivalries, you know, and you can keep uh, – you, you, that would actually work better then trying to split into eight and eight, uh, that be, that would become a little bit more cumbersome. But there's a lot more change still coming, y'all. We're not stopping at the way the system is now. And, Rob know, would though. Stopping. We want to go. We want to go nationwide. Russ. <laughs> Rob wants to. He wants to stop at the Cumberland River. I. <laughs> I have been telling. I've been, hey, just remember the Mason Dixon goes all the way up to Pennsylvania. It so runs we can a long grab, way. We can grab Virginia, and it's still south. And uh, uh, you know, I'll tell you. I've, I've said for a long time that we should open up an office in San Francisco. I know. We should have an SEC, we should have an SEC office in San Francisco and Chicago and and you know what? Beijing. To hell, to hell with them. <laughs> to hell with them. You know, say if the Big Ten can't handle us having an office in Chicago, then win. Keep your kids by winning. Otherwise, forget it. We'll come up and we'll just you know open an office and make it easier for our teams and our coaches to come on up there and take your kids. Russ, uh, this week had his mid-season analysis. It's a damn good thing I'm not. In, I, I'm interrupting. It's a damn good thing I'm not in charge of the SEC because if I, if it was, we'd be at war. <laughs> we'd be at war, and we well, we, got, we we got Pat Dye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this week, uh, CollegeFootballNews.com. Russ's uh, mid-season analysis, awards, and picks. Uh, really like your player of the mid-season going to Mike Davis, guy who's not getting credit for the season that he's having. Also. Kudos to you on top three players in the midseason who don't get any credit. University of Memphis kicker Jake Elliott makes your list of three. Perfect. The kids, perfect 10-10. That's right. 
Look, at 10 of 10, 8 of 8 on extra points. If you're not, I don't know what qualification we're going by, but in my book, perfect is pretty good. And uh, and he, they do still play in the FBS, right? So he's perfect. That's correct. He plays, yes, and he's so not were, getting a lot doing, of you were doing so You were doing so well with all your Tiger fans until you had to throw that FBS line in. <laughs> now here comes our email. <laughs> <laughs> I think the young man's playing very well, and he deserves all the respect he can get. Playing so yeah, there you go. Keep it up. Keep it up. Ru- keep, kicking those, <laughs> keep kicking those balls. <laughs> Russ, always a pleasure, my friend. Uh, enjoy the weekend of football. We'll do it again next week. That's it. You're not going to give me at least one. You were right on Murphy. Not even one. It, it's so obvious. I was you, right you, on Murphy. Yeah, he says he's he's not yeah, worse than Driscoll. Goodbye. That's all I've said <laughs> from the beginning. Goodbye. He's not worse than Driscoll. Goodbye. He's really amazing. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks, goodbye. Ryan. Thanks, Ed. Appreciate it. <laughs> Going around the SEC with Russ Mitchell each week, brought to you by Ken Rashes Incorporated. As I mentioned earlier, next week, starting Monday, it is Eggtoberfest. Eighth annual. Eighth annually. They're going to be cooking up, you know, we tell you Everything. each week, you could cook up just about anything on the Big Green Egg. Well, they're going to be doing that next week. With Wait, the, uh, this with is not the just your hamburgers, hot dog. No, no, no. How cooker. about... How about cider stew? Cider stew. That sounds autumnal, doesn't it? Sounds perfect. Sounds this Halloween. This time of does. year, yeah, no question. Pork tenderloin with apples that and broccoli. Any time huh? of year. Spiral glazed ham. Cowboy cookies. Sourdough pizza bites. I could eat those for hours. Peach cobbler, and much, much, much more. Uh, so many uh, menu items that y- you can cook on the big green egg: pizzas, barbecue, cookies, turkey, they beef will stew, have drawings anything. every day. Yeah, they're going to have a whole bunch of things going on, all eggs and stands, tables, uh, carts on sale. And don't forget, maybe the uh, the greatest thing that we tell you every single week, uh, you get a big green egg from Ken Rashes Incorporated. They are assembled and delivered free anywhere in Shelby County. I don't know, anyway. if, they, I don't know if they'll load... I don't know if they'll start the fire for you after they assemble it. And they might make it. a little cider stew for you. I don't know. <laughs> They'll do just about all of it for you. 3686 Summer Avenue. It is your Big Green Egg headquarters for the Mid-South. Ken Ranch is the original dealer in Memphis for the Big Green Egg and all accessories. Good folks. Yes, sir. 8th Annual Oktoberfest Sale, October 21st through the 26th. Stop by 3686 Summer Avenue between Highland and Graham. Open 9 to 5 Monday through Saturday, or you can give them a call. 901-458-7541. 901-458-7541. That's 458-7541. Ken Rashes Incorporated. Go check out the 8th Annual Oktoberfest Sale next week. We will take a break here on the program. When we come back, we'll hear from Justin Fuente. Also, we'll have our Sleep Chief Big Number of the Day, our Ghoul Style segment. we got a lot still to get to in our final half hour. We might have too much show today. We'll be back live from Tunica National Fish and Stats here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Want to know what your favorite Sports 56 show is planned? Check out the daily schedule at sports56whbq.com. Brian Elder's Roofing Solutions. I'm Brian Elder. Don't let him tell you that your roof has to be replaced. I may be able to repair it and save you thousands. 867-0303. Let me climb up on your roof. We're the guys people call after they've already been rejected by their insurance company. If only they'd called me first. Because if I think it's a claim, it's a claim. And I'll fight for it. 867-0303. We built the roof on the St. Jude Dream Home. And all six roofs on this year's Vesta Home Show. Call me to find out why. Are you getting estimates? I'll measure your roof from outer space and give you an estimate right over the phone. Financing available. A lifetime warranty. Shingles, metal, or commercial. 867-0303. 867-0303 or brianelderroofing.com. Call 867-0303. Brian Elder's Roofing Solutions. Hi, this is John Conway with Conway Services. When was the last time you had your heating system cleaned? How about a safety inspection? Right now, Conway Services is offering our 16-point Energy Saver Super Tune-Up on your heating system for only $69. That's right, for only $69, we'll come out and perform a 16-point Energy Saving Super Tune-Up on your heating system. We'll also include a complete safety inspection using our state-of-the-art camera system, making sure there are no cracks in your heating system that could be releasing carbon monoxide. 
Plus, we'll run a carbon monoxide test on your heating system, all for only $69. You can have the peace of mind knowing your heating system is safe and ready for those cold winter nights. So call Conway Services, the Mid-South's premier heating, cooling, and plumbing service company at 384-3511. Call this week and ask for the early bird special, and we'll perform your super tune-up for only $57. Call 384-3511. Conway Services. Call Conway today. The name has changed and so have the deals. AutoNation GMC Mendenhall is lighting up the market with incredible lease specials. For example, a 2013 Terrain for $199 a month for 39 months and the 2013 Acadias for $299 a month for 39 months. And don't forget the sell down on all 2013 Sierras. Discounts up to $10,000 off MSRP while they last. So hurry over to AutoNation GMC Mendenhall for all your GMC needs. You'll see the dedication in every single step. You'll see it in the smiles when smiles are hard to get. You'll see it in the little things that add up to success. The caring and passion are the things that we love best. Wolf Chase Linden Brace is your Mid-South provider for orthotics and prosthetics. They are an ABC accredited facility and their practitioners are ABC certified. At Wolf Chase Linden Brace, their services include artificial limbs, legs and arms, braces of all kinds, and custom molded inserts. You can call them today at 901-507-7821 for their location on Highway 64 in between Germantown Parkway and Appling Road. Or visit them at their new location in Jackson, Tennessee. That number is 731-660-5900. Or visit them on the web at wolfchaselemonbrace.com. We to yours. Wolf Chase Slim and Grace. Last time we checked, money didn't grow on trees. So XMC, your Xerox authorized sales agent, is proud to provide cost-effective office equipment and electronic document management to help save you money. Combined with the power and resources of the recognized leader in office products and document services, Xerox and XMC offer you the widest array of office products and document solutions available anywhere. Visit XMCINC.com and allow XMC to help boost productivity, enhance collaboration, and reduce costs in your office. Call 737-8910. That's 737-8910. Now, a Sports 56 update. It's 530 on Bash for the ALCS. is tied up at two games apiece. The Boston Red Sox will visit the Detroit Tigers for game five tonight. I'll start around 7 o'clock Central Time on Fox in about an hour and a half. John Lester will get the start for the Red Sox with Annabelle Sanchez going for the Tigers. Jim Leland made a couple of changes to his lineup last night that were effective. It looks like John Farrell will try the same tonight. Rookie Xander Bogarts will start at third base for tonight for the Red Sox in place of the struggling Will Middlebrooks. The Cardinals-Dodgers series is taking the day off today. They'll get game six underway tomorrow evening. That'll start at 7.30 Central Time up in St. Louis. A couple of notes out of the NFL. Houston Texans coach Gary Kubiak announced today that Case Keenum will be the starting quarterback after ruling Matt Schaub out with that ankle injury. Keenum has been inactive for the first six games, and TJ Yates had filled in last week for Schaub. But obviously, Kubiak's looking for a little bit of a spark, giving Case Keenum his first start of his career. Eagles quarterback Michael Vick put it into any suspense as he ruled himself out for this Sunday's game against the Dallas Cowboys. Nick Foles will make his second start of the season, making that his eighth of his career. The Thursday night NFL matchup has the Arizona Cardinals hosting the Seattle Seahawks. That one will get underway around 725 Central Time this evening. And of course, with all the coverage on NFL Network, the Thursday night college matchups has a good ACC battle with number 10 Miami visiting North Carolina. That will start at 630 Central Time on ESPN. A couple of notes out of the college ranks as well. Georgia coach Mark Rick said today that his team is preparing to play without running back Todd Gurley once again. Gurley suffered an ankle sprain on September 28th against LSU. In college basketball news, Louisville forward Shane Behannon has been suspended indefinitely from the team due to an unspecified violation of university apology, according to coach Rick Patino. And former Tennessee guard Trey Golden has received an NCAA waiver to play this season at Georgia Tech. Sports reports brought to you by Dixie Pickers, located at 99 North Center Street in Collierville and open Monday through Saturday from 10 to 5. Dixie Pickers should be your one-stop shop for fine southern apparel and classic sports memorabilia. Visit them online at DixiePickerStore.com. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Welcome back, everyone. Final half hour on this Thursday afternoon, live from Tunica National. Fish and Stats are with you until 6 o'clock. Still got an NFL pick to get to today. And uh, also we'll have our sleep cheap big number of the day. We're going to hear from Justin Fuente coming up uh, here in moments. But as we do each and every Thursday, it's time to check out who's got some style. 
in the world of sports and, well, who's in need of it? And I'll tell you what. I think all the Grizzlies players at this point, I think the Tigers players at this point, all are in need of some pampering at Goulds. Who's not, though? Everybody's in need of the That's true. I'm just talking sports world. Oh, they definitely need Although I could say our, us, you know, yesterday oh. after the TV falling, oh. you know, I mean, I was a little tense. The carnage. I was really tense for a few hours. Uh, you can pamper yourself or pamper someone in your life uh, by sending them to Gould's Day Spa and Salon. Look what it did to the Cardinals. The well, curse of the Bambino all over again. That's right. That's right. They did. It kind of ruined their game yesterday. TV fell. Cardinals had base loaded. Nobody out with them. We brought the TV up. It was second inning, no score. Metaphorical. <laughs> They've been doing it right at Goulds for over 80 years now, and uh, after 81 years now, after that first salon opened, Philip and David Gould own 11 locations in both Memphis and Olive Branch. You can get a Goulds gift card and get it for yourself. I always say to get it for other people, get it for yourself. Yeah. Just keep them in your back pocket. Go all about yourself. Absolutely. Or you can get it for the, the special holidays someone. roll around. Then Think you got to get it for others. Yeah. It's not too early to start thinking about that, though, either. Uh, it's, it's really a, not. Great way of... Uh, I saw a Christmas tree up in Gordo, Alabama on the 3rd of October. Two weeks ago when I was driving to Tuscaloosa. They just didn't take it down. No, no, it was it was up new. Fresh so, new. So if, it, if it's Christmas time at Gordo, it's Christmas time at yeah, Gould's. You're going to start having those parties and everything. And a Gould's gift card is a perfect, perfect gift for anniversary, birthdays, weddings, holidays. Or just to make someone feel so Goulds on a special day with a Goulds gift card. And it's very simple to do. You can order online at GouldSalons.com and choose gift cards by mail. They'll mail an elegant Goulds gift card complete with a menu of services, card, ribbon. Or they can hand deliver the gift card to any Memphis location. Or you can even print it out yourself, an instant gift card. Or even email it to the recipient. That's how simple it is. They make it very simple on you because they pamper you even when it comes to ordering a Gould's gift card, for crying out loud. But the real special part is when you actually go to Gould's. And uh, that gift card is good for the entire menu of services, from spa packages to massage, body treatments, facials, hair, nails, all of it. It's a complete escape. So when you have that Gould's gift card, you know, it's the perfect gift card because you don't want to just say, hey, this is for spa packages. Well, maybe I don't want a spa today. Maybe today I want a massage. Gould's gift card is good for everything. So that's why it's a great gift because well, however you want to be pampered, you can be pampered that way with that Gould's gift card. 11 locations online, GouldSalons.com. Who's got style this week? The pitching. Pitching sure. in Major League Baseball. We've always sure known pitching and defense get, get you a long way in October baseball. But this year, maybe more than any, and it's, it's a lot of factors the PD testing is set in, but did you do you ever watch, watch see the sports science guy John Brinkus uh-huh. on ESPN? They did the thing where where Walker's release point where he's six six. He's releasing with the equivalency of being like seven eight. Are we gonna lower the mound again? That's interesting you say that. I I, I think I think that there might be a call for it in the off season with this domination because you just got to really scratch a run out. A friend asked me the other day, and I didn't have an answer for him. He said, why did they ever put a mound out there? How come they didn't just pitch off flat ground? And I said, I, I, I don't know. It's <laughs> kind of like, why do you have eyebrows? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't really know. I don't know. We got them. I don't know. But maybe we need to lower it again. Uh, yeah, the pitching has been just fantastic. Uh, you know, last year series. was the year of the no-hitter. This year was the year of the near-miss on no-hitters. But this has been the year of the pitcher in the postseason. Uh, boy, Antoine Walker, you know, where is the style gone? You remember the Antoine shake, right? Uh, it, I mean, that was fun. He was a fun player. And he was. He was a grizzly at the end of his career and yeah. got into some financial issues. Well, apparently he's having trouble finding friends now. Uh, it's, it's, it's sad. Antoine Walker. Funny how that goes with the money. He, t- <laughs> he took to Twitter last week to express his loneliness, uh, tweeted out, where are the friends at? Five minutes later, tw- or seven minutes later. A grammarian said, out. you don't end a sentence in a prepositional <laughs> phrase, right? <laughs> Probably. Seven minutes later, tweeted out, I remember when my phone never stopped ringing. Yeah. One minute later, can't even get a phone call back. Mm. Come on, Twan. you got to have a lot of friends left, right? That was sad. Let me follow Walker. Uh, let's That's see. That's not real friends. No, no, but you can count them. I mean, I, I got, you know, 
a lot of friends. I'm almost at 6,000 friends, <laughs> friends. That, that, that I have. Uh, let's see. Antoine Walker. Uh, at Walker Antoine 8. He's got 18,000 friends. Got to be one on friend Twitter. out of 18,000 you'd think, followers. You'd think that they would be there. But, yeah, so uh, he's... If you want to be Antoine Walker's friends, just uh, hit him up on the Twitter, basically. It seems like it could be that easy. If you still had the cash, you'd have a lot more friends. <laughs> you, remember, you know the term, uh, even, a, uh, even a blind squirrel can find an acorn, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, how about this? How about, hey, how about a, a blind man hitting a hole-in-one? That's pretty spectacular. It is. Uh, Jim O'Brien made a hole-in-one in the United Kingdom. He is blind. He's been blind since birth. His ace is thought to be only the third by a completely blind golfer in the history of England and Wales Blind Golf Association, which he's a part of. In fact, the tournament he was playing in was being held by that very association. He told the BBC he was uh, beyond elated to achieve the feat. He said it's every golfer's dream to do a hole-in-one, especially if you're totally blind. When I teed off, I hit it nicely. The only thought I had in my head was, let's hope it makes the green. After a few seconds, the guy I was with said, it's in the hole. It was a great feeling. It's unbelievable. What if it made him certainly buy is unbelievable. What if he was on the hook? Yeah, he had to buy drinks. <laughs> I hope his friends are nice. Yeah, there are 200 people in here. Well, that's the good side for Antoine Walker right now with no friends. If he had a hole in one, he wouldn't have to buy anybody a drink. <laughs> that, that is a good point. But congratulations. Uh, that's an unbelievable story. Jim O'Brien with a hole in one. Uh, being completely blind, that's a fantastic moment. So uh, good for him, and congratulations. He needs to go get himself a massage at Gould's, what he needs to do. Uh, you can uh, do that for yourself, or you can get that Gould's gift card for the special someone in your life. It's very simple. Just go online at gouldsalons.com or stop by any of the 11 locations. The gift card is good for the entire menu. Spa packages like the couples or bridal, complete makeover, or even the spa day of beauty. All the massages, the therapeutic deep tissue massage. Relaxation, or mother to be. How about the Paradise Body Butter Wrap? Might not be huh? a better gift out there for wedding parties. You know, it's always what, what do yeah. you get, groomsmen and and bridesmaids? That's it. There you go. Boy, you just gave people a great idea. One of all weddings away. coming up. Absolutely. Uh, stop by any of the eleven Goulds locations, but or get married during football season. I know so. <laughs> or go online GouldSalons.com. All right. Justin Fuente, the head coach of the Memphis Tigers, he was uh, he joins the Middays program each and every week. Sounds more comfortable every week with Greg yep. and Eli, and really, I, I think people are are itching to fall in love with Justin Fuente in this area. He's got to win. He knows that, but yep. he, he's got it. One thing struggled with last week against Houston, not only the turnovers, but the penalties. 12 penalties for 86 yards. Tigers now have 41 penalties on the season. They have a game with 15 and a game with 12 Averaging just over eight penalties per game. That's where they started with Coach Fuente addressing the penalty issue last week. Well, we had a couple procedure penalties offensively down there in the red zone. With uh, We had a hard time, I guess, hearing. You know, It's kind of an interesting stadium. Oh, the soccer uh, stadium, right. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of weird. I mean, the kids were kind of you know, saying that it was really loud, and I had a hard time with that, it, you know, but... Uh, I just didn't think there were that many people there, but it was built kind of neat. I mean, it was really cool. If you're going to build a 20,000 seat stadium, that's the way to do it. You know, I mean, it's really, it really kind of a cool structure, but we had some problems with that. And then, uh, you know, we had a couple deals there on, on defense where we, um, didn't do what we're supposed to do that, that, that ended up hurting us. So, you know, that comes back to discipline and it comes back to understanding that our actions affect the team and we've got to continue to put the team first. And uh, it's one thing to say; it's another thing to do. And right. We've, we've got to do. Uh, Coach, there, the, there's two questions that, that we, I think, get more than any um, that we've gotten more than any. One is about the quarterback situation. You've addressed that numerous times. I want to ask you about that. Number two is, people keep asking me, why do they run so many trick plays? Why are we seeing the halfback passes, the the double reverses, and things like that that, that seem to be causing us problems? So I'll let you address that to people who ask that question. Well, you know, I mean, why do we run them? Obviously, we run them because we practice them and we anticipate their execution being there and for them them to work. Um, you know, we, um, you know, those are those are things that we feel like we can take advantage of other people's pursuit. I think, uh, you know, do do people call plays and in retrospect wish they hadn't 
Does that happen? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't think anybody that that goes to their job and then goes through a, a long period of decision making that doesn't go back and check why they made decisions and and then uh, you know kind of criticize or at least constructively criticize themselves and and see what led to those decisions and either agree or disagree with them, some of the decisions you may may have made along the lines. But, um, you know, you look at the deal at, at Central Florida, I thought, you know, it was a, it was the guy, we had the guy there. We just didn't, didn't make the play. We didn't do a good job up front. The guy was in our running back's face and, uh, you know, led to the ball coming out late and, and being a little bit underthrown. And then, uh, you know, we laid the ball on the ground last week. So, you know, those are things that we're going to continue to do. We're going to continue to have them in the game plan. We're going to continue to work them and execute them and uh, all part of trying to keep the defense honest in order for us to, to run our base stuff. You mentioned uh, earlier about uh, several problems, several issues, and it wasn't just one in the red zone, and you talked about the receivers. And and to have the situation with the receivers where, one, maybe not the aware, awareness of where they are so they can put one foot in and have a have a catch, uh, one hanging on to the football. Um, there have been some situations so far with, with the receivers, and uh, I don't know if you can pinpoint that, but uh, do you expect a little bit more from what you're getting so far from your overall from your receiving core? Absolutely. I mean, I don't, uh, you know, I think they would expect more of themselves as well, you know, and um, the the thing that you've got to do as a head coach is demand more and also realize that in no way, shape, or form do we pin it only on a, per, a certain person or a certain group. Right. And, and it's including the wide receivers or the linebackers or whoever. But we've got to understand that those are opportunities to make plays. Those are balls being pushed down the field mm -hmm. that give us a chance to have those gap plays or game-altering plays or those chunk plays that um, – that can really affect the outcome of the game. And, you know, for whatever reason, we just, we have been there. We just haven't been able to get those things, you know, pulled in. So I don't, um, you know, I, yeah, we do. We do expect those guys to do, a, to do a little bit more and, and to make some of those 50, 50 plays and, and some of them that aren't even 50, 50 plays and uh, continue to develop and, and get better and, and, and make some of those plays. The thing I'll, I would say in, in some of their defense is they're an awfully young crew. And, uh, you know, Joe Craig is a junior but has not played. You know, he went, right. uh, you know, this is his first first go around, and some of those other guys are freshmen and sophomores. And, you know, you know, that's part of the deal. But also they've got to understand that it's time to grow up and it's time for us to go. If we want to be the type of program that we talk about and we want to make the – type of strides that we all talk about getting, um, you know, we've got to make those plays. SMU coming in on Saturday. They're one and four also. Uh, what have you seen from them? What should we expect on Saturday? Well, they're going to put the ball in the air. I can promise you that. <laughs> June, June seems to do that a little and bit. Hal Mummy, yeah. yes. Well, then he goes out and hires Hal Mummy. <laughs> right. You know, so between them, I can just see those two in a, in a laboratory somewhere, drawing up new pass routes and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, they uh, obviously have got a very good football program. I'm excited about the game. It's an early start. It's the, um, you know, American Conference game of the week, and I'm looking forward to bringing them here into the Liberty Bowl. Uh, we've got a great test for us. You know, they've played some really quality people. Uh, I think they're – I was just talking to our radio guys. I think they're – statistics are skewed by the quality of opponents that they've played. I would agree. And, um, you know, really had a rough time with some very, very good people. So it uh, should be a fun game. We're, we're looking forward to it. Our kids are going to get excited and get ready to go play. And i um, looking forward to continuing to, to, to build this program. Justin Fuente on earlier today on Middays with Greg and Eli. He's exactly right when you talk about SMU. Other than Montana State – Although they beat Montana State 31 to 30, they are battle tested. Texas Tech, Texas A&M on the road, TCU on the road, and then a 55-52 shutout or shootout with Rutgers. They are one and four quality schedule. So, but a very quality schedule. So they are battle tested. Uh, as far as our pitching thing about the mound, Bash uh, chiming in saying it'd be impossible to pitch on a flat surface. Hitters would absolutely tee off with no movement on pitches, no ability to get any velocity. I don't know, Bash. When I was in grade school, there was a flat surface, and I just mowed them down. 
<laughs> Dude, I, you do flat ground work every basically two days before you go pitch as a pitcher, and you don't have anything on it. There's a reason. I mean, you have to have a mound to get something on your fastball and on oh, every. I, I oh, I understand. What if they raised it? Never mind lower. What if they went back to? Oh, that'd be scary. I pitched on a really high mound that was much higher than what it's supposed to be, and it's really uncomfortable, honestly. Walker and Wainwright would be in your lap. What would Randy Johnson have been? On, on your face. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I play wiffle ball on a flat surface, and then boy, the ball moves, jumps. He referenced <laughs> wiffle ball, Bash. <laughs> How'd I deal with that? Wow. Oh, How's Tyler Murphy man. doing? <laughs> Not good. Not good. I appreciate that too. All right, we will uh, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll have our sleep cheap big number of the day when we return here on Fish and Stats Sports Fifty Six Eighty Seven Seven FM. We are the voice of Tigers fans. Sports Fifty Six and Eighty Seven Seven FM. With the rain and sun bearing down on your car's finish, Car Wash USA Express offers more ways to keep your car's finish clean and protected. Car Wash USA Express has four levels of washes, from their hot wax and shine to their $6 express wash. All will treat your car with care. Washes take just three minutes, vacuums are free with purchase, and attendants are always on duty to assist. Car Wash USA Express is now open in West Memphis at 905 North Missouri Street. Stop by today and try them out, because a dirty car is a dirty shame. Visit CarWashUSAExpress.com. Wouldn't it be cool to win a big green egg grill and you did it just by watching Monday Night Football? Join Sports 56 of Southland Park Gaming and Racing every Monday night for Football Frenzy. Beginning every Monday night at 7.30. Now upstairs in the Kennel Club, watch the football game on multiple high-def big screen TVs, enjoy food and drink game time specials, and win prizes throughout the night. Plus, if you bingo, you qualify to win the new big green egg grill on December 23rd. See Southland Park's player rewards for details. Hosted by your friends from Sports 56. Rusty Bomber with Guatney Mazda of Germantown to stop by. Rusty, how is the internet affecting car dealership? Uh, interesting you should ask that, Greg. We believe that 9 out of 10 of our customers that come through our doors have already done their homework on the internet. They know more about those cars than probably we do. So uh, we're excited that that is still driving them to the Mazda product. They're doing their homework and it keeps leading them to buy Mazdas. Uh, we're also building our business through our social media, Facebook. Uh, cars.com with reviews. We invite all our listeners out there. Go on our Facebook page and go to cars.com and see what we're all about. Yeah, Facebook page, Guatney Mazda of Germany. And also, you have a terrific website, guatneymazda.com. You can find a lot of things about Guatney Mazda of Germantown right on that website. Absolutely. Our inventory updates about every 24 hours, so you can get a pretty fresh feel for what we've got on the lot at any time. 7300 Winchester, Guatney Mazda of Germantown. Call them at 751-7300 where they make car buying simple. Hello, Memphis. It's good to be home again. That saying, you'll miss me when I'm gone? Well, it's true. I miss Southern Draws, comfort food, and everything Elvis. I miss the bridge lights reflecting off the river. And good friends who, even after months without talking, never skip a beat. I miss the season's first crisp fall morning, a signal the tree leaves down poplar are about to fire up with colors only God could paint. It's easy to take our hometown for granted, but if you're from Memphis, you know living here is special. Raising a family here is a gift, and loving here, well, that just might be heaven on earth. Peter Poole Fine Jewelers appreciates being part of Memphis and so many Memphis family celebrations. Visit us if you have an upcoming occasion worthy of a beautiful keepsake. Peter Poole Fine Jewelers in the Sanderland Center, west of the Racquet Club. Now, back to Fish and Stats, presented by AutoNation GMC on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Final couple of minutes, a uh, big NFL game tonight. that We need to make a pick on the Arizona Cardinals hosting the Seattle Seahawks. And the uh, the Seahawks are favored in this one. Let me give you a couple of numbers, though, uh, with these two. The Cardinals have covered seven of the last games at home against Seattle. However, the Cardinals have lost seven straight division games. The Cardinals are a five-and-a-half-point dog. I'm taking the Cardinals. Big Take red. the dog. Go Big Red. Stats, you're going with the Cardinals as yep. well. Bash. I'll differ from you guys. I'll go Seattle. Seattle's probably going to do it, then. It's Thursday night. I don't have good Thursday night luck. All right, now it's time for our Sleep Cheap Big Number of the Day. So listen, um, I 
was wondering, can I have your number? Brought to you by the great folks at the Sleep Cheap. Boy, if you've had your mattress too long, you're not comfortable when you sleep, you toss and turn, maybe just feel groggy in the mornings, well, better night's rest. It's on you. That's right. A better night's rest can make you feel a lot better. And at Sleep Cheap, they want to help you on the journey to a better night's rest. This is easily correct. Absolutely. Go by and check out the mattresses they have. They're spectacular. And check out the deals that they have. They're even better. Uh, Fuller Queen Pillow Top Mattresses as low as one forty nine ninety nine. Fuller Queen Memory Foam Mattresses two forty nine ninety nine. This is every day. This is not catching every day. on a right every, Nope, every Tuesday. single day. Every single day. And all the memory foam is a replica of Tempur-Pedic, but it's a quarter of the price. And there are five stores in Memphis to choose from, so there is one near you. And a simple phone number, 503-9930. 503-9930 at Sleep Cheap. They want to help you on your journey to a better night's rest, and they can. They bring us our big number of the day. What you got? Rob, you remember when the stolen base was really critical to baseball, but especially in the National League? Yeah. The big number of the day, seven. Seven stolen bases in the National League playoffs, uh, LCS between the Dodgers and the Cardinals. Twelve in the American League. That is unbelievable. I'll tell you what, that, that kid from the Reds, next year if he's on the big oh, club. he would blow it out. He might get to 100. He could. Because he, every time he's on base, lot. he can go, mm -hmm. which would be great. We haven't seen that in a long, long time. Uh, my number today is seven, and it's not good. It's I'm not seven. good. I hate to leave you with this. Cardinals, uh, last three times they've been up 3-1 in the NLCS. They are 0-7, 0-7 in games. Carlos Beltran. I'm concerned, but I'm not panicked. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Carlos Beltran's teams. Tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. Panic. When a win means a trip to the World Series. Carlos Beltran's teams are 0-7 as well. The Dodgers, however, are 0-5 in St. Louis in the NLCS. So got that going for you, along with Adam Wainwright and... Michael Waka going for you in St. Louis for games six and seven. Here's one other number for you today. This news uh, Kershaw will be unhittable, well, probably. This news just coming out today. The Shreveport Times reporting that uh, Grambling interim coach George Ragsdale has been fired. Defensive coordinator Dennis Winston named the third head coach of Grambling now in five weeks. I wonder if that's the Dennis Winston that played for the Steelers and played at Arkansas for Mariana. Dennis Dirt Winston. Don't know. He's the uh, he's the defensive coordinator. I know they they had a players boycott. I wouldn't recommend that if that's the Dirt Winston I'm thinking of, because mm. the welcoming back party won't be really nice. This wasn't uh, this wasn't pretty either. Apparently, the Grambling president, the AD, and the student government president all met with the players. The the they meeting the coach. meeting ended. The coach showed up for practice. He was there by himself. Team was gone. Uh, they've lost 17 straight games. Doug Williams fired two weeks into the season. Uh, that was followed by the defensive line coach being fired. Now the interim coach has been fired. It's just a big old too bad firing because, going on. Because there, there's no history in college football any more replete with success stories and and victories than Grambling. Yep. Very proud program. Mm -hmm. Eddie Robinson was some guy. Well, there you have it, three. Three coaches in five weeks. Uh, have you had your current mattress too long? Well, it's time to come by Sleep Cheap. It's essential to good health. And they want to help you on that journey. Brand new factory direct mattresses, affordable payment options, excellent customer service. They can accommodate all of your betting needs. Same-day delivery, 12-month interest-free financing, layaway as well. Go by Sleep Cheap. Check it out yourself. And you will come away happy, and you'll come away sleeping a lot better, and it'll change the way you feel each and every day. I'm going to get a good night's rest tonight, and I'm going to head to Nashville tomorrow. Stash. Sean Arnell is going to be stepping in tomorrow. Sean will be with us tomorrow. Look very, very forward. I'm letting Sean make all my picks. I think that's my best move. Sean's going to play you tomorrow, except for the Tyler Murphy <laughs> lunacy. <laughs> <laughs> and pitching off a flat service. Yeah, Where did that, that come from? That's crazy. That's going to do it for us. Uh, I will see you Monday. You have a good weekend, Stats. Bash, you have one as well for Bash and Stats and all the great folks here at Tunica National. Have a great weekend. Uh, it was Fish and Stats with Sean and Stats. We'll be back tomorrow at 3. We'll the best Grizzlies blog is teaming up with the best in Memphis Sports Radio. Three Shades of Blue Radio with Josh Coleman, Jonathan May, and Philip Dean. Saturdays at 9 a.m. starting October 19th. Three SOB Radio. Things are about to get real. Elegant. 
Efficient and intelligently priced. It's the all-new 2014 MDX. This is General Manager Greg Hapke. Enjoy state-of-the-art technology and seven-passenger seating. Luxury at a whole new level. Acura of Memphis.com. Hi, I'm Kelly Erb. I work with Sheldon Rosengarten at Mark Spinsdorf, the oldest real estate company in town. I can't tell you how many people remind me he is known as Shell Dunn because of his ability to get things done. In other words, to get your house sold. He has an award-winning, highly successful strategic marketing program that can often mean the difference in whether you sit or sell. And our company and our team also specialize in corporate relocation through our network of quality brokers called Leading Real Estate Companies of the World. As Sheldon always tells people, when you're thinking of selling your home, you need to talk to two or three real estate brokers. Let us be one of them. Find out the difference our program can mean in obtaining the best price in the shortest period of time. Remember, you can reach Sheldon or me, Kelly Herb, at 682-1868 or online at memphisrelocate.com. That's 682-1868 or memphisrelocate.com. And don't forget to ask about the Shell Bucks. Hi, Stan Sanzoni asking you to join Chuck Ronsville and me for the Cannon Motors Rebel Yo Hotline show every Monday night from 6 until 7. We talk Ole Miss sports with coaches, players, and you, the fans. So join us Monday night for the Cannon Motors Rebel Yo Hotline show from 6 until 7 right here on Sports 56 WHBQ. Don't miss the Cannon Motors Rebel Yell Hotline Mondays at 6 p.m. on the Voice of the Fans, Sports 56 WHBQ. Join Sports 56 Middays this Friday at Frontier Western Store in Olive Branch and check out the Carhartt Crazy Sale going on now. All adult shirts are buy one and get a second at half price. And all adult jeans and dungarees are $5 off. The newest line of Carhartt gear is here with plenty to choose from in short sleeve plaids, solids, t-shirts, shorts, and more. And don't forget about Frontier's famous boot showroom packed with thousands of work and dress boots. That's this Friday from 11 to 1 at Frontier Western Store, 5880 Goodman Road in Olive Branch. Pizza will be provided by Italia East. Hi guys, Rain Man here. Let me tell you about the best sports handicapping show on the air. No surprise here, guys. It's the All-Star Sports Handicapping Show. And every Saturday morning, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., I'll take your calls and handicap the games on the only live syndicated call-in handicapping show in the country. Nobody does it better. And you can join us every Saturday, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., right here on The Voice of the Fan, Sports 56, WHBQ. Your home for the AutoZone Liberty Bowl. Sports 56 WHBQ Memphis and 87.7 FM. They had 12 hits last night, four by Jacoby Ellsbury. They went two for 16 with runners in scoring position. Left 10 men on base. Detroit 7-3 win. Tied the series at two. Heading to tonight's Game 5 at Comerica. This close series doesn't surprise Detroit manager Jim Leland. In my opinion, I think the two best teams are playing for the American League Championship. That's my personal opinion. This is such a dangerous team. They just never quit. They got a bunch of veterans, and they really grind it out, and they never they never think they're out of it. So, you know, my hat's off to them. They're very tough, and I think we showed they were tough, too. Leland's batting order change last night seemed to work. He moved Austin Jackson down from the leadoff spot to eighth, and Jackson was on base all four times, so he'll stay there tonight against Boston's John Lester. It's Annabelle Sanchez. For the Tigers. NFL tonight starting week seven with five and one Seattle at three and three Arizona. And while some players and coaches have lately been bemoaning the idea of playing on a Thursday night, not Seahawks cornerback Richard Sherman. I think it's fun. I think it's fun, man. I think it's going to be a bunch of fun for a team. You always want the next opportunity on the field. Win, lose, or draw. You always want to just get back right out there. And I think people would rather play than practice. So, shoot, it's a lot of fun for us. Cardinals defensive end Calais Campbell will play tonight just four days after being carted off the field on a stretcher with a bruised spine. Adrian Peterson back with the Vikings today. He missed practice yesterday to go to South Dakota for the funeral of his biological two-year-old son who died last week. Peterson admitted today it was only two months ago that he learned he was the father of the boy who died from injuries sustained in an alleged assault. Well, the Falcons are 1-4 and four, and Tony Gonzalez will retire after the season says he has no interest in Atlanta trading him before the upcoming deadline. This is NBC Sports Radio. John Stash Hour. This is NBC Sports Radio. All sports, all the time, where every day is game day. And now, 
John Stash Hour. So good to have you with us. It's Thursday night. It's the John Stash Hour show off and running on NBC Sports Radio and NBCSportsRadio.com. We're on Twitter at Stash Show NBC or website NBCSportsRadio.com where there's the on-demand function you can get to or you can download the app. And our phone number is 855-323-4NBC. That's 46 46- to two, we got a uh, little this, little of that tonight. We got a baseball game, we got an NFL game, we got a college football game, we got hockey games, we got uh, exhibition basketball games. Uh, yeah, we won't pay too much attention to that game in the NBA. I mean, the Heat do play the Nets tonight. That's kind of a little interesting. We got a little, little uh, interesting thing that LeBron James had to say about the Nets, but we'll get to that. Uh, the hockey, Tim Thomas won a Stanley Cup with the Bruins. Then quit on him, retired, sat a year out. Now he's playing for Florida. He'll face the Bruins tonight. The college football is Miami at North Carolina. Miami, good chance to get to 6-0. and And the NFL is Seattle at Arizona, which is a decent game. The Cardinals are 3-3. Three and three. They're 2-0 and at home. Um, they could get into the – this could make this uh, NFC West a little interesting if they could knock off the Seahawks tonight. Seattle has lost two straight and six of seven in their last seven trips to the desert. Although they did beat them 58 to nothing uh, at home last December, so we know that Seattle is a great team at home, but not always great on the road. And we'll see what happens in the Thursday nighter. And uh, by the way, we were talking during the week about earlier in the week about how players don't like playing on Thursday night. Anquan Bolden, Bruce Arians, the Arizona coach, said this week that players there are a lot of players who can't play after a Sunday game. They're not ready to play. On a Thursday night, if, they, if it was, the game was a Sunday, they could play. But Richard Sherman, who likes to talk, he likes to play, even on Thursdays. I think it's fun. I think it's fun, man. I think it's going to be a bunch of fun for a team. You always want your next opportunity on the field, win, lose, or draw. You always want to just get back right out there. And I think people would rather play than practice, so shoot, it's a lot of fun for us. Larry Fitzgerald knows how good the Seahawks are on defense. They're a great challenge for us. You know, they have a lot of uh, talented players, not only in the secondary, but across the board. I mean, they rush the passer very well. They got an extremely talented young group of linebackers, and obviously their secondary, you know, speaks for itself. Um, so it'll be a great challenge for us. You know, it's a national audience at home. You know, our fans are being full force. I mean, so it's going to be a be a fun game to be at. All right. We'll uh, obviously keep our eye on the football game that starts in about an hour and a half, but there is a really big baseball game that we get going in about an hour, a little over an hour. Uh, in Detroit, there was talk of rain all day in Detroit. A tarp was on the field, but uh, when I saw this, this, the live shot a little while ago, it looks like the rain had stopped, so we're going to get baseball tonight. And it's a huge game. You're talking about a best of seven that's now reduced to a best of three as the Red Sox and Tigers are tied at two, and the Detroit starting pitching continues to be the big story of this series. Even though Doug Fister last night gave up a hit in the first inning and a hit in the second, so it wasn't you know unbelievable pitching right out of the gate as there had been in the first three games. Going into last night, the Red Sox didn't have a single hit over the first four innings of any of the first three games. But Fister was good. And, of course, this was a game that got away from the Red Sox when the Tigers scored five runs in the second inning off Jake Peavy, who has not been a particularly good postseason pitcher in his career. But the Detroit starters, Sanchez in game one, who had the 12 strikeouts in six innings and did not allow a single hit, followed by Scherzer, then Verlander, and last night Fister, 27 innings of pitching, allowing only three runs. Now, I can figure that one out. That's one run every nine innings, which I believe is a one ERA. 42 strikeouts in those 27 innings, and they've allowed only 14 hits. You get that kind of starting pitching, it goes a long way. That's how they got to the the World Series a year ago. Now, the pitching didn't carry over in the World Series. The Giants got to them, but they dominated the Yankees a year ago. Red Sox have done better than the Yankees did, but – Sanchez was really good, and you hear so much about Scherzer, who won 21 games, and everybody knows about Verlander, but Sanchez had the lowest ERA in the American League, not just on the Tigers' staff. And what he did in game one to have 12 strikeouts and six walks hadn't hadn't happened in the postseason. I love how they find these things out. 
Since Walter Johnson for the 1924 Washington Senators in the World Series, he pitched 12 innings in that game, and that was Sanchez against Lester, and Lester was really good but gave up one run on six hits, and Detroit won game one, one to nothing. And then, of course, Boston came back and won game three, one to nothing. Last night we finally had some runs scored as the Tigers won seven to three. Jim Leland shook up his batting order a little bit for one night anyway. It worked. Torrey Hunter batted leadoff. Had a two-run double. Miguel Cabrera batted second, which is a little unusual for a guy with that kind of power, but he had two hits, two RBIs. And the big move was moving Austin Jackson down, which made sense. He's not a leadoff hitter. He strikes out a lot, doesn't get on base enough, and yet last night, batting eight, got on base all four times. Two hits, two walks, scored a couple of runs, so it worked. Now, the Red Sox have made a lineup change for this game tonight, and it's one that you saw coming because this kid, Xander Bogart, see, when, when the Red Sox were looking to make trades at the end of July, and they made the deal to get Jake Peavy, the one guy they said they're not giving up is Xander Bogart. Just turned 21 years old, big kid to, who can play either shortstop or third base, and they called him up, showed you some signs, and he's going to be in the lineup tonight because both Stephen Drew, the shortstop, and Will Millbrook's third baseman have struggled. They're combined two for 23, so... I think it was pretty clear that Bogarts was going to start tonight. He just didn't know where. It's, he's going to play third. Middlebrooks goes to the bench. But it's not like he's the only guy that's – I mean, Big Poppy had the grand slam. That's all he's done. He's 0 for 14 in the rest of the series. Now, the Red Sox got 12 hits last night. Jacoby Ellsbury had four. But they were 2 for 16 in runners in scoring position. They're hitting 186 in the series, 100 points lower than what they had in the regular season. This is a team that – led the major league in runs and batting average. This is a team that beat the Tigers in a game in early September 20 to 4. I don't expect 20 to runs in this in a postseason game, but you know, we'll see. I think if certainly if the Red Sox get this win tonight, I like their chances of going home and closing this thing out. I know they'll face Scherzer in a game six and Verlander looms for a game seven, but I, I just like the Red Sox. If they're three, two and home and knowing what Fenway will be like on Saturday, if they get this win tonight, uh, I, I like their chances. If Detroit wins tonight, I like their chances too, to win one of the next two, considering that the pitchers that they've got going. So I think there you go. I think the winner of this game tonight will win this series. It's a close series. It's, just as Jim Leland expected it to be. In my opinion, I think the two best teams are playing for the American League Championship. That's my personal opinion. This is such a dangerous team. They just never quit. They got a bunch of veterans, and they really grind it out, and they never they never think they're out of it. So, you know, my hat's off to them. They're very tough, and I think we showed that we're tough, too. And after last night's win, Torrey Hunter looked ahead. We can't ask for anything more. We come back against a, a tough lefty in Leicester, and uh, uh, we got Annabelle going, so it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a pitcher's duel. But whoever execute and play fundamentally sound baseball, that's what's going to win those balls games. And the game tomorrow night should be really fun also because Clayton Kershaw is going to go for the Dodgers. And in 33 starts this year, only three times did he allow four more earned runs. A 1.83 ERA, 232 strikeouts, and his postseason ERA in three starts, 0.47. Then you've got this kid, Michael Waka. Made only nine starts in the regular season. We see the minors in early August. And here's what he's done in his last three starts. Eight and two-thirds against Washington in the regular season, one hit. No runs, nine strikeouts. Seven and a third against Pittsburgh, one hit. One run, nine strikeouts. Six and two-thirds against Kershaw in game two of this series, five hits. No runs, eight strikeouts. So that's 22 innings, one run, seven hits, 26 strikeouts. Kid is for real. Cardinals really good at home, 54 and 27 the regular season, 4 and 1 thus far in the postseason. But they're batting 177 in this series. They're not hitting with runners in scoring position after hitting 330, setting a major league record for doing that in the regular season. Um, we'll see. I, I, you got it. It's hard to go against Kershaw. And then you'll have the Cardinals having blown a 3 1 lead last year to the Giants, having to go to a game seven. After having a 3-1 lead in this series, could get very interesting. But I think, I think we got a good chance for one, if not two, Game 7s this weekend. And that's uh, certainly good news for baseball fans. I mean, baseball probably won't be thrilled. If it's in the American League at Game 7, baseball probably won't thrill, be thrilled that they're going to get killed in the ratings because 
Colts Broncos will dominate on Sunday night. I mean, it won't even be close, even though it's a game seven, but still baseball fans. Then you get the clicker. You won't watch both games. All right. Bobby Valentine's coming up. He's got his thoughts on John Lester. He picked, he managed him last year. He's going to watch him pitch tonight. Give his thoughts on the National League series as well. Baseball talk with Bobby V. Coming up next, John Stash Hour Show, NBC Sports Radio and NBCSportsRadio.com. NBC Sports Radio. Hey, it's Mike Leach, head football coach of the Washington State Cougars, and this is NBC Sports Radio. Sports 56 Middays with Greg Gaston and Eli Savoy. 11 to 1 weekdays here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. Check into, check into cash. Hi, this is Lisa with Check Into Cash. We give you more money for your title and guarantee the lowest title loan rate anywhere. Visit CheckIntoCash.com and get a quick estimate on your vehicle. Save more and get more at Check Into Cash. Loyal customers have trusted us for 20 years, and you can too. Restrictions apply. Bring proof of lower rate on similar title loan. Visit CheckIntoCash.com for the store nearest you. Get on down. Check Into Cash. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. The National Association of Police Organization recommends having a working flashlight in your car at all times. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today and pick up the ever-ready 3-LED metal flashlight for $3.99. The shorter days of winter mean driving after dark, so be prepared and play it safe. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. I'm standing on a ledge high in the Blue Ridge Mountains. I swear I can see forever. Green in the spring, dazzling colors come fall. Part of why I'm here is to preserve this. I am one mile of CSX railroad track. There are 21,000 more like me. Together, we help trains move a ton of freight nearly 450 miles on one gallon of fuel. Tomorrow is full of promise. Let's keep it that way. CSX, how tomorrow moves. An official message from Medicare. It's that time of year again. Football season. Medicare open enrollment season, October 15th through December 7th. Time to compare plans, see what's new. But I like what I have. You don't have to change, but it's always good to look. You could find better coverage. Save money for both. Where are you going? The game. The computer. Okay, okay. Visit Medicare.gov or call 1-800-MEDICARE. Now's the time. Listen this Sunday beginning at 11 a.m. for a service of worship and praise from Second Presbyterian Church located at 4055 Poplar Avenue at Goodlett in East Memphis. Join us this Sunday right here on Sports 56 WHBQ. Have you had your insurance checkup lately? You know what I'm talking about as you get older, you acquire more things. And are you protected for whatever life may throw at you? That's why you need to call the doctor. David Ross and State Farm Insurance, 795-9067. David Ross wants you to come in. He'll ask you certain questions. What age are you? Have you got enough health insurance? Do you have a son that may be off to college or a girl who just started driving? Do you have enough insurance for them? These are all things that change as you get a little bit older, but he's got all the products. In fact, 82 to make sure that you keep up with the times. 795-9067 or just go and see him at 8317 Cordova Road. That's Germantown and Cordova Road. If you go in for an insurance checkup, he'll give you a brand new road atlas. He knows the road to feeling good, the road to being prepared. For all your insurance needs and financial services like a good neighbor, David Ross and State Farm Insurance are there. In the fall, mills close out their excess inventory, and now we've got the deals at Lumber Liquidator's second annual fall flooring yard sale. All floors are on sale, like clearance flooring from 19 cents a square foot and laminate from 39 cents. Beautiful bamboo from 139, pre-finished hardwood from just 159, plus special extended financing. If you liked our famous April sale, you'll love our fall flooring yard sale. Sales going on now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com or get to your local store today. Today. Many people with Medicare drug plans don't know they're at the corner of the best plan for me and at least it was last year. At Walgreens, our expert pharmacists can help you find the right plan with our free comparison report. Check to see if you could save up to 75% on prescription copays. Walgreens, at the corner of Happy 
and healthy. Based on Tier 1 copay for select plans featuring Walgreens as a preferred pharmacy. Frank Rosani's has a new menu. Oh, it's still the same old Frank's. It's still in the Embassy Suites Hotel, and they still have a lot of the old same dishes. In fact, on the menu where the old standbys are, it's called 552 South Main. That goes back to all the years when Mr. Willie and Miss Mary, well, when they had their wonderful place. Uh, by the way, they have Mr. Willie's Chili Mac. That's a new dish. If you like spicy ground beef on a macaroni sort of noodle, ooh, Will you love that? There's lots of new things. There's a burger. There's hummus. There's house flatbread. Ooh, there is a Dutch Valley veal chop. This is an old-fashioned veal chop, which is finished with truffle oil, which is absolutely magnificent. And they've got a Mediterranean wedge. You put a little of the Frank's Italian dressing on that. It is terrific. Frank Rosani's Restaurant. All kinds of new menu items. Still the old great stuff. Frank's going strong in the Embassy Suites Hotel. Moisture and the right temperature. Ah, the perfect invitation for me and my moldy friends to hold a party in your home. We love ruining your carpet, destroying your drywall, damaging the very structure of your house. We may even affect your health. Don't let mold hold a party in your home. For facts on prevention and treatment, visit www.stopmold.org. AM560, WHBQ, legendary in Memphis and a legend in sports radio. Sports 56, the voice of the fan. NBC Sports Radio. 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 We're going to ground ball up the middle and into center field past the diving Pedroia. Second RBI for Miguel Cabrera makes it a 7 nothing lead in the fourth. In the fourth. He makes the catch and the series is all even at two games apiece. The American League Championship Series. Follow us 24-7 as we cover every pitch. On NBC Sports Radio and NBCSportsRadio.com. John Stash Hour Show, NBC Sports Radio. Let's bring in Bobby Valentine to talk some baseball because we got a game tonight coming up in Detroit, a big one, Game 5 in the American League Championship Series with the Red Sox and Tigers tied at 2. So, Bobby, John Lester will be on the mound. He was on the mound for you last year, so you know him well. Uh, as you watch this game tonight, what will he be doing if for you to know that he's kind of on his game? What, what, is, what does he do especially well? Well, you know, when, when he throws his fastball on the outside corner and he, he's getting it called by the umpire, he's on his game. He then uh, goes to that cutter that goes from the outside uh, corner down and into right-handers. And this year he's also been throwing a slow curve for, for credit. So um, I, I think it all revolves around his ability to throw about 94 miles an hour on the outside part of the plate, moving away from right-handers, and then he's locked in. I know there's a lot of people who think his stuff is really, you know, as good as pretty much anyone in baseball. Would you agree? Yes. As a as a left-hander, um, you know, throws in the mid-90s and is able to do that at 6'4 the entire time. Um, he's, he's one of those guys that you want on the mound. Uh, John Farrell's made a lineup change for tonight. Uh, you bring in a kid who was in the minor leagues for most of the year. He just turned 21 years old. It, Xander Bogertz will play third. Will Middlebrooks, who you had last year, has been struggling. He goes to the bench. Do, would you be in that position a little bit skittish of, of putting you know such a young kid um, into a into a game like this tonight? Um, actually, no, you know, he played in that big stage with the WBC. He's a real calm kid. Um, I think he's a real talented kid too. I, I feel bad for, uh, Will Middlebrooks, to say the truth. He's overly talented and, uh, has been underdeveloped. Uh, you know, he spent time in the minor leagues. He got the big hits, uh, that got him through that first round. And for some reason, he's always the odd man out getting pinched hit for and now being benched. I, I think he's much better than just a platoon player, but Bogarts is pretty pretty good, too. You know, as I watch all these games, and obviously the games have been, for the most part, low scoring. We got some runs finally scored in the in the two games yesterday and last night, but, you know, we've had a 
three one nothing games, and it just seems so many strikeouts, Bobby. I I don't know what it is. Um, it seems like hitters don't have the discipline. They're swinging at bad pitches. They're letting good pitches go go for call strikes. What what's your take on the number of strikeouts now? Well, it seems the the Red Sox strikeout numbers are, are have been so wild because. Uh, they have a game plan of making the starting pitchers throw a lot of pitches to get into the bullpen of the Tigers. And when you make them throw a lot of pitches, that's a good thing. But the bad thing is that often you're hitting with two strikes. And if you hit against this Tiger staff with two strikes, there's a good chance that they have something for you that you're going to swing and miss at. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it in, in both series. And we've seen the old cliche come true, which is that good pitching beats good hitting. It's it's certainly been the case of these league championship series. Why do you think that is? Well, I think, uh, you know, there's the hitters are, are off their rhythm a little because they're playing different times than they're normally playing, and they're also playing, uh, you know, in those shadows. Uh, the pitcher just has to go out there and throw the ball off the hill 60 feet, 6 inches, regardless of the time of day and regardless of uh, uh, the sun's, uh, you know, trajectory on the ballpark. So I think the, the Pitcher has the advantage, and these guys are also throwing 95, 97 miles an hour. That's tough to hit. <laughs> no question. I mean, you're seeing some of the best pitching, and it's it's come true. What's your take on what's been going on in the NLCS? I know you've you've liked the Dodgers. You 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 know, look, they were so impressive for there, and they look, they they could very well still win this series. They got Kershaw going tomorrow night. What's as you've been watching the National League series? What what kind of observations have you had? Well, I've observed that, uh, you know, Hanlon Ramirez is really the key to that team. Um, you know, as soon as he uh, got nicked up and came out of the game, it seemed like their, the wind got out of their sails offensively. Uh, last night, Gonzalez obviously got the two big home runs, which are so needed from him to, um, you know, to be the big hitter, not just the singles hitter, but to, you know, be the guy that's driving the ball. And he's capable of doing that. Maybe, um, you know, Hanley will... Um, get a day off and be able to come back stronger, but he really is the straw that stirs that drink. The Cardinals having blown a 3-1 lead last year, okay, so now they lose game five. If they were, if they are go out and lose game six tomorrow, now they're suddenly in a, in a winner-take-all game seven, knowing that this could be happening for the second year in a row. How, how much is that going to weigh on their mind? Oh, I think if there's somebody on the team who really felt responsible for them not winning last year, it might weigh on their minds. But otherwise, uh, I think it's just a lot of, uh, you know, us guys talking about something that uh, doesn't affect the competition when they go out on the field. You're sticking with your Red Sox-Dodgers prediction I'm for the World Series? I'm a little shaky on the Dodgers, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I don't think they can come back and win these two games in St. Louis. Interesting. Hey, Bobby, great talking to you. Talk to you soon. Thanks, John. Bobby Valentine with us on NBC Sports Radio. And here's here's an interesting stat regarding one player who is a terrific postseason player, and that's Carlos Beltran. 16 career postseason home runs. His home run ratio per at-bat right there with Babe Ruth for the best all-time in the postseason. He's never been to a World Series. He's had seven games in his career where if he had won, he'd be in the World Series. He's lost all seven. There was the game yesterday. There were the three last year against the Giants. I know with the Mets he had one. Um, boy, that's tough. Now he's got two more chances. They're at home. You know, they've been great at home. So I think the my guess is the Dodgers win game six, but the Cardinals with Adam Wainwright pull out of game seven. But that stat is brought to you by IBM, working to help mid-sized businesses become the engines of a smarter planet. Learn more at IBM.com slash engines. Hey, one baseball story that – is interesting because it involves one of the all-time great players. It's not a surprise, and that is that Nolan Ryan leaves his job as CEO of the Texas Rangers. They call it a retirement. Um, I'm extremely proud of what we've achieved on the field and, on, and as far as upgrading the ballpark and attendance, and it's true. I mean, Texas Rangers were nothing. I mean, they were a franchise. They were, they were the Cleveland Browns or the Detroit Lions or the, I don't know, pick a – Pick an NBA team, the Clippers, until the recently. I mean, they, they had done nothing. They had never won a playoff series. I think they had won one playoff game. And then all of a sudden, back-to-back -back pennants. Now, they should have won the World Series a couple of years ago. They were one strike away a couple of times. Uh, but with Nolan Ryan in charge of the organization for six years, they had the fifth-highest winning percentage. 
He leaves because he obviously was involved in a power struggle with the general manager, John Daniels. And Nolan is an old school guy, and Daniels is one of these younger guys, these so-called analytical guys, and they clearly had a clash on personnel. There was apparently uh, a, a disagreement on the coaching staff, and there was a report that after they lost that game just to try and get into the wild card game when they lost to Tampa Bay, that Nolan Ryan and John Daniels nearly came to blows and that Ron Washington, the manager, had to break it up. Well, that's a pretty good indication that one of them was going to be gone. Turns out it's going to be Nolan Ryan. Donovan McNabb coming up next. It's NBC Sports Radio. You're listening to NBC Sports Radio on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. This is your NBC Sports Radio update. I'm John Stash. The Red Sox have struggled to score in the American League Championship Series, which is now tied at two and has Game 5 coming up tonight in Detroit. The same pitchers as we had in Game 1, John Lester for Boston and Annabelle Sanchez for the Tigers. They off in the NLCS Game 6 tomorrow night in St. Louis with the Dodgers able to start their ace, Clayton Kershaw, opposite Cardinals rookie Michael Walker, who's been brilliant in his last three starts. College basketball defending national champ Louisville has suspended starting forward Chase Bahannon indefinitely for a violation of school policy. Coach Rick Pitino said when Bahannon's not on the court, he can't follow rule. And when the Texans try to snap their four-game losing streak Sunday at 6-0 Kansas City, used to be quarterbacked by Case Keenum, goes from third string in the practice squad to making his NFL debut. This is NBC Sports Radio. At Advance Auto Parts, saving big and winning big are your advance advantage. Right now, five quarts of Castor GGX conventional oil and a filter are just $21.99. You can put that oil in your Ford Mustang GT. Don't have one? Well, you should. When you enter to win a Mustang GT from Castor, valued at $40,000. Plus, save on Castor oil. Only at Advance Auto Parts. No purchase necessary to enter. See store for details. Visit CastorAdvanceSweeps.com for more info. Hey, what's happening? I'm Right Brand Bacon, the bigger, better bacon. When you bite into Right Brand Bacon, it's like DJ Bacon dropping a beat in a packed bacon disco in your mouth. I'm so meaty and delicious, I'm like meat candy. When you fry me up, I smell so good, it draws a crowd like free money. I'm so tender. Right Brand Bacon, bigger, better bacon. Find out more at biggerbetterbacon.com. For more info. At Smith Burklair Insurance, we do not work for any one insurance company. Smith Burklair is an independent agent, which means that we can use our independence to customize policies from several different companies. We work for you. At Smith Burklair Insurance, we understand this is a relationship business, and it's our outstanding service that helps build those relationships. Visit smithburklair.com or call 901-753-4323. Smith Burklair Insurance. Proud partners of the insurers of Tennessee. Hi, folks. Rob Walker, Infinity of Memphis, with something to ponder. There's an old saying that goes, you can't have your cake and eat it too. How does that relate to Infinity of Memphis? Well, Infinity vehicles have always been comfortable and fun to drive. Our award-winning V6 engine is the epitome of efficiency and produces an excess of 300 horsepower without turbochargers. So what if that very efficient V6 engine was partnered with a 50-kilowatt electric motor and cutting-edge lithium-ion batteries that are powerful enough to maintain cruising speed in all electric mode, resulting in a total output of 360 horsepower, whose 0 to 60 time would make many a sports car blush? There's your cake. And an EPA highway rating of 34 miles per gallon is some pretty nice frosting. Infinity Q50 Hybrid with Infinity's exclusive direct response hybrid system. Proof that you can have your cake and eat it too. Infinity of Memphis, Germantown Road, one mile north of I-40. Infinityofmemphis.com. In the fall, mills close out their excess inventory, and now we've got the deals at Lumber Liquidator's second annual fall flooring yard sale. All floors are on sale, like clearance flooring from 19 cents a square foot and laminate from 39 cents. Beautiful bamboo from 139. Pre-finished hardwood from just 159. Plus special extended financing. If you liked our famous April sale, you'll love our fall flooring yard sale. Sales going on now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com or get to your local store today. Many people with Medicare drug plans don't know they're at the corner of the best plan for me. And, at least it was last year, 
At Walgreens, our expert pharmacists can help you find the right plan with our free comparison report. Check to see if you could save up to 75% on prescription copays. Walgreens, at the corner of Happy and Healthy. Based on Tier 1 copay for select plans featuring Walgreens as a preferred pharmacy. I'm not comfortable with this. I think Jason should go to college now. I don't want him putting this off. He's already talked to a recruiter. Could you just talk some sense into him? Yeah, I understand, but I think if you just listen to him, you'll see. His decision makes a whole lot of sense. He wants to go to college right now, but he also wants to serve. That's why he's been talking to a National Guard recruiter. The National Guard gives young men and women the unique opportunity to serve their country and communities part-time while they attend college. You know, we've also got to figure out how we're going to pay for all this. The way things are these days, tuition, room and board, they're through the roof. And with our finances... No, 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 honey, I don't worry, don't, don't worry. He's worked that out with the Guard recruiter, too. Plus, with the National Guard scholarship and other financial benefits, college students can graduate debt-free. Get to know what serving in the National Guard can do for your son or daughter. Visit NationalGuard.com. Sponsored by the Tennessee National Guard. Aired by the Tennessee Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today in America, one in six children lives in poverty. One in eight Americans can't afford a decent place to live. One in ten families battles hunger and hardship. Today in America, 37 million people live in poverty. Your neighbors and mine are working and still can't make ends meet. They're choosing between food, medicine, and a roof over their heads. But the picture can change. In one neighborhood after another, people are working together to lift themselves and each other out of poverty for good. In the inner city, they're teaching young people the job skills they need to earn a living wage. Farmers are starting cooperatives to earn better prices and save their farms. Community volunteers walk kids to school to protect them from violence. All across America, people are working together to change the picture of poverty to one of hope. There are easy ways you can help. Find out more at PovertyUSA.org. A message from the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. 952, I get the word that there's an escape in progress. 953, I spot the subject on the highway. What's the problem, officer? I haven't done anything. It's your truckload, sir. It's escaping. And that's against the law in Tennessee. <laughs> escaping? Yes, sir. And escaping loads make dirty roads. This is a warning. Tarp it, tie it, bag it, strap it. Keep your truckload where it belongs and keep Tennessee beautiful. This is the John Stash Hour Show. I'm sensing something good. Oh, it's good. How good? Really good. On NBC Sports Radio and NBCSportsRadio.com, where every day is game day. John Stash Hour Show on NBC Sports Radio. Let's bring in Donovan McNabb. You hear him from 3 to 7 Eastern each day with Mark Malone under center, and you hear him Thursday nights on our show to break down the NFL. On his show, they talk about everything. But on, uh, we'll <laughs> stick with the NFL. Um... What was your when you saw those first Jim Ursay quotes, um, and he has tried to backtrack and and uh, you know explain himself a little bit. But did you think that that was kind of a knock on Peyton Manning when he talked about other teams winning more championships than the Colts championships than the Colts did during his time in Indy? Absolutely not. If you read out read that whole article, ninety five percent of that article was praising Peyton for the things that he was able to do, not only on the field, but just off the field and for, you know, for Indianapolis in general, you know, and who do you know has, and when he leave a club, they come back to play him, that they honor him by giving a, like a 20 minute montage of the man that's there to beat your team. He's showing that he truly appreciate him. Now we all know Jim Irsay, if you hold the microphone in front of him for a long period of time, he's bound to tell you something that he'll probably regret later. But, you know, I think everything that he said pretty much was true. I mean, who doesn't want to win multiple championships, especially when you've won one? You always get greedy and want to win another one, then another one. And he's competing against the New England Patriots. You know, he understands that, hey, we couldn't beat him at one point, then we started to beat him, but they still have multiple championships. And it wasn't a knock on Peyton. It was more, to me, of a, a, a knock on Bill Polian and his brother 
for the draft picks that they, they drafted to build around Peyton and not focus so much on the defensive end because he brought that up later. Tomorrow, I wish we would have had a better defense and, and uh, more better special teams to help Peyton. And, and to me, it, it's, it, it seems like every time we bring up a Manning name, there's always a bar. You know, it's like, oh, you can't say that. You, you know, uh, well, well, you can't blame him. It's just like Eli. Eli has the little brother syndrome. You know, it's like, hey, here's Peyton, and he's dominating the NFL. And then there's Eli, who has thrown 15 interceptions, and his team hasn't won a game yet. But it's Tom Coughlin should be fired. Why can't Eli be on the hot seat? Why is it that, you know, when, when things go wrong in, in Indianapolis of losing seven times in the, in the first game after going 14-2 and two or 13-3 and three or 15-1, and one, when you lose to the San Diego Chargers or you, you lose to, you know, whoever it may be, you know, any other quarterbacks get criticized, but the fact that they won one Super Bowl and Eli won two, uh, we give them leeway. Uh, interesting take. Uh, let me ask you about what it might be like for Peyton in this game Sunday night. Brett Favre said, you know, it was as nervous as he's ever been when he went back to Lambeau Field um, with the Minnesota Vikings. What, what do you think it's going to be like? He's going to stand on the sidelines, as you talk about, watch this video tribute, and then he's going to go out and try and, and play the game. I, I personally think, and, and the way that it's set up, to me, I, yeah, I mean, first of all, when I came back to Philadelphia, I was nervous as well. You know, came out of the tunnel, and first of all, I didn't know if I was going to get booed or cheered, and nor did I really pay much attention. But, you know, it was an overall standing ovation, and, and I appreciated that and showed my thanks, and I loosened up as the game went on. Uh, we won. I didn't play as well as I wanted to. You know, you want to go out there and dominate, but it's all about the win. Uh, so I think Peyton is going to go in to try to obviously dominate uh, in this particular game and show why they should. he should still be there. Secondly, I don't know if Peyton's going to be out there for all 20 minutes of that whole montage. Would you want to stand out there with your team and watch all this and like they're praising you? And thirdly, it's not about Peyton. People don't talk about it that Edron James is going to be there, Marvin Harrison's going to be there to be honored. So I think what to me what he's showing is that it wasn't just all about Peyton. It was the help that we brought in here for Peyton that gave us that opportunity to win so many games over the years Peyton was here. The Broncos, Colts, I mean, even if without the Peyton factor, it's really the best game of the weekend. It's the only game uh, of the week where both teams are over 500. Let You're not talking about watching the about, Philadelphia Eagles and, and, well, and the Dallas Cowboys? There is that game. Uh, <laughs> we, we can we can get to that. That is for first place in the division. But I want to ask you, speaking of the Eagles, about the guy who was your coach in Philadelphia, and then Andy Reid, I mean, he's got to have coach of the year locked up. Now, yeah. it's been the defense that has really been the difference in Kansas City, but – you know, what is – give us a sense. You played for him for so long. Um, you know, head coaches so often have to kind of oversee everything, right. almost like the CEO. Um, what are Andy Reid's strengths that seem to make him successful in that way? Players coach and trust. And I think for those guys who are there, there wasn't a trust value there with Todd Haley. There wasn't a trust value with Romeo Cornell after a while. You know, it seems like – it's like quarterbacks. You love the starter for a while, but then you truly love the backup until he gets in there. And that's what happened to Romeo Cornell. Romeo Cornell had his defense going. They were aggressive. They were creating turnovers offensively. It was anemic, you know, and it was one that, you know, defensive players, hey, you know, Romeo should be the head coach. And as soon as Romeo got in there for the first four games, it seemed like after four games, it was like, oh, boy, we're the same old Kansas City Chiefs. And, and what Andy has brought in, he's brought, he's brought life into that team, confidence. He's brought, brought a, a sense of urgency where these guys look around and they trust the guy next to him, and they're trying to play for that man next to him. And that's what Andy brings to that team. He brought it to Philadelphia where it felt like the nucleus of the team were the guys standing in front talking to the team. And not Andy. Andy, hey, Andy will tell you, hey, you guys take care of it. And that's what we did. And I think that's what's going on in Kansas City. The Tom Bailey's, the Barrys, the, the uh, Derek Johnson. You know, the Justin Houston. Who knew about Justin Houston until this season? And look how he's playing. Lights out. Don McNabb is with us here, NBC Sports Radio. All right, you mentioned it before. I mean, look, Cowboys, Eagles, that is for first place. Somebody's got to win that division. Yeah, hey. Um, what, what are your impressions of Nick Foles? He played some last year. You know, the whole team didn't do well, whether it was under Vic or Foles. But uh, three touchdowns last week. For what it's worth, Tampa Bay actually is pretty good defense. Right. Um. And, you know, this offense, you know, is pretty, it seems well suited for maybe any quarterback coming in. Do you think that if he continues to win, if he gets a big win like this one on Sunday, that they might have a little bit of a quarterback controversy when Michael Vick is healthy to go? It's always a quarterback controversy in Philadelphia. I tell you, if you throw one, 
one completion in there as a backup, they love you. You know, he's accurate. <laughs> ah, they run the offense better. You know, one thing I will say about Nick Foles, he, he steps in the pocket and he's truly confident. And you can tell that it's not a, a rookie anymore. He's maturing. You can tell the experience of playing last year is helping him out in so many ways. And for a young quarterback, what a better answer than to look back in the backfield and see a guy like Sean McCoy to finish a game with almost 200 yards of total offense, just handing the ball off to him or running a screen pattern or, or, or checking down. And then, you know, when they decide to, to empty it out and have no safeties in the middle of the field, and you can throw it up for Deshaun Jackson to run past the corner. So I, I think there is a quarterback controversy. I think that Nick Foles at least goes out and plays pretty well. I don't know if he plays great, uh, but pr- well enough where he may throw one interception, but I think completion percentage would be somewhere over 60, 62. And, you know, he may have about 250 yards and they, they may win. And if they do win, it may be one of those that's th- by three or seven, you know, because it might be a Tony Romo interception again. That will end the game the right way. <laughs> okay. Uh, and let, let me leave you with a Josh Freeman question. Do you think this is a good fit where he could do well for this uh, with a, handing off a lot to Adrian Peterson and taking over in Minnesota and debuting Monday night against the Giants who have been, you know, dreadful on, on defense yeah. all year? You know, what? Well, one thing I will say, though, you know, I, I think this is a great move. And I said, you know, I've been saying that I give him some time to get his feet up under him, get comfortable in that off and see how the game plan goes week to week. But I think this is a great move because if this is the decision that you're going to make by moving forward, that means from the, this, the rest of the season and next year, then he needs to get that chemistry with the guys. And what you'll see, I guarantee, you'll see obviously the run game with, with uh, Adrian Peterson, but you're going to see more downfield throwing. You're going to see Cordell Patterson begin to stretch it out. You're going to see Kyle Rudolph work in the middle of the field and, and Jennings start to work the intermediate part of the field where it would be like, whoa, where, where was this, you know, while Christian Ponder was playing? You've seen a little bit against Pittsburgh with Matt Castle, but now you have more of a downfield threat with a guy with a strong arm. Donovan, great talking to you as always. We'll do it again next week. Thanks a lot, John. Donovan McNabb, he's our pro. And uh, remember about the O'Reilly Ask the Pro inbox. Get a question to any of our pros at Ask the Pros at NBCSportsRadio.com. Interesting takes from Donovan. He, I'll say this about our man Donovan. He does not mince words. He's very opinionated. I agree with some of the things he said about the Mannings. Disagree with some others. Got some take on that. And another team going to another quarterback. And this time it's a guy who's never taken a snap in an NFL game. That's next. John Stash Hour Show. NBC Sports Radio and NBCSportsRadio.com. NBC Sports Radio. Hi, everybody. This is Tommy Lasorda of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Watch your sports on NBC. And you're listening to NBC Sports Radio. And you're listening to NBC Sports Program. Beautiful. Sports 56 Middays with Greg Gaston and Eli Savoy. 11 to 1 weekdays here on Sports 56 and 87.7 FM. The first time you saw a laser level, you were probably a little suspect. Now you wonder how you did without it. At a Red Wing shoe store, we use the latest tools to give you the best fit, like a digital measuring device that not only scans the length and width of your feet, but even gauges pressure points and arch height. And Red Wing offers a 30-day comfort guarantee. It's all part of making sure your boots do their job so you can do yours. Red Wing Shoes. Work is our work. Check in to check into cash. Hi, this is Lisa with Check Into Cash. Loyal customers have trusted us for 20 years. Get the cash you need now with our payday advance, even without a checkbook. If you need money now before your next payday, come and see us. It's quick, easy, and confidential. Visit checkintocash.com for the store nearest you. Restrictions apply. Borrowers often use payday loans over a period of months, which can be expensive. Get on down. Check into cash. Ka-ching. Plumbers, Waterworks, and HVAC pros, this is Coach Terry Bradshaw. Are you looking for a team that gets you the supplies you need? Yeah. Then you want Ferguson. You can order your materials online. Then pick them up at your branch or have them delivered. Yeah. And with Ferguson Pro Plus, your online orders now earn points you can use to get cool stuff. Electronics, sports gear, even trips. Are you ready? Yeah. Then check out Pro Plus at Ferguson.com. For a limited time, score double points on all the I products. Check out Ferguson.com slash Pro Plus. Oh, oh, oh. 
O'Reilly. Increase your engine's life by changing the oil every 3,000 miles. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today and pick up five quarts of O'Reilly conventional motor oil for $13.95. Keep your engine clean and lubricated with O'Reilly conventional motor oil. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Unwanted wildlife in MIPA's homes and businesses can be a nuisance year-round. That's why Apex Wildlife Control, the Mid-South's leader in humane animal removal, is offering 10% off all services if you mention you heard this ad on Sports 56 Radio. Snakes, rodents, birds, even those seemingly cute raccoons impose serious threats to you, your children, your pets, and your property. Apex is here 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, to clear out all unwelcome wildlife, repair the damage, and secure your space so it never gets invaded again. And now enjoy 10% off the cost of making your property safe again by mentioning you heard it on Sports 56. Just call Apex Wildlife Control at 598-8555 and let our professionals do the work. That's 598-8555 and enjoy 10% off. For more details, go online to apexwildlifecontrol.com. Instead of buying a new car, keep your current car in top shape with service from Steve's Tire and Auto. Check engine light on. Let Steve check it. Failed emissions test. Let Steve fix it. All techs are certified and trained on all of their state-of-the-art equipment. Steve's Tire and Auto repairs engines, transmissions, AC, tires, and more on import and domestic cars. And you won't have to miss work with a free shuttle service. All work is backed by a one-year nationwide warranty. Steve's Tire and Auto in Midtown and East Memphis. Call 725-1819 or 680-1998. Online at stevestireandauto.com. We're more than just printing. With XMC, the possibilities are endless. Let XMC, your Xerox authorized sales agent, help take your business to the next level. Whether you need electronic document management to update your office, a projector system for your boardroom, a high-tech flat panel welcome center in your lobby, or an upgrade to your existing office equipment, visit XMCINC.com and let XMC and Xerox handle your product installation from start to finish, as well as providing all technical support. With nine territories in the southeast, XMC has you covered. Call 737-8910. That's 737-8910. Oh, honey, I was so worried. Yeah, I know. It's okay. The boat's a little beat up, but we're okay, oh. thanks to the Coast Guard. I am the port in the storm. The slick is contained. Roger that. I am the line in the sand. Oh. I got you. Hang on. Okay, take us up. I am the rescuer in the dark. Looks like we've got about 80 kilos here, Captain. That's 80 kilos off the streets. I am the enforcer of the seas. I'm in container 38. Everything is secure. Good work, Garcia. I'm the defender of the homeland. In the United States Coast Guard, you are the first line of defense against threats to our American way of life. To become one of us, call toll-free 1-877-NOW-USCG or visit GoCoastGuard.com. We are the shield of freedom. We are the United States Coast Guard. The United States Coast Guard and Coast Guard Reserve, the shield of freedom. Sponsored by the U.S. Coast Guard in cooperation with the Tennessee Association of Broadcasters and this station. Melting polar ice was a dirty look. Shrinking glaciers, a nudge. Dying forests, they were a tap on the shoulder. We got a finger in our chest from the rising sea level. And a sharp poke in the ribs from recent wildfires in Alaska. Then dying coral reefs and eroding coastlines pushed us. Hard. The drowned polar bears, that was a shove. Melting permafrost, that was a slap. Rising ocean temperatures and extreme weather, an uppercut. Then record-breaking heat waves hit us right where it hurts. Has it occurred to anyone that maybe the Earth is trying to get our attention? We can still reduce greenhouse gas pollution before it's too late. To find out how, Go to fightglobalwarming.com. Brought to you by Environmental Defense, the Robertson Foundation, and the Ad Council. Got a question? We've got the answer. 
All you have to do is email us at askthepros at NBCSportsRadio.com and your question will go right into the O'Reilly Auto Parts Ask the Pros inbox. From there, the ball's in our court and we'll answer your questions on the air. You can also call us at 855-323-4NBC. We are NBC Sports Radio, where every day is game day. I'm John Stash, Shower at NBC Sports Radio, and we're built by the Home Depot. Let's be prepared. This month, Fire Safety Month at the Home Depot, you'll have peace of mind. We brands you trust, like Kitty Warrior Free Smoke and Carbon Monoxide Alarms. With each smoke alarm designed for a specific room and the longest lasting CO alarm on the market, visit Home Depot.com slash fire safety for details. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Hey, coming up in about 10 minutes, uh, Lee Steinberg who is an interesting guy. This was at one time the far and away most successful agent in the NFL. At one point he had like 21 starting quarterbacks that he represented. Uh, Has hit hard times, alcohol problems, bankruptcy. That's not what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about his reaction to the concussion controversy in the NFL. He was in that documentary on PBS last week. It's got an amazing story about uh, a concussion that Troy Aikman suffered in the NFC Championship game. He'll tell you about it uh, when we talk to him in about 10 minutes. Donovan, as always, opinionated, and I agree with a lot of what he said if you heard the interview we just had with him. Um, First of all, I absolutely agree that it's incredible that Eli Manning has not received, really, from what I can ascertain, any criticism for the Giants off to their worst start since 1976. Now, is he solely responsible? Of course not. Bad offensive line. No running game, all that. But Eli has, you know, 64 passing rating. He's got 15 interceptions in six games. And I understand when you win two Super Bowls, it's still, it should not make you immune to criticism. He should absolutely be getting more. I'm surprised he hasn't gotten booed. And we'll see what happens in the Monday night game. They're a home game with Minnesota, who's a bad team also. I would, I mean... I'm I'm never advocating booing, but it would shock me if Eli has another bad game and he doesn't start hearing some boos because he's been terrible. Now, as for Peyton, um, I first of all I I agree with him. I don't think having thought about this a little bit, and we'll talk to Mike Chappelle who knows more about this than I do. He covers the Colts for the Indy Star. We'll talk to him at nine Eastern. I don't think that Jim Irsay, um really was trying to denigrate. Peyton Manning with his comments. Overall, they were very positive. He's just a guy who babbles a lot. And, you know, we all know those those guys. They just keep talking and talking and talking. And eventually, they're going to say some things they shouldn't say, and they're going to be at least perceived differently than maybe he wanted them to come out. This would have been a non-story if John Fox hadn't gone on serious radio and said what he did about calling it a cheap shot. And then, and then everything built up after that. So... Here's the thing, though, about Peyton and his playoff record. I understand also that, you know, the his playoff record does not match what he's done in the regular season. You're talking about a four-time MVP. Yeah, you would think he'd have more than one Super Bowl. But Donovan should know, as well as anyone, it's – you don't win these things by yourself. Um you look at the postseason games that the, he lost with Indianapolis, and if you look at the game he lost last year with Denver, I mean, he put up five touchdowns. Can't win these games by him yourself. Raheem Moore last year, I mean, tackle the guy, and then he, he makes a tackle, Broncos win that game. Maybe they win the Super Bowl. My, uh, what's his name? Uh, Vanderjat, the kicker, missed like a 40-yard kick. He makes that. Maybe the Colts win the Super Bowl that year. Um I mean, they had some games where they lost to teams that were better than them, including New England a couple times. So it's really not fair to – you know, Peyton is is absolutely one of, if not the best quarterbacks that we have ever seen. I know the playoff record is not as good as you'd expect for the guy that talented, but you can't put it on. And by the way, he has received a lot of criticism for his playoff record. It's not like he's been immune to it. So – I kind of disagree with Donovan saying that, oh, because if you're the Manny name, you never get criticized. He has. He has been criticized. Not to the degree that Matt Schaub has been criticized in Houston. And so we have a new quarterback for the Texans, and you saw this coming because T.J. Yates was the backup. He came in for Schaub last week, and he was terrible. He threw a pick six, just like Schaub had done the previous four games. He had two interceptions. And so Case Keenum, 
will start for the Texans Sunday as they try to snap this four-game losing streak, and it's not as if he's playing an easy game. Kansas City is 6-0 and and is allowing under 11 points per game with a incredibly tough defense. But here's Case Keenum, who threw 155 touchdown passes while at the University of Houston, more than any player in the history of college football. He had three seasons where he threw for 44 or more. He doesn't get drafted because of his size. If he had, if he was a couple inches taller, I'm sure he would have been drafted. He goes to his, the team in the city where he played college, and he was on the practice squad all of last season, all of this year. Not only has he never taken a snap in a regular season game, he's never even been in uniform on an NFL Sunday. And now he's going to start Sunday in Kansas City. It just goes to what I'm always saying. Teams are desperate to try and find a quarterback. Gary Kubiak says, we're struggling. We're looking for a spark. Obviously, Schaub is banged up. Yates wasn't that good last week. Wade Phillips, the defensive coordinator in Houston, but formerly the head coach in Dallas, says Keenan reminds him a little bit of Tony Romo's story. Hopefully it ends out that way. He's got some moxie, and that's what Romo has. Look, I think I, I understand why they're doing it. First of all, Schaub's hurt, and I think Schaub is is struggling mentally also with all this criticism and everything going on there. And Yates is not is not the answer. But it's pretty amazing that a guy who has never even suited up for an NFL game is now going to be a starting quarterback in a game. Look, Texans are not out of it in the AFC, but they got to win this game on Sunday. And, boy, not going to be easy. Not against the Chiefs and not with Case Keenum. All right, some interesting thoughts from Lee Steinberg, the famed NFL agent, coming up. And we'll keep you updated on the baseball that will start shortly in the NFL as well. It's NBC Sports Radio. Listen up, guys. Rain Man here. Football is underway, and it's time to decide what you're going to do this season. Are you going to try to pick them on your own? Probably not a good idea. You can't handicap the games as well as I can because you can't spend 60 or more hours a week working on them. Are you going to be a victim again this year, falling for another scam decapper who claims outrageous win rates from inside information or fixed games? Definitely a bad idea because they'll be glad to cheat you again this year. Give us a try this year. This is my 36th year in football, and I can promise you this. Over the course of the season, nobody handicaps the games better than we do at All-Star Sports. You can get the entire season, college and pro, through the Super Bowl, every play we make, for $1,500. Just call the office at 800-933-5308 or my cell phone at 901-461-4600 to find out what it's like to deal with an honest court service. This is your NBC Sports Radio update. Heating up again. I'm John Stashower, John Lester, and Annabelle Sanchez, the starting pitchers for Game 1 of the American League Championship Series last Saturday in Boston. Lester pitched well. Sanchez was better. Though he walked six in six innings, he struck out 12, did not allow a single hit. Detroit won one nothing. Now the series is tied at two, and it's the same two pitchers coming up tonight at Comerica for a Game 5 that Torrey Hunter anxiously awaits. We can't ask for anything more. We've come back, this is a tough lefty in Leicester, and uh, uh, we got Annabel going, so it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a pitcher's duel, but whoever execute and play fundamentally sound baseball, that's what's going to win those balls. Games. Hunter had a two-run double, and the Tigers five runs second in last night. The Tigers dropped Austin Jackson in the batting order, and he ended up getting on base four times. Red Sox have been struggling third baseman Will Middlebrooks and our starting rookie Xander Bogart. The winner tonight can win the pennant on Saturday. Seattle Seahawks tonight can be the first NFC team to win six games. They visit Arizona, where they've lost two straight and six of seven. Well, they beat the Cardinals at home 58 to nothing last December. Arizona's Larry Fitzgerald knows the Seahawks, known for their defense.
they're a great challenge for us. You know, they have a lot of uh, talented players, not only in the secondary, but across the board. I mean, they rush the passer very well. They got an extremely talented young group of linebackers, and obviously their secondary, you know, speaks for itself. Um, so it'll be a great challenge for us. You know, it's a national audience at home. You know, our fans are being full force. I mean, so it's going to be a fun game to be at. Meanwhile, Rob Gronkowski's agent says his client is yet to be cleared medically to play for New England. And Drew Rosenhaus says he, Gronkowski, the doctors, and Patriots coach Bill Belichick are all on the same page. Speaking of tight ends, the Falcons are one and four, and Tony Gonzalez says this season will be his last, but he says he has no interest in Atlanta trading him before the deadline. This is NBC Sports Radio. John Stash Hour. This is NBC Sports Radio. All sports, all the time. Where every day is game day. And now, John Stash Hour. John Stash Hour Show, NBC Sports Radio. Let's welcome in the famed sports, especially NFL agent Lee Steinberg joining us. And Lee, I, I was interested in getting you on. I was watching the, the documentary on PBS last week, The League of Denial. You're in it. And the story you tell about what happened to Troy Aikman um, after a concussion, I thought was was very compelling. So for those that haven't seen, I mean, this is this was the NFC Championship, right? And right. well, you tell the story about what happened to Troy that day. Well, fundamentally, he was concussed, and uh, in a game that led to who would play in the Super Bowl the next week. So it's Sandy. San Francisco and Dallas, and Dallas wins, and so the city's awash in celebration, but Troy had a concussion during the game. So I go to visit him, and he's in a darkened hospital room all alone. The city is awash in celebration with horns honking and, and things in the sky, and he asked me why he was there. So I told him, you know, he'd suffered a concussion, and he asked, had he played that day. <laughs> I told him he had. And did he play well? Yes. Um, what's that mean? Well, it means you're going to the Super Bowl. And his face brightened. Um, about five minutes later, he asked me, why am I here? And then did I play today? And he went through the same sequence of questions. So I answered again, and he was all happy. So we sat there and talked a little bit. In about 10 minutes, he asked the same question. Why am I here? And we went through the same sequence of questions and answers. And it terrified me to realize how tender the bond is between sentient consciousness and dementia. Um, I had been scared for a number of years. I'd watched him lie on his back in his rookie game against Arizona with blood coming